the Caiaphas uh, Pro Battle, and you're seeing our uh, first uh, uh, beautiful shots of this facility over in the, the western part of Greece. Uh, it's going to be an absolutely fantastic tournament. We've got uh, 19 women, and we've actually got uh, nine women and 19 men competing in this event for, uh, for some of the best cash prizes to be offered uh, during the course of the Water Ski Pro Tour. And uh, we are glad to present the coverage here Coming to you live on TWBC as we take another look at the uh, the site here at uh, Caiaphas. And uh, welcome. Uh, my name is uh, Tony Lightfoot, and uh, this is the Caiaphas Pro Battle. That right there is the Volkswagen ID Buzz van that I just stepped out of. A beautiful interior swivel passenger seat over there. It's uh, it's entirely 100% electric. Can charge in uh, in under eight hours uh, using the power bank that uh, that most uh, that most people are charged with on their homes. And uh, it's uh, it's an absolutely fantastic vehicle. We thank uh, Gra Gravitas. Uh, in Athens uh, for providing us with the uh, Volkswagen uh, van, uh, the ID Buzz. Check it out on Volkswagen.com. All right, then. So we're taking a look here at the surroundings. We got some Red Bull uh, over here. Let me see if I can grab one uh, to uh, to help sustain me a little bit for the morning. There we go. Fantastic. All right, then. So we got uh, the uh, the Red Bull uh, truck here. We'll have the uh, the speakers uh, are coming out of it, and uh, that will uh, provide the sound for our uh, spectators. A few of our competitors are already getting warmed up, including Ali Nicholson over there. Uh, she's waiting waiting for her uh, coffee to cool down a little bit, and Ali Garcia is going to be joining her in uh, in just a moment. There, uh, getting settled in. And uh, working our way down towards Dockside, uh, we've got our uh, Nautic uh, uh, towboat. So we've got one there that's been uh, going to be uh, piloted by, uh, by Nathan uh, McGarry. And uh, the other one, which we used a little bit earlier on in the amateur uh, competition. So, uh, so we're setting the scene here at uh, Caiaphas for the Pro Battle for 2023. And uh, we'll be back in the next few minutes right after this. Greetings ski fans, my name is Tony Lightford. I've just arrived here at Caiaphas for the battle of 2023. Well, here's Jamie Fall, the defending champion from, uh, from last year. You're confident in your abilities to be able to defend that title this time? I mean, I hope so. I'm gonna try and go out there and put up a big score and see how it plays out. Will Asher, who was the dominant slalom skier of last season, but wins or even podium positions a lot harder to come by this season. Uh, uh, how are you going to rectify? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, everyone's skiing so well this year. It's um, yeah, it's challenging. I mean, uh, the, the level is, is getting higher and higher. Um, I think I've been skiing good. I've been knocking down, you know, good scores. I had a five ball at 41 in Monaco. I'm pretty happy and I'm excited about Saturday. So. The pro event, it's always super tough and I'm fighting for my first pro, pro point um, and yeah, I hope I can manage to do that this weekend. Uh, I have to ski very good, I think, 
uh, to get one, but uh, yeah, I'm hoping for the best. All right then, Freddie Winter has been quite dominant uh, in Europe this season, but still can't uh, get above Nate Smith in the pro water ski standings. Uh, 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 how do you rectify? Well, I got to win. It's no one else's fault but my own. I got to run some more boys, run more than him and everyone else? Um, you know, this season I've just really been working on consistent 11s. I feel like that's really what it takes to be competitive with these girls. So I don't know if I've ever been doing an event like this where I show up here and everything is set, everything is ready for us. We go to dinners and they just feed us until we can't get out of the table. We're so full and it's just been an amazing time here. Um, I really like how my ski feels, I like how the lake feels, the boat was great yesterday, so yeah, just going to keep chipping away at it. Um, didn't have the best luck in Monaco and Lacanau, um, but Spain was good for me, so that means I, I can do it on this continent, just got to put it together. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, it was hard lately, uh, under 21 Worlds and Junior Masters, didn't go the way I wanted to, but it's first time competing uh, in Pro Open uh, in Europe, so I'm excited and I hope I can do something, you know, big scores, maybe run 39. And give them a best shot. The season started off fantastic with two podiums, but they've kind of been lacking a little bit these last few events. Score's been good, um, but just not quite getting it sorted in the first round. That was the thing I was happiest with at the start of the year, was getting a good start. So the goal here is to put a big score up in that first round and, um, and then kind of relax a little bit from there and see what can go down. But who knows? It's a big event. It's fan the, this place is amazing, absolutely amazing. Kayafa's battle. I'm ready to do battle and uh, claim my spot on the podium. I, f I feel like it can happen this weekend. Well, hello, good morning, and welcome back to the uh, to the Kayafa's water ski resort in Western Peloponnesia in Greece. This is the Kayafa's uh, pro battle for 2023. Uh, let's uh, let's take a quick uh, uh, shot around the site. Uh, there is our uh, first uh, competitor getting ready to go. That is. Uh, uh, Taylor Walsey Van Mastic, and uh, she will be the first of nine competitors in this event and uh, in the women's slalom uh, so far as that goes and then we'll go on to the men's slalom in uh, round one after number one after round number one and uh, let's uh, let's take a look shall we uh, there we go we've got Taylor Walsey Van Mastic uh, we'll, we'll take to the water first followed by a Beatrizia Yani uh, going out second and Alicia Bagnoli in third then, uh, then Taylor Wolsey, uh, then uh, actually uh, Manon Castard in uh, fourth place, uh, fourth uh, off the uh, off the dock. Then we've got uh, Elizabeth Montavon, uh, Ali Garcia, uh, Ali Nicholson, and Jamie Ball. We have a total of eight skiers uh, with the omission of uh, Jamie Metcalf, who was scheduled to be fourth out, uh, but uh, unable to uh, to make it here. All right, there is our schedule. Women's round one, followed by men's round one, and uh, then we'll uh, progress on from there here at the Kayafas uh, uh, Pro Battle. Uh, we see the uh, we see uh, Beatrice Yani, who uh, who had a very very good season uh, in 20, uh, 2022, uh, looking to try and replicate that uh, uh, to uh, to some extent uh, with uh, this season of twenty twenty three. As uh, as we see the uh, the first of our competitors, Taylor Wolsey, getting uh, getting situated into a binding. So, uh, with that in mind, uh, we'll uh, we'll take we'll grab a quick break. So, just enough time for you to grab your favourite beverage, grab your favourite seat, as we get ready to throw down here at the Kayafas Pro Battle for 2023. More right after this.
welcome back. Uh, we've uh, we've got some uh, warming up activity going on around the the starting dock. Uh, there we see, uh, I believe, uh, Manon uh, Manon Costar, who is uh, making a welcome return uh, to the uh, to the pro scene. We saw her about a week or so ago over in uh, Lacanel and uh, making the podium uh, there. And uh, we've got uh, Taylor uh, Taylor Morsi Mastic Van Mastic uh, coming to us. Uh, originally out of Florida but making her home in England these days and uh, good uh, good to see her back on the scene and uh, there we see our uh, tow boat getting ready to uh, to take to the water this is the Kayafas uh, pro battle this is the uh, one of the stops of the water ski uh, pro tour uh, the Kayafas pro battle though it's a free star event which means the 60 points are awarded for the winner and there you see the uh, the descending scale of uh, points uh, for second, third, fourth, and uh, and all the other positions uh, below that. So, uh, coming to us out of England, uh, that is uh, Nathan McGarry. He will be our driver uh, for this uh, this section of the competition. When the men take uh, take to the place out on the water, we'll have the driving skills of uh, Manuel Domini in play. All right, so taking a look over the uh, the main highway that separates us at Caiaphas uh, from the uh, from the the nearest town to us, which is uh, Zakara in uh, in western uh, Peloponnesia in Greece. There you see uh, the uh, the beach uh, that's uh, situated right adjacent to the uh, to the Adriatic Sea or the uh, or uh, where it connects on to the Ionian Sea. Beautiful weather here, and it, it is it is quite hot. It's uh, it's well over 90 degrees here during the daytime, but uh, not uh, not as humid as a lot of places around the world from which, which our skiers uh, come to us from. Uh, states like Florida and Louisiana, for example. But uh, it's a it's hot, but it's uh, not uh, uh, not overwhelmingly hot. There we see uh, Licia Bagnoli uh, getting ready and uh, donning on her Pro Gear gloves. And you can uh, check out those by going to skiprogear.com. That's skiprogear.com. I'm sure there are plenty of others around the dockside. Or we already saw uh, Ali, the, uh, the two Allies, uh, Ali Nicholson and Ali Garcia, uh, not too far away from dockside. And uh, the format uh, for this event is actually going to be, it's going to be a three round slalom for all of our uh, competitors. Uh, the, uh, it's going to be three rounds, they're the top eight women and top eight men advance through to the next round. So essentially all of our women advance through to the final, whereas uh, a little, uh, little under half of the, uh, of the 19 men that are on this list will advance through to their final and uh, each has three opportunities in which to do so so taking a look around and uh, okay. filling out the uh, the conditions i'm sure the the minimum starting line length for for, uh, for taylor Wolsey van mastic is going to be uh, 14.25 yeah. meters the men, I'm sure it's going to be 13. And uh, we'll see if that changes between now and the end. Uh, many of our competitions uh, in recent times have had a, uh, a shorter start in line length as we, as we draw nearer and nearer to the, the, to the final. A 13 meter start possibly for women uh, may be imminent, whereas the men may be 12 meters, but uh, we'll see how that uh, how that comes to us in the fullness of time all right there our pro tour stop number eight the Kayapas pro battle here in western Peloponnese 14, in Greece 82, please. and uh, selecting alpha 2 which uh, seems to be the uh, the zero off setting that is uh, quite popular uh, in uh, in this uh, this era of skiing it's 14.25 meters, which is 28 off for those of you that are watching us uh, from the United States. It's, uh, it's about a, a seven hour uh, time difference. So uh, for you hearty souls that are watching this live, it's about 
It's about it's about 2 a.m. on the Eastern Seaboard, about 1 a.m. on the uh, the Central uh, Time Zone. And uh, the way that we're doing this is we're going to tow the skier into the main uh, the main Caiaphas Lake. They'll drop down, and uh, from there, it's about approximately 45 seconds of drop time. And then we'll bring them into the uh, the channel from which uh, they will start their their run. First athlete, Wesley Taylor, USA. So, there we see Alicia Bagnoli, and uh, right behind her are uh, one of the, the vehicles that have uh, been, uh, been furnished to us uh, courtesy of uh, 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 Gravitas uh, uh, Volkswagen in, in Athens. Uh, the, uh, the vehicle to which I was referring to was the, uh, was the Amarok, which is, uh, which is available across Europe and uh, much of the world. And uh, coming into the course on 14.25 meters, this is Taylor Wolsey Van Mastic. Coming in. Taylor Wolsey, who's uh, been, uh, been absent from the scene for, uh, for a good few seasons. She moved to Europe gotten married and, uh, and had a kid and uh, is uh, making a welcome return here with a, a six buoy uh, opening pass of 14.25 meters so uh, she's uh, she's up and running uh, now getting ready for the next pass of 13 a lot of activity around the dockside we just saw there Alicia Bagnoli and uh, her uh, her Italian uh, uh, compadre there, that is uh, 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 Beatrizia Gianni. And uh, working away uh, towards uh, preparing for her runs this morning is Ali Garcia. As I say, the, uh, the weather here, absolutely uh, excellent. Nice and sunny. Uh, it does get a little hot during the day, but uh, not not quite as humid as a lot of places that I've mentioned. And, uh, and I tell you what, uh, this uh, this Kayafa site, uh, uh, absolute transformation uh, uh, taken place here since last season. Much of the uh, much of the uh, the growth and the uh, the trees and uh, has uh, has been manicured and. Uh, uh, and cut down and has uh, made the site uh, a lot tidier and a lot more manageable as we look at Taylor Wolsey for the uh, the opening two runs uh, this is uh, 30 meters or 32 off and gets it to go nicely done Taylor Wolsey uh, strapping that one down there's a good looking pass of 13 meters. Now she'll uh, work her way into the uh, the, the main uh, huge uh, Caiaphas uh, Lake. And uh, she'll drop down for about 45 seconds and then we'll uh, get her back into the course on the 12 meter line. Alice, back here for another edition of the Caiaphas Battle. You were here last year. Are you pretty excited about what's gonna happen? Definitely excited. I love this tournament. Last year it was really fun hanging out with all the pros. Um, feeling a little bit weak this morning, so hopefully I can power through and uh, get a good set. I know the win is uh, actually the opposite side. I'm still planning on starting at 14, even though I'm going to have 11 tailwind as a first set, just to settle in and then I'm going to push through. But the format of three rounds kind of allows you to you know, get a little bit, it's more than we're used to, right? So you'll be able to do two and then if it's not there, then you can go big in, in that third round. Exactly. That's why I'm going to start with 14 easy, uh, take my set in, and then uh, the other two sets I'm going to push more. All right. Well, we'll see you out there in a minute. Good luck. Back to you guys. All right, then. Thanks a lot, Freddie. And uh, you can hear more of uh, Freddie as part of the, uh, the series uh, on tour with Freddie Winter as part of the TWBC uh, podcast. Uh, the, uh, the latest episode uh, was, uh, was recorded about a day or so ago. So check that out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you choose to listen to podcasts. 
Here's the TW. Oh, and uh, Taylor uh, Wolsey exiting very, very violently round buoy number one. Just really dropped that ski hard on its inside edge and just couldn't really get going again. She may have actually pulled out a little bit too early for the entrance gates and that dropped her back behind the boat. And oh, that was that was very, very violent there uh, to uh, to get things uh, up and running for uh, for Taylor Wolsey. Entrance gate into number one looked OK, but then as soon as she brought the outside hand onto the handle, it kind of catapulted her out over the tip of the ski, which results in a score of half a buoy on uh, the 12 meter line, which is gonna be the target for our remaining skiers in this round. So we'll return in just a moment uh, as we see our next competitor uh, putting on her equipment. And we'll be back right after this. My name is Thomas de Gasperi. I'm from Italy. I'm a two-time World Slalom Champion. I've been coming here at La Guapa for four years now. The condition of this villa, it's top level. I would say five stars plus. Everybody's very friendly. The hosts are amazing. The staff is always helpful. There's always food on the table. I couldn't ask for anything more. Conditions, clean, and we're only an hour away from Mexico City, so it's it's very close and convenient for to travel. Every time I come here, I feel like I'm, I'm at home. then so uh, so good to have you on board my name is Tony Leifert and uh, you have arrived uh, just in time for the uh, the first round of women's slalom competition at the, here at the uh, the Kaifer battle uh, the format of the competition is uh, three rounds of skiing guaranteed for each of our uh, competitors and uh, the skier with uh, with the the top scores uh, will advance through to the final. It will be an eight-person slalom final in the women's and an eight-person slalom final in the men's. There is our uh, first score, half a buoy on 12 metres, courtesy of Taylor Wolsey. You see on the dock right there, Alicia Bagnoli, and out on the slalom course about halfway through to her, through her drop time on the... Uh, in the waiting area just outside the slalom course in the main Caiaphas Lake, it is uh, Beatrizia Yani. So, for those of you that are uh, pretty much eagle eyed, uh, you'll notice that there is one person missing in the towboat, and that is uh, a camera person. That's because our uh, boat camera footage uh, it uses our uh, our new uh, remote uh, remote uh, gimbalized uh, camera, from which you see this shot right now. Reduces the weight in the boat, uh, allows for better handling, 
and about, about a weight characteristics for all of our uh, competing athletes right here. Here we go. This is Petrigiani. Looking good. Looking, uh, looking all right. Coming to us out of Rome and skiing over in Spear Longa, which is a little ways uh, south of uh, of the Eternal City of Rome in uh, in Italy. That is Beatrizia Yanni. You just can't help but be absolutely enthralled by the views here. And with that in mind, let's uh, let's check in dockside with Freddie. Taylor, your first time back on the pro scene in a number of years. Um, didn't go quite your way. What do you feel happened out there? Um, I was just struggling in general with the gate on this end. The kind of setup is just different than what I'm used to at home. But um, after seven years off, I'll take it. I cried when I ran my opener on the other end, actually. <laughs> Poor Nathan. But yeah, I had a really good time. Emotional return. And, um, you know, obviously we know you're capable of more than that. You've got some stuff to think about for your next set. You kind of probably had a, something to change. Uh, yeah, just some keys I need to kind of shift around. I was way too slow on the first gate, so I didn't correct fast enough. But it's a learning. After seven years off, i got to learn to adapt faster. It's always tough thinking on your feet like that. Well, good luck to you next round. Thank you for being back and supporting the sport. And uh, back to you guys. All right, thank you, Freddie, and thank you, Taylor. And uh, another skier that uh, that we've seen uh, ski sporadically on the uh, the pro circuit is uh, Manon Kastar, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see her uh, back out in the water uh, very soon. Beatrice Yani. This is 13 meters. Oh, she started on 13 meters, as a matter of fact. Yes, this is 12 meters coming back. So. Deciding to take the slightly harder option here, and uh, with the six buoy count on 12 meters, she has uh, taken the lead away from Taylor Wolsey. So uh, already climbing up one rung on the, the ladder, so far as the leaderboard is concerned. As she settles down uh, for 45 seconds in that time, we're going to take a look at uh, Beatrice Yani. Taking a good old hit off number one. Now, as you probably notice, uh, she uh, she does uh, ski with a switch grip. She is right foot forward, and uh, she skis right hand up. A lot of that was due to the injury that she sustained in uh, in 2011 in the European Championships that took place in Riccetto. Uh She uh, she injured her uh, shoulder, as a matter of fact, in that event, and it got uh, it got so bad that uh, she, uh, in order for her to uh, continue skiing, she had to switch grips, and uh, hence the reason why she skis right foot forward, right hand up, whereas uh, many skiers that ski with that, uh, with that boot configuration switch the grip to left hand on top. All right then, here we go. This here is Beatrice Yani. Now, Taylor Wolsey uh, said that the gate setup is a little bit unusual from that end, but uh, I'm sure that Beatrice Iani is well experienced with uh, skiing here. Skied here last season and acquitted herself well there. A little open into, oh, and I don't think she made the play. Uh, I don't know whether she got round number five. Uh, that's, that's where our cameras come into play and uh, Assess via the instant replay whether she actually made it round a buoy number five. Now this is going to be a telling angle as we take a look at the first two thirds of the course. Again, a good hook up there on number one. And a nice pre-turn round number two brings the handle down nice and low and stays ahead of the course. Now things started to get a little bit awkward here off, uh, off number, uh, number four. She... Couldn't really commit there after number four. And yeah, she gets around number five. And now she S-turns. Yep, and I believe she gets there in time for the boat guides for number six. So uh, from this early assessment here, it should be a five buoy count on 12 meters unless the judges see something differently to what I have. already taken the lead with 
five on 11.25 meters. Yeah, just got on the back of the ski and just couldn't really get off it uh, in time. So with that, let's check in dockside with uh, Freddie. So I just want to draw your attention to a very important addition that we have at the Cappers Battle this year. It's this, uh, this piece of rope. Okay, because last year when we were skiing, I mean, this dock, this, especially in the finals, this dock was absolutely packed and we had people basically completely in our faces all the way up to the point that we skied. This rope, which I've just noticed, is going to stop that from happening so we can have just a little moment by ourselves and can actually put our skis on properly. Um, it, you know, it's great to have people excited. It was quite funny last year to feel people on top of us. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, a bit more space so that there can be people, you know, all up in here. Uh, having a good time, but the skiers can kind of do their thing. Back to you guys. All right then, yes, and uh, yeah, it does make an, a, a very, very good point. I mean, we had so many people, so many spectators and uh, and VIP guests uh, around the dockside that it uh, that it was absolute pandemonium last season. So uh, we we, ex we expect the uh, the same amount as uh, spectators, if not more, this season. Uh, I mean, you just you just can't can't escape uh, George Hatzis, uh, the uh, the main uh, brains in the organisation uh, behind this event. And if if you go to uh, Zakaro, which is the the nearest town uh, to to Caiaphas, his poster with his, with his image of him skiing is absolutely everywhere. I mean, you, you just you just can't turn and not see George Hatzis. Uh, publicizing the event using those uh, publicity posters and we expect a huge huge crowd to uh, come Sunday here at the the Caiaphas battle. I'm Tony Lightfoot, uh, glad to have the pleasure of your company at this early stage of the, the event. We are on skier number three, uh, Alicia Bagnoli will, uh, is on the water and is in the holding area getting ready to uh, to make her way into the course. As we see, a man on Castard getting limbered up. All right then, so uh, taking a, uh, a page out of Beatrice Yani's playbook and deciding to go in on 30 meters for the opening run. Alpha 2 is the setting. A good stout uh, pull out to the entrance gate in preparation for buoy number one. 30 meter start, very early into number three. Not quite as early into number four, but uh, she has this pass under control. Safety is on five, just pulls all the way to number six, and there you go. A skier that's uh, gaining an experience, that is Alicia Bagnoli. Let's check in dockside with Freddie. Bay, your best score of the year, five and 11, puts you in a pretty good position for later on. You must be happy. Yeah, I'm very happy. It's yeah, my best score of this year. Uh, I should have run it because I was into it. I was really, maybe I was too happy on that four ball. And, but yeah, it, conditions are great. I'm so happy to be here. So I hope I'll do better next round, but I'm happy. Two more rounds to get a seating for the final. Uh, you started 13, you don't normally start at 13. You want to tell us why? I start normally at 14. I started at 13 because it looks like a little breeze, but it's pretty windy out there. So I wanted to do my 11 uh, headwinds, so to had more chance to run it, so hopefully later I'm gonna ride it. Well, let's not say it too loud so people don't get any hints, right? We, wanna, we want you to stay at the top. Yeah. Okay, well, back to you. All right then, so Beatrice Yani, yeah, definitely a best score of the season, and uh, we're looking out uh, for, uh, for Alicia Bagnoli to, uh, to do likewise here. She's gotten through 13. Now this is 12. Skiing on that to good slalom ski. Running with Alpha 2, no change there, although the uh, the skiers do have the ability to change their uh, zero offsetting between passes, uh, should they, uh, they feel the need to. Keeping it going, keeping it flowing, and uh, not the easiest passes at 12 meters that Alicia Bagnoli will have cleared uh, this season, but uh, as long as it's six buoys and through the exit gate, 
It doesn't mat matter much uh, beyond that point. So, there is Alicia Bagnoli and getting ready for 11.25 meters. So already we're, uh, we've got a battle uh, for the, uh, the lead uh, deep into 11.25 meters. That is courtesy of uh, Beatrizia Yani and another Italian is out there on the water right now uh, doing her best to rock the roost here. It's looking good very instant replay and good extension a little late into five but uh, managing to take it all the way down so manon castar who a skier that we haven't seen an awful lot of uh, in recent times uh, been largely absent from uh, from the Pro Tour uh, this season uh, in the United States and has uh, competed in Lacanau, which uh, which took place uh, last weekend. But let's see if she can stay competitive with the uh, with the other skiers here. Here comes uh, Alicia Bagnoli. This is 11.2. All oh, getting oh, and I don't know whether she made the play on four, but. Uh, but a decent score there from uh, from Alicia Bagnoli. Uh, definitely had the opportunity to run that pass, but things are just started to get a little bit stressful towards uh, the uh, the second half of that run. And unfortunately, they're unable to uh, to conjure up a full pass on 11.25 meters. So this puts her in second spot behind Beatrice Yani. A hard start there in buoy number one, which may have been the reason why she was a little flat into that turn. And then she had to uh, conjure up something magical there on number two, which which uh, which is her uh, offside turn. And then things uh, didn't, uh, didn't improve much going into buoy number four for her. So we'll get the, the, uh, the confirmed score. It, sh it is four. Four on 11.25, which should be uh, all but confirmed by taking a look here on this instant replay from the boat. A little bit uh, jumpy there into number two. She's got two more rounds in which to rectify any problems that uh, that she that have, may have come her way. But yeah, she gets the ski outside number four. She certainly knows how to west turn them with the best of them and gets to the wakes in time for the boat guide for number five. All right then, so uh, Manon Castar will, uh, will take to the water in just a moment and we will return right after this. <laughs> I've been a fan of Marcus Brown since I was like 13 years old. He's, you know, been my, my childhood hero. And so for him to offer something like this, you know, which is, which is, it's great, not just for me, but it's great for water skiers to have something like this where people can really get a bespoke water ski experience. It's going to improve their skiing, their, their body, you know, and Jenny's just, she's amazing too. So just to have the access to, to both of those guys, I think it's huge. And it has been massive just to talk things through and to get a new understanding of, of stuff I haven't tried yet.
right then, welcome back. And our next skier out in the water, this will be Manon Kustar. All right, here we go. Opening pass, this should be 13 meters. And nicely done. Has lost uh, lost none of her technical prowess out there on the slalom course and getting through the uh, the opening pass of 13. And with that, let's check in with Freddie. George Aziz, the visionary, the architect behind this event. Uh, you've had a lot of fun and a lot of hard stress, I would imagine, uh, putting this together. You must be very happy to see it happen today. I cannot uh, describe you how happy I am. Uh, you haven't seen anything yet. You, ha you have to wait until Sunday, the finals. You're going to be impressed. Big words. Um, and what's been, what's the thing you're, that's presumably the thing you're most excited for. And can you give us a sneak peek of something that's going to happen tomorrow? Or are you keeping it all for surprise? Yeah. All right. What will happen tomorrow is a little bit of skiing and much of other things. All right. Well, that's, that's good. That's good to know. And uh, stay tuned. Stay tuned for the finals. And I think the question on everyone's lips is, are we going to see you dancing tomorrow? Because we saw a lot of dancing, a lot of singing, a lot of jeering up the crowd. Is that going to be your role again? What you saw last year, it was nothing. What you see this year, it's huge. <laughs> All right, confidence from the man. I believe it. See you guys later. All right, that and, and absolutely, as so last year's uh, event was uh, was spectacular enough. Um, I don't know how you're going to top it, but he's uh, certainly going to give it a good old try. That was George Hatsis on the the starting dock, and on the water right now is Manon Kostar on 12 meters. And there, Manon Kostar looking to try and put some points on the board, uh, not only for herself on the water ski uh, pro tour, but also for the uh, for the brand uh, title as well. She's one of uh, three skiers that represents the Conley brand, and there you see them: uh, uh, Doverton, Howley, and Kostard, and. Uh, they're a little slow off the block, sir, uh, Conley, so far this season, but uh, we'll see if they can uh, make up for lost time, uh, courtesy of Manon Kostar on the moment. Here is our uh, top uh, top brands, D3, Syndicate and Radar, in that order in the, uh, the, con in the, uh, the TWBC uh, brand leaderboard right now. There, Manon Kostar bringing 12 meters back on pass number two. She's dropped into the main uh, uh, Caiaphas uh, Lake. This is uh, a channel that uh, was artificially dug out of that lake uh, for, uh, for the intent of using it as a marina for yachts, but uh, has been repurposed uh, to, uh, to be one of the finest uh, water ski facilities in in Greece. This is 11.25 meters. The lead currently stands at five, courtesy of Beatrice Yani. Manon Kostar, former world slalom champion. And looking to, uh, to stamp her mark in this event, it's a six buoy count on 11.25 meters, and Manon Kostar looking to uh, to stamp her authority on this slalom event with a good, good score on 10.75 meters coming up. But how she got to 10.75 meters, let's take a look on 11. A little separation there uh, coming towards the end of buoy number one. It delayed her uh, pr approach into number two, but she was able to use her, uh, her immense skill, her immense talent out there, along with bags of experience uh, coming into this event. So, Manon Kostar getting through 11.25, and 10.75 meters is imminent for her. There on dockside, getting ready to go, is uh, Elizabeth Montavon. Elizabeth Montavon has been traveling to Europe for the first time in her skiing career. 
has uh, attended a, uh, a number of events. It's had, a, uh, it's had one or two difficulties adapting to this site, however, at least in practice. Let's see if she can dig deep and come away with a good score. In the meantime, Manon Costar Again, all up inside uh, of uh, 10.75 uh, meters, uh, managing to get the first couple of buoys, but uh, no more beyond that. So Manon Costar looks like it's gonna be two at 10.75 meters. It does wrench the lead away from, uh, from Beatriz Yani. And uh, currently in third place is Alicia Bagnoli with four on 11.25 meters. So she'll be, uh, sh she'll, uh, she'll be skiing back to the dock, but not before we've taken a, a look at this run. Manon Costar, the current European women's slalom champion, took that title uh, last season in uh, Rochetto in Italy. And in about two weeks' time, we will, be, in about three weeks' time, we'll be covering the Europe and Africa Water Ski Championships uh, from Italy once again, only this time it's going to be in San Gervasio. With complete coverage from, uh, from the first turn to the final jump on TWBC. Here is Manon Costar. Once again, just rears up on number two and uh, tries to make a play on three, but way, way too late to do so. So, two buoys. At 10.75 meters, she'll return to the stop. As we take, take a look around uh, the, uh, the area here of, uh, of, of Caiaphas. Your official score of a two at 10.75 meters awarded to Manon Costar. All right, so let's check in dockside with Freddy. John, we're at the second edition of the Capus Battle. It's your first time here. Uh, have you liked what you've seen so far? Yeah, that's why I'm here. I saw you guys' videos and all your social media from last year, and I was just kind of bummed I wasn't here. And this year worked out really good with having different dates and every we can go to all the events and not have to pick and choose. So yeah, I'm super excited. The whole guys out here killed it. They're doing everything for us. We, it's been a great trip so far. And I just had a chat with George, the organizer, who you know well, and he said, he said, don't worry about today. Wait till tomorrow. I, I think that, I mean, it's already pretty cool. What do you think we're going to see tomorrow? Yeah, like last night I said thanks at dinner and he's like, dude, this is nothing yet. Just wait, and I'm like, whoa, okay, this is a lot already. So we're really excited. It's going to be a, a great weekend. And just hope the weather can hold. I heard it's supposed to get windy, but hey, we're here. We're going to have fun. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be good, man. I feel, I feel good about it. All right, back to you guys. All right, then. Thanks a lot there, Freddie, and uh, kudos there to, uh, to Jonathan Travers uh, making his way over here to Caiaphas for the first time and uh, re referencing back to the, uh, the pre-show uh, it almost, it almost sounds like he isn't fed enough at home, uh, uh, judge, judging by the uh, uh, the uh, the comments that he made regarding the uh, the food and the cuisine around here, and uh, you know uh, enjoying that aspect of uh, of this uh, of this event here in Caiaphas. But uh, we just seen Elizabeth Montavon uh, exit the uh, the docks dockside area, make her way towards the the drop zone in the main Caiaphas Lake. So Elizabeth Montavon uh, will be will be looking to try and put a uh, a decent score out there. Uh, all eight of our uh, women's uh, uh, competitors in this event moves move through to the final. So there's no uh, there's no no uh, possibility of elimination for any of the the female skiers. It's just a case of uh, placing yourself high enough in the. Uh, in the order in the finals to give you the the best opportunity to excel. All right, there. Here we go, Elizabeth Montavon, who comes to us out of uh, the uh, the West Palm Beach area of the, in the United States, uh, starting in on 30 meters. Now let's. Okay, uh, she's actually going to go in on 14.25 meters. The rope did look a little bit long uh, for. Uh, in comparison to uh, to a couple of uh, others, in fact, most of our skiers have started in on 13. 
Taylor Worsley started on 14, and as did uh, Elizabeth Montavon. And uh, we'll uh, take a look at Dockside with Freddie. Manon, we haven't seen you at many events recently. Um, you want to give us insight into why? <laughs> um, yeah, I needed to take a break. I went home, I uh, enjoyed skiing, and I skied only when I wanted to for fun. Um, so that went really well. I started having fun at every set. So that's why this year I thought, okay, well, let's try and go to a few events again. Um, and yeah, it's the try, the test of let's try and have fun. <laughs> and your ski is, is brand new, uh, it's something you've been working on. I mean, you ran a big score last week. You were cu cutting to five at 10.75 and really next to the podium at, at Lacano. You, you're happy with it? Yeah, I'm super happy with the ski. It was, it was um, a process of, of trying to find the right things. The goal was to make it a bit more stable, a bit more consistent, and that's exactly what I'm feeling. I feel like, you know, I can take a break from skiing and go and ski and right away do, do good scores and feel good on my ski. So I'm super excited about this for sure. And is this ski, a ski that someone can go buy off the shelf right now or is it still a prototype? No, it's a, it's a real ski. <laughs> you can go and get it and uh, I'll call me, of course. Good stuff. Go buy it. All right, back to you guys. All right, then. And in addition to that, you could actually win that ski by going to, uh, to waterskibroadcasting.com uh, forward slash play. Win that ski as part of our audience prize. And here is Lisbeth Montavon, a part of uh, Team Lapointe, alongside uh, Cole McCormick and uh, Stephen Island. And uh, they've, uh, they've scored some points uh, on the, the brand uh, leaderboard. And uh, so far as the, uh, the women's leaderboard is concerned, uh, right now is a Manon Costar in the lead with two at 10.75 meters ahead of Beatrizia Yani. As we take a look at Ali Garcia uh, going through uh, her, uh, her prep before she uh, takes the water. All right, so. All right there, so there's Nathan McGarry. We've just seen Elizabeth Montavon make her make way through uh, both of her opening passes, 14 and 13. The, uh, the wind strategy, there isn't much of one going on right now. Uh, there's, a, there's a little bit of a breeze that I'm able to detect over on the, uh, the main uh, larger Caiaphas Lake, but uh, that doesn't uh, manifest itself too, uh, too much out there on the slalom course. It is well protected here at Caiaphas. This is the 12 meter line. Having started on 14 and running back on 13 for pass number two. This is pass number three, and this is 12. So Elizabeth Montavon, all right, three passes in, and uh, looking looking pretty strong at the moment, getting through 12 meters, but uh, to climb the next rung of the ladder, she has to exceed the score of uh, Beatrizia, of, uh, of actually Alicia Bagnoli on 411.25 meters. And then a next immediate target is five on 11, courtesy of Beatrice Yani. This is uh, stop number eight. This is the Caiaphas uh, Battle Pro. It's part of the, uh, the Water Ski Pro Tour. You can find out more by going to waterskiprotour.com. That is waterskiprotour.com. And uh, working our way through, uh, through the course on that LaPointe slalom ski, I'm sure that uh, they're both. Uh, the both Chris and Jennifer Lapointe are uh, already up at uh, an early hour here, watching uh, not only their uh, their daughter uh, uh, Taylor Taylor Wolsey uh, compete a little bit earlier on in the competition, but also uh, Elizabeth Montavon out there on the Lapointe slalom ski. All right, boat accelerating up to speed, 55 kilometers an hour. And right here, right now, this is Elizabeth Montavon. Takes a good hit off buoy number one. She's early for number two. Elizabeth making her way through the pass. 
gas. And she ran it with a little All right. bit, but she did. Yeah, a little, yeah, a little bit, a little bit hard towards the end there, but uh, she uh, she set herself up very, very well off the uh, the first first couple of buoys, and uh, came back and uh, the first person to actually clear 12 meters from that specific direction, because every other every other 12 meter pass that we've seen at this point has come from. Uh, yeah, that was that was actually 11 meters. That was the 11. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That was 11.25 meters. So now she has put herself into uh, directly into second place at this time. All right. So Elizabeth Montavon, 11.25 meters now. Her next target. She's uh, she's basically taken down every competitor aside from one at this point of the of the proceedings, and uh, and for a skier who didn't didn't exactly practice too well coming into this event, she's doing remarkably well out there on the course there and uh, being joined by Alicia Bagnoli. How are you doing this morning? Hi Tony, doing great. Good, good. Already the excitement building here at Caiaphas, uh, but uh, reliably informed by George Hatzis that uh, that we've, we've barely scratched the surface at the moment. Yeah. So Elizabeth, we're seeing her coming back at 10.75. Score to be so far is two, I believe. It is two. She gets round number one. Oh, wow. didn't, did she get outside number two? Or, or I don't know. She looked quite narrow, but um, she had a good speed going into two. So, yeah, we'll see what... What they give her. Okay, she definitely uh, tried to sell it, uh, if nothing else, uh, uh, with a little bit of a nest turn, and uh, the the judges are going to check up on that score. We've got uh, we got enough uh, camera angles to uh, to utilize to uh, to help our officials uh, make the uh, the right call. But oh. so the gate is actually under review. So let's take a look at here. Can't hard really to see, hard, hard to see yeah. from that point, but uh, we'll uh, we'll get a, a a little bit of a better look here. Uh, yeah. yeah, she got yeah. round the number yeah. two, but that might actually be a moot point unless the uh, the judges uh, give her the uh, the gates. So. You know that side was a little bit headwind, so she might have been you know slowed down a little bit too much. Uh, we'll see what they're gonna give her, but actually they will come down quite a bit. Do you think she'll and be tempted to go in on 13 with the next round? Maybe, you know, she has three rounds. She has enough rounds to really fill out the water. And um, I don't know if we're going to actually start at 13 or not in the finals, but I think to change it up one round, it would be a good idea also. Yes, indeed. And uh, yeah, I mean, she, she, looked, she looked a little bit disappointed earlier on uh, this week uh, with the practices, but uh, she, she's definitely come back and uh, she's uh, posted up a score. Uh, no gates at 10.75 meters. So it's so. Uh, so what is it? It's going to be a uh, a zero, a zero at 10.75. So let's check in dockside. Tim, we're in Greece. You've had your own Odyssey and journey uh, with your skis this week. You want to tell us about it? So I flew in Tuesday morning, and apparently my ski bag wasn't on that plane. And uh, we tried to track it. We tried to get it back as soon as possible, but uh, it wasn't very helpful. I couldn't find my ski bag. I've been practicing on an old ski here, and I found out just this last night at 11.30, I got my ski bag, and this morning at breakfast, Konstantinos, very helpful guy, gave the ski bag to me, so I'm, I'm gonna ski on my own ski today, which is gonna be very nice. It's nice of you to shout out to Konstantinos. He drove, just to be fair, he drove three hours to Athens and three hours back, like at the drop of a hat last night to get your ski and worked for two hours there to try and find the bag. I mean, he spent two hours at the airport. That was a working day for sure. Well, hopefully he can take, you know, you'll give him a beer or two on a Sunday night. Uh, you want to give a shout out to the incredibly helpful airline that lost your skis for four or five days? Uh, no, I don't want to give a shout out to them. I want to give a shout out to my, my friends here for helping me out, Jamie Bull for loaning me a kicker and the Greece skiers here loaning me a ski that I could ski on. And of course, Constantinos for finding my ski bag. Come on, name and shame the airline. <laughs> no. <laughs> look down, look down, and say you screwed me, dude. <laughs> no, they did not. <laughs> it was the Greece people screwing me, not the Swedish airline. Well, the Greek people will be helping you out this week. All right, so uh, Tim Tornquist, he needs an air tag. Back to you guys. <laughs> 
Oh, you've got to love those adventures. I mean, uh, I mean, Freddie Winter himself has actually uh, uh, been a victim of uh, of that a time or two in the past. I mean, San Gervasio a couple of years ago obviously springs to mind there, Alice. Yeah. Have you had, had anything like that yourself? Yeah, it actually happened to me uh, right before the Monaco Slalom Cup. Um, they kind of lost my ski bag coming back from the U.S. And uh, luckily I had an air tag. I had to fly to Paris myself to pick it up. So that worked out good. But, yeah, thanks, Apple Air Tags. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. That seems to be the go-to thing to have these days, an Apple AirTag. And, uh, you know, it's... So there was the Libro, Mar Manoko started with 2 at 10.75, and Elizabeth with a 0 at 10.75. You know, talking about Elizabeth, I think she's having a hell of a summer. I think she's getting really good. Um, at 10.75, it's, it's a hard pass, you know, Tony, so I think you need to go full on and make sure you're early in the gates. So I think she, that's what she did, and she missed it. Boom. All right then, so coming in on 14.25 meters. Strangely enough, all of the American athletes in this competition so far are electing to go with 14.25 meters. I do think the wind calmed down quite a lot um, from the first few skiers. Um, Ellie running her 14 meter pass, like easy going. So now we're gonna get ready to go on dock just after a pass. All right, let's check out dock side with Freddie. Elizabeth, uh, cut your gates at 10.75 there. It seems like, um, I'll, I'll ask you, did you get them? It was really close. I mean, I felt like I kind of clobbered the buoy. I was kind of glad I didn't fall right there, but um, it happens. And as far as I know, it's only eight women now here, so we're all in the final. So it's just, it's good skiing. It's good practice right now. Yeah, setting yourself up. And a, a rough week of training for you, but you did a much better score in the, in, in the actual tournament. This is the right way to do it, right? Yeah, I mean, that's exactly how you'd like it to run. Um, the, the rhythm of that 38, like one through four, I really, really like. So I'd like to get that rhythm under my belt a couple more times and then sustain it through the pass. I think that'll set me up better for a good 39 gate. And how's it feeling out there? I mean, like, you know, we're changing sites. Like, we've done four sites in the last two, two and a half weeks, whatever it is. Like, how does it feel compared to the other places? This feels pretty good. I made one very minor thin tweak and it kind of made all the difference for me. It's hard to do that on the fly from lake to lake to lake when you can't go home and ski on your own home site and get something normal under your belt. So I was a little nervous about that this morning. Like, is this the right thing or should I ski on what I've been skiing on the whole, what, three weeks now? Uh, but yeah, that felt really good. That was probably, probably my favorite out of the four I've been to so far. It felt really normal. Amazing. All right, we're going to go back to the action. Thank you so much. Back to you guys. And Ali Garcia coming back at 30 meter line. Nice body position, nice opening at the buoy. And she's done it like out a million times. I know her parents here to watch her, so that must be in a good support for her as well. Yes, indeed. Uh, both Steve and uh, Dana Garcia are uh, here on this event. And uh, there's our chief judge, uh, Dimos Alexa Polos, whose, uh, whose resume of uh, of uh, being able to be chief judge of a lot of the uh, the world uh, world uh, best uh, best tournaments, you know, is uh, pretty much uh, beyond a compare. Uh, of the the first time I actually saw uh, Lex uh, Demos uh, uh, be a chief judge uh, uh, was was way way back in the uh, the 90s and uh, was actually chief judge at the World Championships in 2009. So he uh, definitely has a lot of experience to draw around. upon. He's been around, yeah. Yeah, he's certainly been around. And uh, I'm Tony Lightfoot. She is Alicia Bagnoli. And we're going to go on dockside with Freddie. Ali, dancing on the dock. Not usual for a pro event, but uh, novel and nice, I imagine. I'm getting warmed up for tomorrow. The party's just getting started. That's right. So, uh, two at 10.75 is the lead right now. Uh, you feel good about, I mean, you've been getting threes and fours the whole time. So, you feel good about kind of getting, getting past that? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I've been skiing pretty good. I've been skiing pretty consistent in uh, tournaments. So uh, we got three rounds to figure it out. So, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about it. And, uh, you know, going between all these different sites, like it's it's not easy, but you've obviously been making it work. Like what's been the key to your consistency? I mean, just trying to adjust. It take, maybe it takes a couple sets to kind of figure it out. I've been trying to take a practice set everywhere I go um, and just, I don't know, not take it too seriously in the beginning. Uh, kind of fill out the water and try to just get ready for tournament day. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Back to you guys. All right, then. Uh, we're back on. We've got, uh, we've got Ali Garcia, who's run 14, 13, and now 12 meters. And uh, 
And, you know, she's had some uh, some recent uh, form. I mean, she's gone into 10.75 meters a number of times. And uh, actually, I think actually uh, scored a uh, personal best in one of the the previous two tournaments. Isn't that right, Liche? Yes, that's correct. I think Lacan scored a personal best of three at 10.75 meters. I think her previous score was a two, I believe. Um, I think this year she's skiing really good. And I was talking to her actually the other day, and she's one of those lefty skier which actually prefers her offsides buoy. You see how she can turn here, coming back four, really good with the line tight right there, boom. Her onsides are still good, but I don't know, she likes her offside better. <laughs> and she's, uh, she's certainly had a little bit of a torrid time at the, uh, the beginning part of the season, was changing from one ski to another, then changed back onto her old ski, uh, but uh, seems to have gotten a lot of her confidence back uh, in recent times, uh, Alice. Yeah, I think, you know, as a skier, you might have some up and down, so... I think she was just not skiing that good. Uh, it might have been whatever reason, so she decided to try out her skis. Uh, but then her confidence came back, and she hopped that back on her good ski, and uh, now she's getting good. So we'll see what she's going to get her now at 38, 11. All right, then. Here we go, 11.25 meters. Oh, oh, no. oh and that's she not going to help, help her out. Miss her handle? It would appear so. She was a little bit back in the back of her foot, but... You know, she doesn't, sometimes she just doesn't really turn great, but she keeps going. She has a line tight going to the next buoy, but it appears here she just, yeah, fell back and missed her head. It happens. All right, there. So let's have a look in uh, at a more forensic level here into buoy number one. Bring. Good opening. Yeah, just, yeah. Oh, just completely missed the handle. Well, she like over grabbed it. You know, when you grab it like too much, your hand is not really in a strong position, and then this handle slipped out of her hands. Yeah, because I mean, it's, you like over gripping with your wrist a little bit, yeah. and that's pro and that's probably the weakest part of your grip. Uh, and it happens usually, you know, in training, sometimes in tournament. But it, it's one thing that usually happens like once or twice a year max. So hopefully, next round she's gonna get a better score. All right then. So she's got two more rounds uh, before uh, the uh, the finals. So uh, she'll uh, no no doubt be. Uh, be taking a look at this coverage and uh, uh, determine what what actually happened. You'll, we find increasingly that a, that a lot of a lot of skiers have their performances will actually scrub back on the YouTube uh, channel and check out what they've done and uh, see if they uh, they kind of improve upon it. This is definitely a great thing to use. Um, I feel all the skiers even here on site they just hop on their phone and watch their webcast, watch their skiing back and forth, rolling is slow motion. Everything they can get from the webcast and um, figure it out and get a better technique for the next round. All right, then, as you can plainly see on Dockside, we're getting ready to bring in Ali Nicholson, who's uh, been been having a, uh, a good old uh, a foray into European uh, skiing, uh, not only this season, but also last season as well, where she got the majority of her points on the Water Ski Pro Tour. Yeah, Ali, she's such a great skier. She's really consistent, really powerful. And I think most of all, I think she's really having fun this summer. I know she's hanging out a lot with Bea, being a roommate in all the Airbnbs and all the tournaments. So I think, you know, the first step is to have fun. And if you have fun, then skiing gets better as well. All right then, yeah. So, uh, so that shared experience uh, uh, traveling across Europe certainly uh, certainly helps uh, with our uh, with our skiers. So, and uh, working away towards the dock, and uh, and, and Jamie Bull, uh, the defending champion, uh, stepping uh, around the area where last year that she uh, she came through for the title here in the Kayafas. And you know, I just remember last year, uh, George Hatsis just bringing a you no know, grabbing on the slant ski and dancing around with it you know and uh, you know i mean Jay, jamie was happy enough to win the title but you should should have just seen her face in horror i liked it though because she really <laughs> stepped out of her comfort zone you know jamie she's really concentrating on her skiing but here in greece we're all having fun george was having fun and she just stepped out of her comfort zone and uh, yeah she just i love the yellow bib as well present, representing the gold so Yep, a bit, bit like the Tour de France, really, the uh, the yellow jersey. Yes, exactly. I just started watching it on Netflix with Vince. Yeah. I kind of like it. <laughs> yeah. Although, though, where you're from in Italy, it's like the pink jersey, isn't it? In the Giro d'Italia. I don't follow that much. But. You don't follow? Okay. All right, then. So, anyway, uh, moving on from uh, from road cycling uh, back to Tournament Water Ski Slalom. There you see uh, Jonathan Travers uh, just trying to get settled down here and... Uh, 
Looking around some of our can reviews across the site there, there's our, uh, there's our little uh, our cafe area where, uh, where, our, where our good uh, good folks back there are plying us with, uh, with ultra strong uh, coffee, you uh, know, from uh, various times. That's a good coffee, I have to say, for an Italian that don't drink much coffee, it's a really good coffee. <laughs> Indeed. All right there, here we go. This is Ali Nicholson. Who actually had uh, one or two, one or two, uh, two cups uh, the, this morning? Hopefully, uh, she's uh, she's fully uh, adrenalized out there on the water. Yeah, Ali Nicholson, part of the syndicate team, representing the Pro Tour as well. Just look how she skis. She skis so good, running her 13-meter line, super easy. All right then. So and. We've got uh, Ali Nicholson on the water. We've got uh, uh, Freddie Winter on dark side. You've been crushing it. I mean, I've, I've never seen you ski better. Uh, I'm going to ask you about the ski. You got on that maybe like a month ago, month and a half ago, and you just look like you've got more time. Is that like a big factor in how you've been improving? Yeah, absolutely. I've been loving the ski. Um, got on it after Masters and loved it right away. And it's, um, it's really exciting because I feel like I have a lot of space to improve. And really get to know it and hopefully push some scores out so yeah, I'm super excited. You've been pushing scores out you've been running 10.75 more or less every round so far and, and let, dare I say pretty easily I saw you run a clean one in practice earlier this week um, last year you're running threes and fours you think you're gonna be running 39s 10.75s this week? I mean I hope so that's the plan. Well go do it I'll leave you to it um, good luck back right, to you guys. And we can see here Jamie talking about her ski and her season and here Nate Smith just floating around with Nikki. <laughs> just chilling, having chill vibes before skiing. They have quite a while. It's really good conditions here. It's quite warm. It gets really warm during the day, but it's quite breezy because we're next to the beach. So here, Ali coming back at 12 meter line. All right, so working away. Oh, a little bit of a delay off buoy number one, but uh, but I tell you what, she's uh, had to draw upon her experiences in uh, previous events to uh, to get back on and get round all six buoys on the pass number two. So uh, she started on 13, right? Yeah, she did start at 13. But you know, it's as Freddie was saying before, it's really hard going from tournament to tournament because you don't go back to your house and to your lake and get your training sets in. So. Um, I think she's getting really good. She might be a little bit on and off on this pass, but she's going to get it together for next one. All right. So uh, looking at her, just taking a look at buoy number one. Yeah, a bit of a delay there, but I'll tell you what, she was on the gas straight away and uh, kept the, uh, the line tight, kept, uh, kept tracking out nice and wide. And uh, by about half to two thirds away down the course, uh, she, was, she was back on a game and uh, and ended up running it running it pretty early uh, for uh, on most accounts all right so that is uh, Ali Nicholson I've got Alicia Bagnoli here right next to me doing a doing a doing grand job here <laughs> yep I do have to say that uh, the the Leche over the uh, the last uh, last few last few tournaments last uh, you know last few months uh, gaining a little bit of confidence there to uh, to talk uh, talk with the mic with the microphone and analyze a little bit yeah you've, uh, yeah I agree being in Italy though it's English got a little worse but <laughs> I still I still get I still get it okay <laughs> all right then here we go we've got good one great one excellent a little bit of a stall at two but. Keep pulling around three, get a good angle. She's back headed, there nice you and go. early. This is 11. Yeah. Oh, look at that. You know, Ali, she's, she's so early that she can even permit herself like to have somewhat of a safety five and yeah. still run it good. And she just seems to have that balance in the turn, you know, I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, she does get behind the boat, but I mean, her turn is what makes it for her because I mean, you could take a look at it right here with the gate shot. She rolls in. Now that's the softest uh, turn that you'll see, at the one with the gate shot. But then, then when she gets into the course, she just absolutely throws the hammer down, even here on the offside, uh, Liche. Yeah, and she's definitely always on her front foot. You know, even though you see her leaning a lot and it looks like she's on her back foot, she's constantly on her front foot, always on the right uh, balance, right after the buoys. And she's ready to go for the next one. Just right here, you see? 
Just right. Very forward on the ski. Pulling through to the next buoy. All right, then, excellent stuff. And I'm, I'm one person who we know that is watching <laughs> this live is, uh, is Zane Nicholson, who is the, the head coach of the Warhawks of uh, Louisiana uh, Monroe. Yeah, we had the pleasure to have Zane in some tournaments in the US, and unfortunately couldn't make it this year in Europe, but for sure is watching from the webcast. Yes, indeed, and uh, one of our uh, folks that's a part of the live chat right now, and you can be part of the live chat by subscribing to the TWBC YouTube channel. Okay, Ali Nicholson coming back, 1075. The score to beat is two. Let's have a look. There's one. Good oh, one. Oh, look, a brilliant one. Come oh, on, Ali. She's there. She's there on three. Keep she, it going. Keep, oh, my oh, God. Oh, look at this. Getting in deeper. Oh, and the handle just that came was the away. Best but I mean, she ever done. Oh my God! Oh I'm man! So for her. I would have to absolutely agree with you. And I mean, she's she's probably pleased that she got that much of a break on the first half of the I run. Think she but she couldn't believe it. You know, she she was getting like around three, and we're like, oh my God, I'm so good. And that's the thing, though, controlling one's anxiety. I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously, when fit, when the chips are down. You, you're, you're really going to have to battle anyway. But when you're working this hard and you're this early and you're this good halfway through the run, a, a little bit of self-control uh, really comes into play here. Definitely. I think she's really good at controlling speed. Like, she's not scared to get to the next buoy really fast and she just commits and turns. But I think here it was more, more mentally that... She was actually, she could have run it, you know, but 1075, yeah, it's a hard pass. So. Exactly, and she slapped the water right there, a little bit of frustration, but she's taken the lead. Yeah, it's a great score for the first round. Now she has two more rounds to go. She's already into the final since we're just eight girls. Um, so from now on, it's just a plus, you know. So it's a three and a half at 10.75. She was a little bit delayed, but she had a great angle coming out of three. Reached to four, I think a little bit inside, and then dropped her shoulder a little bit and lost her handle and grip. All right there, so she has the lead with one competitor remaining to take to the water. It will be Jamie Ball. All right there. So there's your leaderboard. Ali Nicholson with three and a half at 10.75. Manon Costard on two. Elizabeth Montavon zero at 10.75. Beatrice Yani currently in fourth on five at 11. All right. Back to back. And a good few of these skiers actually went over to like the local waterfalls, uh, which weren't too far away, and they uh, certainly enjoyed themselves there. Yeah, I missed it this year. I wanted to watch Vinsky, but uh, yeah. definitely enjoyed the waterfall. I think it's a great tournament where all the pro skiers hang out together, have dinner together. So it's a different vibe, but it's definitely a great vibe. All right, and Syndicate looking to put some points on the board with the TWBC brand, a leaderboard, all three of their nominated athletes in that competition here. Uh, with Will Asher will see ski later on. We've just seen Ali Nicholson ski, and on the water right now is Jamie Bull, the current world slalom champion and the defending chi champion here from a Kai Athos in 2022. Let's check in dockside with Freddie. Ali, that's a big score. That is a big score, and you've just been inching up and up and up. Again, we talk about it between the lakes, between the boats, between the, you know, just changing the, 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 the travel, that sort of stuff, and you're still improving. That's the first time I've seen you really try and turn for, I think. Um, must have felt pretty good out there. Yeah, I felt pretty good. I mean, I was when I came into four there, I was like, don't stop. I've been getting three, and I've gotten a couple three and a halfs already on this tour, so I'm, I'm wanting to run it. I'm getting a little frustrated with my three and a halfs. I just got to get that offside, and then I think we'll be cruising. Yeah, I mean, as a lefty, it's such a big turn because you get to five, you can kind of, you know, we've seen you do it at 38 last year when you were a bit late on that other ski when you weren't really used to it. You just get to five in sort of any sort of shape and just turn the hell out of it. So it's coming. Yeah, we're getting there. I mean, I'm definitely very happy. I've been getting great starts. I mean, that was an incredible one ball. I mean, a good start. So I'm happy. We got two more rounds to try to figure it out before the finals, and hopefully we can put up a big score in the final. That's great. Congratulations. You're in the lead. Uh, we'll see what happens now, but you're guaranteed second off this round. Um, we'll see where we go. The next couple and then the final. Back to you guys. Okay, so thanks a lot, Freddie. Thanks a lot, uh, Ali Nicholson. As we take a look right here and now at Jamie Ball, the current world slalom champion. 
who's uh, been on a, a good run of form in uh, recent times. Let's see what she's got. 30 meter start. Jamie Bull nice and solid. Strong position, strong position cross course. Really easy pass for her. Just feeling around the water, feeling around the road, the driver. And one thing I tend to notice a little bit with uh, with uh, Jamie Balls' ski, and especially off one, three, and five, is uh, is the is the water breaks on the ski a little bit, little bit behind her front boot. It doesn't look like the ski is like fully rotating, but you know that's a, that's a deceiving angle to actually watch it from from the boat. But I mean, she uh, she she really stays on course despite that. Yeah, I mean, she's really a strong skier, and she's really on top of her ski. So even if the ski doesn't rotate a lot. Um, she has uh, you know, the, the capability of managing her own ski and bringing it to the next buoy with, uh, with a lot of angle. All right, so after the conclusion of the first round of women, we're going to go into the men. A change of driver from, uh, from Nathan McGarry, whom you see at the, the helm of this, uh, this tow boat. And uh, we will go on to the men's, uh, starting off with Callum Heath, who we just saw briefly on dockside. Yeah, so program of today, we have two rounds of the pros and tomorrow the third round coming up in the morning and the finals right after that. All right, here we go. This is Jamie Ball who started in on the 30 meter line and this is now 12. Coming to us out of uh, North Bay in Ontario, Canada. And formerly a skier for the uh, Louisiana Rage and Cajuns and part of the syndicate team. There we go, that's Jamie Ball. It's just a pleasure to watch her skiing. Yeah. You know, there's always a girl that we're looking up to ski like her, um, have her technique and strength. That's at least my ideal. Indeed, so that is Jamie Ball uh, dropping in on the, uh, the larger uh, Caiaphas Lake, the drop zone uh, for uh, for the even numbered passes. Look at that connection with her handle. She's always she always knows where she is. She always knows where the line is, and that's why she makes it look so easy. Yes, and uh, does plenty of work in the off season, not only in the gym but also uh, outdoors as well. Uh, she's a uh, a, uh, a, a deep cross country uh, a snow, snow skier uh, does all the all of those uh, activities. Instructor as well, snow yeah. ski instructor. Snow ski instructor as well. So yeah. I mean, she's uh, she's definitely got uh, the uh, uh, got the muscle. She's definitely got the uh, the mm. physique to excel in this uh, this event uh, through what she does in the off season. And uh, we'll see uh, see what she can do with the. Uh, with the next pass coming right up. It, the pass coming right up is gonna be the 11.25 meter run. Here comes Jamie Bull. 11 meter. 11.25 meters, entrance gates number one. Good one. Drops in hard on number Ooh. two. She is right a righty, which means a turn on two four is gonna be better than one three. She has her ski a little bit underneath, maybe a little too much underneath her on two and four. Yeah, and uh, something that she has to make allowances for uh, technique-wise, And uh, but she manages to get through 11.25 meters and becoming, uh, what is it, one of only uh, uh, four competitors now to have gotten through this run and put a score on to 10.75 meters. The other, uh, the other skiers are... Uh, Manon Kostar, Elizabeth uh, Montavon, and, uh, and Ali Nicholson. Yeah, definitely the goal of all the girls for this tournament is to get through 11.25 meter pass and get a score at 10.75 meter. The, that's going to be the lead score, if not at 10.25 meter from Jamie. We'll see what she's going to do, but it's gonna, definitely going to be the podium scores. Nicely done. So there we go. That is Jamie Ball. Our final skier in the women's competition in round one before we go into a round two, which will take place a little bit later on for the women. So we've got the, uh, the men coming up next for round one. 
A little bit warm here in uh, Western Palapanesia. Right on the Adriatic coast, uh, not too far away from Saqqara. This is the Kayafas Pro 2023. And this is Jamie Bull. Coming back, 1075 meter. Score to beat is three and a half. Good one, going around two. A little bit in the back, but get a good swing around three. Stay calm and stable around four. Stay there. There we go. There we go, get it. Get it! Six buoys, 1075. Aha. And I'm not too sure what the course record is here, but I'm sure it's gonna get gonna be very, very close to that. A six buoy count at 1075. I don't remember, but I think last year she got a score of four, maybe. I'm not sure if she ran it last year or not. I think she got a score of four or five, uh, if I'm not mistaken, but something along those lines uh, will uh, would Let's see. Look what a good one ball, leaning through the wakes, getting a handle connection around two ball. A little bit delayed, but she knows that if she pulls really hard, to get a good crossing. Yeah, you see, she's just back at it. Mentality plays a lot of good roles in water skiing. You know, she knows that she has to stay calm and patient to get through the pass. Even though she gets a little bit delayed, she just maintains that delay and get through the whole pass. So uh, her best this season is two. Two at 10.25 meters or 41 off. Okay, so in the uh, the the uh, the competition last year in the uh, the pro women's uh, slalom, she won the event uh, with three at 10.75 meters. So uh, that is the course record which she has broken. Now she's going to have a crack at 41 off for 10.25 meters to reset the course record here in round one. Here she goes, round buoy number one. Oh. Little deep, but it's one buoy. She takes the lead, and uh, I think she can rest easy. Yeah, great scheme for Jamie. 10 to five is definitely a hard pass. She definitely wants to get a score above um, two buoys, but one is a great score for the first round. And I think she's happy. Right, you are. So uh, it is a one buoy count at 10.25 meters. I think leaning too much over the rope, she was, I think she got her pull a little bit too late and then got a little bit narrower on one. What do you think, Tony? Yeah, I think uh, I think any mistake that you make at this stage of the competition, you know, is going to be magnified purely because of the fact that the rope is that so far so short at 10.25 meters. The course is 11 and a half meters wide. Her ski did turn though, so she was ready yeah. to commit that full buoy and turn and go into two. A little bit backwards, so the ski didn't fully rotate enough. But all right, so we'll bring a uh, Jamie Ball back to the dock. She is your leader after round one, with one at 10.25 meters. There you see Nicholson in second place with three and a half at 10.75. Costan in third with two at 10.75. Montavon with zero at 10.75 meters, and uh, Beatrice Yani with five and 11.25 meters to round off the top five. All right, back into the dock, and uh, no doubt we'll get to talk to her a little bit in, in just a moment, but it can't help but be impressed with what you've just seen there, Alice. Yes, maintaining her yellow bib as a first round. If you go on waterskibroadcasting.com slash play, you can win a ski of your choice. Right, and as our good friend there, George Hatz is in the background there with the uh, with the local mic, uh, uh, re-emphasizing. That's that's a Greek vibe that I was talking about, Tony. You see, Jamie, she's yeah. not even on the dog, and her mic is already on her. <laughs> exactly, exactly, and uh, we'll. we'll uh, all right there. So we're uh, looks like we got Freddie. So uh, let's uh, let's get on over there, over there, and uh, check in with Freddie. Uh, about it. I mean, it just looks like you're on another level. It's obviously not the ski; it's you. But I mean, this is this is incredible. Yeah, no, that felt super great. So I'm really excited for how everything's feeling and. 
just looking to get some more attempts at 41 and try and push it down the course a bit. When you can run 39 that easy, you know, you had you, you weren't hacking turns, you were in the rhythm, you had the swing, you know, you just need to get that start at 41, it's gonna go, you're gonna go deep down it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, a lady, a few words. All right, well, uh, we'll leave her to it. Her excellence, she's a reigning champion. She's just ran a course record, and I think we're going to go bigger this, w this weekend, I would imagine, just quickly. Fingers crossed. All right, back to you guys. Yeah, a lady of very, very few words. Uh, uh, very, very understated with what she's done out there, but uh, I, think she, I think she's letting the skiing uh, do the talking for her as uh, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at the leaderboard uh, in just a moment. There you go, Jamie Ball with one at 10.25 meters. Incidentally, that's only, that's only about one and a quarter buoy short of the Canadian national record, which stands at two and a quarter, courtesy of Whitney McClintock Greeny. There we go, second place with, uh, with that score of three and a half at 10.75 by uh, Ellie Nicholson. Manon Costard uh, in good form with two at 10.75 meters in third place right now. Elizabeth Montavon in fourth there with, uh, with zero at 10.75. Beatrizia Yani and, uh, and Alicia Bagnoli with five and four at 11.25 meters respectively. Uh, Alexa uh, Ali Garcia with half at 11.25 and Taylor Wolsey with half on 12. So those are the eight skiers that we've seen. They all make it through to the uh, to the final round. We've got two more rounds of uh, slalom in for the women between now and then. And uh, we'll be back uh, right after this. This is the Kai Athens Pro Battle of 2023. Back right after these. <laughs> I told you there was a place, a place where the sounds of nature are only broken by the roar of a boat, a place where that summer feeling lasts all year long, a place where the Florida sun is only outshined by the smiles of the skiers, a place where first-time skiers can ski alongside world champions and the world-class coaches work with all levels of skiers. What if I told you there was a place where life slows down and your only job is to make lifelong memories? That place is Swiss Water Ski Resort. Book your trip at SwissWaterSkiResort.com. Hey, we're back up there, Alice. Uh, we've got uh, round one of the men's slalom in competition about to take place. Uh, we're, I'm sure that we'll get to see the uh, the running order. Callum Heath from Great Britain will take some water first, followed by Arno Durick of Belgium, then Carlo Elias of of Italy. I haven't seen him around this morning, but I'm sure he's. Uh, he's I saw him yesterday night. You saw him yesterday yeah. night. Okay, that's good. Uh, then we've got Aaron Davies of Great Britain. Uh, we've got Jaime Palomino of Mexico. Tim Tornquist uh, with his uh, ski now uh, from Sweden. Uh, we've got uh, uh, Nikki Antonsen of Austria. Stephen Island of the United States. Uh, Tom Paul from Great Britain. Sasha Deskin of France. Uh, Jonathan Travers and Corey Vaughan, both from the United States, which leaves us with seven more competitors to go. Starting off with Matteo Luzzeri, Brando Caruso, and Thomas de Gasperi, all of them from Italy. Then we got another trio, only this time from Great Britain, with Robert Hazelwood, Will Asher, and Freddie Winter. And we round off with skier number 19, Nate Smith. So. Definitely a good field coming up, coming up 19 skiers. We are seeing that every tournament the cut is getting harder and harder. Three yeah. at 41 is. Not enough anymore to make yeah. the top eight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I mean, Robert Hazelwood actually has said on on a on a yeah. vlog for 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 HO skis that uh, skiing 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 halfway through 10.25 10.25 meters just isn't enough anymore. Yeah. You need you need you need to make make a play on four, you know, to to stand any real realistic chance of 
getting through to an event final. And I'm sure that that's going to play on the mind of this guy right here. This is Callum Heath from Great Britain. You know, yeah, it's definitely hard scores coming up and the uh, size looking great. Conditions are very easy at this lake, so I think we're going to see great scores. All right then, Ali. All right then, Aliche. Talk to us about the driver. It's Manuel Domini now. Yeah, Manuel is a great driver. I think he's going to drive a lot of tournaments this year. Um, he's been driving a lot in uh, Sperlonga, where Bayer trains, uh, the other Italian skiers. He's, he's fairly young, you know, to be one of the good drivers out there, but um, he's capable of driving good scores and good skiers, and he's pushing a lot to drive more. That's what we need, young drivers coming up. Indeed, indeed. You, and you know one personally yourself, I guess. Yes, I wish Vince could drive more, but between the webcasts, yeah. And family matters. <laughs> Let's say not enough driving. Okay. All right, there. There we see on dock side there from Belgium. That's Arno de Rick. And uh, certainly the excitement building here uh, for this uh, for this slalom event. We got the old uh, uh, dance music in the background, you know. But uh, that yeah, vibes are pushing now. Mm -hmm. More than before. All right. So Callum coming back. First pass. Thirty meter line. Eight two. Yep. Alpha two. A popular setting. Yep. Let's have a look and see. Callum Heath. Callum Heath, who these, these days works as a plumber in London. Very composed through the waves. You see how his shoulders and upper body does not move at all. He's one of our taller slants he is as well, which is going to help him uh, as the rope gets shorter, although the center of gravity is going to move away from the ski, which, uh, which won't help him uh, all that much. But uh, we'll see what Callum Heath can well, do. Well, you definitely need those extra inches when you reach the buoy at shorter ropes. I see a lot of uh, skiers holding their handle on their fingertips to get those lengthened. Indeed, indeed. Every little bit helps. And uh, as we see Callum Heath go through pass number one, I know Manuel was very excited about that camera in the boat. He was definitely excited to have it and uh, people to see him drive. Red Bull van. Videos as well. Yep, the vibes are certainly increasing here at the Caiaphas Pro 2023. Yep. By the end of the tournament, there's going to be five Red Bull vans with 20 speakers around the lake. <laughs> I'm already one Red Bull deep right now. Yeah. You got three on the table. I hope you're not going to drink the three of them. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go absolutely nuts. One, yeah. for each, one for each round, I guess. Anyway, so uh, we've got coming in on pass number two. This is going to be 12 meters. So what's, what are the major differences? What things need to happen between 13 and 12 to be successful? Well, you know, I think 13 and 12 is still pretty much easy passes, early Whoa. passes, where you kind of want to settle in and get your own rhythm. Um, I think mainly the more you get short with the rope, the more you need to be quick and make sure you're on top of the ski full on. Okay. Um, but I think 12 is still like an early pass. So except that buoy that we saw down there, it should have not been a hard one. All right, so he's gotten through the uh, the first uh, the first couple of runs, 13 and 12. You know, in between 55 and 58, there's a lot of difference in the technique. Um, I did ski at 58, not so many times. It was just the driver put the wrong speed, so I did try it like maybe two, three times. Um, I do not like it. I'm good at 55. Okay, just get settled in. I think it's a little in. scary for me, but. Everything happens quicker, so your body position, it needs to be stronger, but it needs to also move quicker through the buoy and after the buoy, because um, the water feels harder and uh, obviously the speed is faster, so. Yeah, and uh, hard, certainly hard enough to cause uh, cause one or two injuries uh, for uh, for our uh, skiers. I mean, we make reference, obviously, to Adam Saddlemeyer's uh, deal that, uh, that happened in the last uh, pro tournament where he took it took a big old hit going off uh, number five into number six and uh, the end result there is that uh, Adam Saddlemyer uh, out of the uh, out of the uh, the competition so 
So coming in on 11.25 meters. A little bit of a stall out of two there. Ooh, Ski got a little stuck also four, but I think, yeah, at four is back at it. Five, good five. Not the best of his pass, but he definitely managed his way through. Um, I don't think it's going to be a boost of confidence going into 1075, but it doesn't really matter how you run it. It's just, you need to run it. Yeah, I think he's just going to go all in at 10.75 meters, not not worry so much about uh, keeping anything in reserve at this point in the proceedings. And, you know, the we've got 19 men in this slot. All right then, welcome back. Uh, all right then, so welcome back to continuing live coverage of this, the 2023 uh, Kayafas uh, Pro uh, Battle. Uh, we had a little bit of a situation with a power outage and uh, uh, and uh, looks like uh, we're back online. You have not missed a single uh, bit of the action. Uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be coming back uh, with Callum Heath. In, uh, in, just a, in just a moment, he's cleared 13, 12, and 11.25 meters. Now, I don't know how long the delay was, but I mean, if, it was, if it's uh, over a certain point, then Callum Heath will have the option to come back into the course on the, uh, on the same line length, or, or actually any line length that he chooses uh, for, the, uh, for the previous run. Uh, without With a secure score of 6 at 11.25 meters. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's got a... Uh, He's got a score, yes, yeah, secure score of a six at uh, 11.25 meters, and he'll have a chance to go back in at 10.75 meters from the opposite direction. Yeah, I think as we can see, the boat is there at the dock, so I think they're gonna go for an up and down before bringing the skier in. And then we're gonna have confirmation of what the skier is gonna coming back at. All right then, so we'll have that and uh, we'll return in a few moments. Apologies once again uh, for the uh, for the outage and uh, we'll uh, we'll return with uh, with Callum Heath with Callum Heath and uh, here we are, LEJ, and uh, enjoyable so far. Uh, quite eventful. I mean, we've just seen we saw uh, Jamie Ball uh, uh, conjure up a, a new course record. With two at 10.25 meters right here at uh, Caiaphas. And uh, let's check in dockside with Freddie. With Ali. With Ali. Hey guys, Ali Nicholson here. Uh, we had a little bit of a power down, uh, so we're about to start skiing again. I'll get you guys some dockside interviews here soon. Looks like we're gonna have Callum back out on the water. One warm up pass before he comes back at 10.7. We'll get to talk to him here shortly. Back to you guys. Excellent stuff, Ali. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll return to live and continuing action. Here at the Caiaphas Pro Battle for 2023, back after these. We're back, and uh, yes, we are back. As a matter of fact, a few of you commented on the live chat, uh, uh, keeping keeping things honest here. Uh, so, for you guys that have uh, commented on the the the, uh, the stuff being frozen, uh, there was a reason for that, and uh, apologies for the power outage. And we are back on now. 
let's uh, let's check in on Dockside uh, with uh, with Ali, I believe. All right, Arno. So a little bit of a delay, kind of throwing off your rhythm. Still feeling ready, kind of waiting it out. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Uh, I'm happy to be here, and we will see what I can do. Yeah, first time uh, here to Kaya Fest. Have you been practicing? How's it been going? I did one set. It felt good, and I'm just happy to be here. Only heard good things about this place. Skiing is on the side. That's what I heard, so that's why I'm here. Yeah, big scores from the women. I think we're going to see some big scores from the men. I think so. I think so. It's going to be great. It's going to be a beautiful day. All right, we'll let you get focused. Thank Best you. of luck. Back to you guys. Thank you. Yes, and Anna do Rick, a uh, uh, happy-go-lucky uh, uh, kind of a skier, uh, happy uh, happy to be anywhere, really. Yeah, I know yeah. he was telling me he really enjoyed his time back in Belgium last week, and now he's fully back in skiing at the second, I think, pro tournament of the season in the summer, as in Europe. So now we see Callum Eath coming back at 11.25 meter, secure pass with six buoys, Confirm is just a warm-up pass for then coming back at 75. So yes, indeed. So uh, no risk here. Uh, on 11.25 minutes, he will come back at 10.75 minutes, irrespective of what he does here. You know, not easy. He had a. <laughs> He's certainly not making this easy on himself. Yeah. Well, he had a little bit of a pause and then coming back at it straight to 11.25 meter. You know. Yeah, Our rhythm already. Yeah, cold off the dock, 11.25 yeah. meters. Uh, uh, not easy, even to, even for some of the better better skiers out there. Definitely, but he got a grip of that pass, and now he's going to come back at 10.75 meter. And um, what's his best score? I don't know. Actually. Uh, his uh, best score of the season. Let me let me let me check that out Did for he you. Did ever run the pass? Uh, I think he's actually think run uh, something uh, something into 10.25 meters okay. in the past. Uh, so uh, he he actually uh, in the uh, in the previous tournaments uh, so far this season he's gotten a four and a half at 11.25 meters. Okay. Uh, that was at Botas, and uh, then he uh, he followed that up uh, with the uh, with the fungus. Uh, 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 performances he got two at 10.75 meters there let's have a look at some of the stuff that he uh, produced the last season okay so for this season his best score is two at 10.75 something so like that I yeah guess he's gonna want to try to beat his score for this tournament yeah. all right here we go 10.75 meters looking to put a score out there that will be among his uh, better ones of the season he needs a good gate to make sure that he goes through the entire pass oh, oh and, and, and just down. absolutely collapsed around buoy number one and uh, yeah. he was swimming to the shore getting half at 10.75 meters it's uh, within about a buoy and a half of what he's done uh, previously this season so far as his best score but uh, back to the drawing board a little bit uh, for uh, for round number two for him. It's not a it's not a best score. Um, I don't think he's fully happy about it. I don't think it's going to be enough for the finals. But um, he definitely had to have a good gate in order to run the pass. And I think he rushed a little bit. Ooh, the ski just stopped. I think he wanted to run the entire pass at one ball. But there you go. He just uh, stopped cold there on uh, buoy number one. And uh, let's see. Uh, See what this angle shows us. Okay, it was good. It was, yeah. Yeah, just I think it was just a little quick on the handle and the ski. Yeah, exactly. I mean, when you bring that outside hand too soon, it just stops the ski cold yeah. no matter where you are. He's definitely going to go back on the webcast and watch himself and get a better technique for second round. All right, then. Next gear up, coming to us out of Belgium. This is Arno de Rijk. I know he's been skiing a lot in Swiss in the US. He loves the crew, Vince, Alice, Nikki, Arno, yes, and Clint, and course. Benny. Back to the program. Okay. Yep, over at uh, Swiss Water Ski Resort outside uh, Claremont. You can find out more about the uh, the program there by going to SwissWaterSkiResort.com. Arno Derek, a part of that program. Yeah. So I was, as I was saying before, he really enjoyed his time back in Belgium. I don't think he was skiing a lot. Uh, but I think he was enjoying also some time with the family and friends. So I think this is the first tournament where he's back at it, um, fully skiing and hopefully getting a score of 1075 meters. Yep, he's been a, been been away from home for uh, for a good while in uh, in Central Florida and uh, for a good few of the uh, the tournaments uh, 
across uh, across Florida. That is Arno de Rick and uh, I'm Tony Lightfoot, and she is Alicia Bagnoli. How are you doing? You got your, your, your you got your letter. You, you got your. I like uh, my yellow Red Bull. Your yellow it's Red Bull. Tropical what, what fruits. Fr tropical fruits, huh? Yeah. I'm 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 quite partial to the original flavor myself, uh, but I do like the grape and the, the cranberry as well whenever I can find that. Here we can see some skier hanging out at the cafe area. All right, so talking about her day, her set. Something like that, I would say. I don't know if you can read lips or anything like no. that. But no, <laughs> definitely no. not. All right, right. Now we see Arno coming at 13 meter line. 13 meter start. I believe Alpha 2. All right, let's see. First thing, avoid the tower. Second yeah. thing. You're going to see Arno is at, he goes really deep at his on side. So we'll see what he's going to do today. Here he comes. Arno de Rick. Entry. One. Number one, nice and early for number two. All the way in the back. Good rhythm, very good rhythm for a first pass. Yep. All right then, let's uh, check in dockside with Ali. All right, here with Carlo Elias. Uh, how are you feeling this morning? Really good, thank you. With this wonderful weather, lake it looks just perfect. You all girls did an awesome job, so we have to ski good anyway. Yeah, we were just talking a, a new ski here from the last tournament we saw you. Yep. Yeah, well, actually it's the same brand, just a different shape. Uh, so I was easy switch to do it, so I really like it. And I say, okay, jump on it. All right, well, I hope we see big scores from you. Thank you, thank you. Best of luck out there. Back to you guys. All right then. So I don't know uh, that's what something. Is to on. Was it on a 01 or 02? Not too sure. Not too sure. I'm, I'm, so it was on an 01. Yeah. Yeah. So on an 01. So we're still skiing on the good. I don't really know the difference between the two skis, but I think they both ski pretty yeah, good. All the HR skier have been I mean, around pretty easily. I mean, I mean the uh, the changes between each ski is it's very very subtle. You know, I mean, I mean they don't make too many whole scale movements unless you're talking about the T gas addition slalom ski, which is made for one person and one person alone. Here we go. This is Arno Derick. Coming back, 12 meter line, big one ball. Ooh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Real Hello. Low. Really Stay in there. Stay in there. really strong. Stay in there. He, he, he has to be strong. Yeah, oh, I Oh, my word. That was not a good two ball, but he knew a three. He just had to close his hands and hold on to the handle. He's skiing like an unmade bed out there. <laughs> he, he knows, though, so he's ready for it. He knows that at some point it's going to come. He oh. definitely doesn't hope for that technique to be um, through the pass. He definitely hopes for a better technique, but if it happens, well, he's ready for it. Well, well, it can only be, it can only get better for Arno de Rick, I guess. You know, I mean, with the next pass coming up, he's run. What is it through 13 and 12, 11.25 meters. If he can get a halfway decent start, uh, then then things can uh, can happen positively here. I'm yeah. here with Alicia Bagnoli here at the desk. I'm Tony Lightfoot, and uh, behind me here is uh, the uh, the Volkswagen. Uh, uh, ID uh, ID Buzz uh, van over here, the in, in r resplendent in in orange, a fully electric van uh, can uh, can be recharged in under eight hours using using the uh, the power bank you would install at your home. And uh, if you're if you're on the road in one of those uh, those high voltage uh, 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 charging stations, it can uh, recharge from empty to full in under an hour. All right, Arno the Rick. Coming back 11.25 meters, he needs a good start. He needs a good start, but he doesn't need a big one ball. So let's see what he's going to do. Here he comes. Big one. Oh, big that's, one. A, that's <laughs> about as huge as it gets. Oh, uh, a little, little bit of a safety too. Boom. There's no big safety three, there on three. Unfortunately, it doesn't make it into four. Oh, man. He actually that's had a, a good start. I don't think one was too bad. I think it was an aggressive one. And I think he wanted to be a little bit cautious at two, but unfortunately he didn't really quite get the turn he wanted. Um, you know, it's quite hard as a lefty. When you have a big one ball, you never really know what's going to happen at two, so you always tend to ski a little bit easy. But then you have the opposite um, 
sustain that it doesn't really turn enough and then you don't get to the next buoy. You see here it took a little bit easy but stalled and was a little bit too patient and unfortunately it was quite narrow around three ball. Yeah. Still it, it, not best king for Arno though. It's not it's round. not bad, it's not bad, but he's definitely gonna have to work. Yeah. I know he lot. wants to run it, that's his goal. Yeah. And and he's and he's gonna have to come away. He's going to have to make some whole scale changes technically, you know, to to do it in a way that's sustainable because obviously he's strong he, and, he, and he's and he's certainly powerful. He's got all the physi physique that you could possibly want. But when you're having to rely upon that and that alone to uh, to get you through passes, then it's not sustainable. Thank you. Yeah. Next on the dock, we see Carlo Lies getting ready for his set. All the cameras on him. Yes, indeed. Now, Carlo Elias, who, uh, who for a long time was uh, and still is one of the ta Italy's uh, uh, top uh, top slalomers, you know, still uh, still hanging hanging with the younger crowd uh, in Italian slalom skiing. And you know, Carlo works a lot in Italy, so it's, it gets harder and harder to really get good skiing when you work so much in Italy. But I think he managed to come a few times in the US to get some practice in before the summer. So he did mention, uh, it, there was mention of him switching skis. Indeed he has. He switched from good to syndicate, it looks he like. He did at the O2. beginning of the season, yes. Um, I think he's been struggling to find really a ski that works for him. He's been trying, I think, a few brands. And uh, as we can see, I guess he's settled in with the HO. Yeah, indeed. And uh, it's the same ski that's ridden by Robert Hazelwood. Uh, the uh, the O2. Rob, Jamie, Benny have all uh, switched to the O2 while the, rem the remainder of the syndicate crew, you know, uh, JT and Will Asher and Sasha Deska and all riding the A uh, the uh, the the o what the works o one, you know. So uh, syndicate are coming through with a ski which seems to be uh, up to the liking and uh, persuading a lot of skiers to uh, to change. Yeah, and as we're gonna see in this tournament, all the ski brands are showing up uh, through the guys and girls. Um. All right then. So let's take a look at the uh, the brand leaderboard. Uh, uh, D three right now on the three eighty nine. Uh, syndicate uh, uh, 376. And Considering that D3 actually has two skiers, uh, Fred yeah. and Nate, it doesn't have a girl. Uh, unfortunately, Brooke, uh, she's injured, so she's not competing as of now. Yeah. It's pretty good. They're in first place. We just, you know, the top. Not bad. Three. Not bad. Very, very consistent, you know, uh, keeping their, uh, their, their two main competitors and the top two placings on the World Ski Pro Tour certainly helps. A lot of HO skiers, though, also in this tournament. And. Uh, and Tigas representing good. Indeed. All right then, here we go. Carlo. This here, here and now is Carlo Elias. 30 meter line. 30 meter start. Entrance round buoy number one, looking in good, good shape. Keeping things on an even keel here. Look. Looking good on 30 meters, and and you know I mean he uh, he ran that fairly easily, and that was by design. He wasn't skiing like full full on pressure, but uh, we'll uh, we'll check in with uh, with Ali. All right, so I'm here with our 2022 skier of the day from Caiaphas Battle. Uh, how you feeling? Feeling good. You know, weather's great. We've been looked after very well this week so far. Uh, just looking forward to getting out there. Yeah, I can say as one of the skiers returning, it feels pretty good to be back. Oh yeah, I've practiced uh, and I had a pretty good set uh, on uh, what was it, Thursday. So just looking forward to skiing, honestly. Yeah, so you put out some big scores here last year. I know you're coming back a little bit from the injury. Uh, hopefully we see something big from you today. Yeah, I'd love to put something big up there let, let everyone else chase it. All right, best of luck out there. Thank you. Back to you guys. I yeah. think a lot of that was, was called managing expectations here. <laughs> Yeah, Aaron unfortunately had a little bit of an injury, so he spent a lot of time recovering from that. Hence the reason why he's got that long grey sleeve on his right arm. Manuel Domini at the wheel, all matching blue. 
Carla Lies coming back at 12 meter line. Second pass. All right, here we go. Coming in on uh, pass number two. 12 meters. Good managing of the ski and the rope on this pass. A little bit of, was a little bit on his tail uh, on his 135. A little bit yeah. of a delay on that buoy, but overall, it's not looking skiing good. Not looking too bad at all, as a matter of fact, you know, from uh, from the uh, from the start uh, right the way through to where we are right now with uh, with uh, Carlo Elias. As we take a look there, there at, are quite uh, a few Italians and British people in this tournament. Yeah, especially in the uh, in the uh, the latter half of this uh, this list, uh, mm -hmm. we saw uh, on that list a trio of British, a trio of Italians, and then you had uh, Nate Smith from the United States uh, rounding things off. You know, but uh, we've yet to get to, to that point, and. Uh, and where, and where it comes down to the ugliest shorts in the world contest, I think uh, Nicky <laughs> Antonson wins that hands down. The, He's still uh, pushing through with those shorts. Yeah, indeed. I mean, the uh, the U21 Worlds was, was just really, really tragic, really. Yeah. Well, it worked out, didn't it? it certainly Second did. Place. certainly did. We <laughs> get a few of our, uh, our crowd here, our, some of our early crowd here on uh, on a Saturday morning. There we see uh, Nate Smith uh, uh, just just trying to stay chill. You know, for as hot it is right here, um, if you're underneath those tents, it's actually really cool. With the wind a little bit, the shade is it's really nice. All right, here we go. Carlo Alais coming back into the course right here and now. He's gone through, uh, what is it, 13, 13 and 12. 12. Now 11. This is 11. A little bit of a delay on number one. No, on good start. Two, five. Oh, a little bit of a delay off number four, but I tell you what. A little bit narrow on his 135. That's why then he gets a little bit of a pause and a slack line. But, but he uses ex his experience very, very well and uh, runs it with room to spare, even though he was a little late off five. Yeah, you know, as I was saying again, at 58, it's really hard to get a connection with the line, but at the same time, you have to in order to get a good turn and go through the next buoy. Um, I think Carlo at this point, as we're seeing here, he has a great reach. I, I really like when skiers reach and they're already on their way with the position on their way to the next buoy. But at the same time, I think he could, it could just keep his line right here just a little bit longer in order to be a little bit wider. Yeah, so the line comes out just a little bit further away from the body and, uh, and, and just allows the ski to fully rotate and connect around. The ski turns really well, and I think his upper body is just giving up a little bit on his offside, but overall good pass. So let's see what he's going to do at 10.75 meter. I know he wants to run it this year. I don't think he hasn't run it yet. Yeah, his season best is 3 at 10.75 this year. He's definitely capable of running it. Um, conditioners are there, drivers are there, so Let's see what he can do. 10.75 meter, Tony. All right, 10.75 meters. Here comes Carlo Elias. Scored three at 10.75 meters at the Monaco Cup, and uh, will uh, will come away with uh, with that score, which I believe is going to be what is it? Uh, a three, three, three yeah, again. I think it's three. So not I bad. I don't think it was a terrible one. I think. Let's see here. The gain. I think it looked good. Good gait, good strength. Really working hard to hold his position. A little bit bogged Not down off number one. one. But he had a good line, turning into two. I think he's pulling a little bit long, and it's a little bit opened up. But I think after turning two, I think he knew he, he was not able to run it. So he got a good pull out of three, um, and then just pulled to the dock. All right, and back to the dock he is. That's Carlo Elias, who uh, comes to us uh, out of uh, out of Italy. I don't know what he what he does uh, professionally. I think he's actually qualified as an architect. But uh, I know he talks a lot to my dad uh, regarding um, tubes and uh, stainless steel stuff. Huh. All that good stuff. Okay. 
All right then, so we've got Aaron Davies of Great Britain. He comes to us uh, from Bolton in England. I know he's another guy that yesterday spent his whole day at the lake watching his girlfriend Violetta. He skipped three times actually yesterday. A2. Yeah. One minute. Uh, one minute. <laughs> it was a lot of skiing for her in one day and now it's his turn. All right, absolutely. And uh, Aaron Davies, member of uh, Louisiana's Rage and Cajun water ski team. And a uh, big shout out uh, to uh, to Ryan Gonzalez and uh, and the, all the other uh, Raging Cajuns, uh, present and past, for the University of Louisiana at Lafayette water ski team. So Aaron Davis is uh, skiing in towards the drop zone, and uh, the, uh, the skier will get about 45 seconds. And uh, let's check in dockside with Ali. All right, fresh off the water, how did it feel out there? Warm out of the water, really, really good. Really good feeling. I mean, boat is perfect and everything is fine. No wind so far, so I had, I think, the best condition so far. Yeah, yeah, so uh, you told me before you skied that you hadn't taken a practice set here, so that was kind of your first time filling out the water. Uh, hopefully only up from here, right? First time ever, so I just have to do better than this. I hope. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the gates are a little weird, so I think with practice it'll, uh, it'll come along. Yeah, well, there is... I think they're just they're different one to the other one. So water is perfect, that is fine, but yeah, I just need another set, I think. Thank you. Yeah, of course, back to you guys. All right. Yeah, so. as Carlos say, you know, um, it is a great site. The water is absolutely amazing, but as a first set, it's quite different. The water is, it feels almost soapy. It's a little salty, so I think it gets you one or two sets to get used to it. Yeah, it's brackish water is the expression. Yeah, I think we're they had a whole for. deal last year of asking how's the water. I think it's not that weird, but it takes one or two sets to get used to it. All right, then. Let's have a look and see what our next gear can produce. This is Aaron Davis. Coming in on 13 meters, the uh, the two U nutritional bars skier of the day last season here at uh, Kai Affers. Our really tall skier, really good skier. He's just managing his way through 13 meter, nice and easy. He's getting his rhythm in, I think. Well, no, all I right, think really good. looking all right on uh, pass number one. And uh, as he gets ready to go towards the drop zone, let's check in with Ali. All right, Van Palomino coming out of um, U21 Worlds, now into a pro event. How are you feeling? Uh, I didn't do my best U21 Worlds, but it's time for revenge now. Hopefully I can get some deep 39s maybe even run it. No nerves, just excitement, so let's get it done. Yeah, sweet. So not too many pro events under your belt, correct? Uh, no, not so many. This is maybe not one of my first ones, but I haven't done much, so still learning about it. All right, well, I think conditions are great out there. I think we can see a big score. Go get it down. Thank you, Alex. All right, back to you guys. All right, so a little bit of redemption on offer there for uh, Jaime Palomino. Well, you know, I was telling Jaime yesterday, he had a great start of the senior finish, fourth at the Mumba Masters. Yeah. And then he ran his first time 39, 1075 at Swiss and uh, somewhere else, I believe. So it is normal to hit it down here a little bit at some point. It just, it was a bad time and that it was the U21 Worlds, but He's going to come back up and hopefully he's going to do it at this tournament. All right. Now looking uh, looking towards a pass number two, age 24. This is Aaron Davis. 12 meter line. 12 meter line. His best score this season has been three at 10.75. That was at the uh, the Lake 38 uh, Pro earlier on this season over in uh, Tallahassee in uh, Florida. I know last year's his score here was three at 10.25 meter. Um, now coming back from an injury, I think he's going to be happy already by running 10.75 meter, hopefully, and uh, whatever he can get at 10 to 5, I think it's going to be a bonus for him. All right, good stuff. So, that is Aaron Davies. Was like, oh! He's gone through the, uh, the opening two right. runs of 13 really? and 12. There you see our current leaderboard for it, 10.75 by uh, Carlo Alais. As we check along the the sights and the sounds of uh, this uh, this great uh, tournament site over in Western Peloponnesia in uh, in Greece. 
Bro, you're one after you didn't have your baby. Huh? You, you're like one after me and you didn't have your baby yet. Responsible, aren't you? No, but they told me I would get it. Apparently A little bit of uh, argy bargy on the uh, the dock side uh, with uh, with High uh, Palomino just trying to get her uh, into uh, to Mental Rhythm. As we see Aaron Davies go through on a 13 and 12. This is now 11.25 meters. Here he is. Good stout pull out. Obviously knows his way around this event. Oh, oh, no, oh what happened there? He just lost his head Just lost his well. grip. Well, he's got two more rounds to play with, but certainly the first round is, not sure what is a bust for at. him. I don't know if the handle broke or he lost his handle with the glass. I'm not sure. All right, let's have a look. Let's take a more forensic level look here. It was a... Nothing wrong with the pass. Turned good. Maybe a little bit in the back, but I mean, oh, well, I think it's. He needs the to, I don't know. It's e it's either the uh, the handle broke or he's. I don't think he lost his grip. I think that I don't know. Well, let's, we'll, see what let's have gonna a. Tell us, but if we can go maybe slower so we can watch the handle. Huh? Oh, that's something. It broke. I think it broke yeah, one it side looked, of the yeah, rope. Yeah, you see, it's right there. The handle yeah. broke. It's one right. side of the triangle of the handle broke. Yeah, I saw that. It's quite scary and actually good for him that he had it outside the turn because if it would have happened in the cross, he would have hurt it. Yeah, it was just an explosive uh, uh, destruction there. Wow. Look at that. Look, one side is just gone. Oh. It's not lucky, Aaron, with the handle ropes. Oh, player. look at that. Kudos there to Vincent Stadelbauf with, with the instant replay and the slow motion uh, detailing at a forensic level what happened uh, with, with, Aaron, with, with, with... I don't know. Yeah. You know he's so going to have to buy a new handle for... Yeah, exactly, and he's going to have to use it and get it to uh, get it situated very, very quickly. It's very fortunate for Aaron. Uh, Thing. As I was saying before, also for Ali Garcia, it don't really happen often. Unfortunately, they do happen once in a while. Yeah. Hopefully, he's going to be able to reset and be confident again for next round. Absolutely. And as it is, the skier's personal equipment. Uh, uh, if it if it happens to break, then then that's yeah. on you. It's not definitely a boost of confidence for you. You know, you always want to make sure your equipment is good and be ready to go but next on the dock Jaime Palomino I think I'm pretty sure his parents are watching from home I don't know if his mom is in Spain and his dad in the US I'm not sure okay so Jaime Palomino uh, he's uh, skied oh, skied enough times this season uh, almost complete a, a complete uh, page here on the uh, on the stats and uh, the the online information that I have at my disposal at the Vienna Cup, he scored uh, uh, three at ten seven five, and he's had a smattering of scores also into that line leg. So let's uh, let's check in with Ali. All right, Tim. They want us to talk now. All right, so we had a bit of a stressful week this week. The ski didn't make it until late last night. Um, so this will be your first setback on your ski. First get set back on my ski, it's going to be, I'm excited about that. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different since I trained on another ski. But hey, it's beautiful out there. I look like no wind now, so I'm happy about that. It's got to be a relief to, to find your bag, you know, the day before. Yeah, and I want to give a big shout out to Tse Nicholson for helping me out with the fin settings because I'm not a big a fin guy, so thank you. <laughs> and he's, he's helped me out a couple times with that as well. Well, um, best of luck out there. You got a couple rounds to figure it out. You know, kind of feel back at home on your own stuff. Yeah, hopefully I'm, I'm happy with three rounds. I mean, I got plenty of time now to figure stuff out and yeah, get used to this one again. Yeah, perfect. All right, best of luck. Back to you guys. All right. So. Jaime, 30 meter line. Strong skier, strong turns. It's not afraid of the speed. It's not afraid of turning too much. Trained by T 
guess, I guess. Yeah, to a certain extent. And not looking bad at all. So Jaime Palomino uh, getting through the opening pass of 13 meters. His, uh, his best score this season has been, uh, been, been around five at 10.75 meters over at the Swiss Pro Slalom. I think he did run it once or twice. Yeah, he got uh, he got zero at 10.25 meters right, in the Swiss Pro in, in the first round. But uh, right. with that in mind, let's check in on Dockside. All right, Aaron, so I know myself and I'm sure everyone watching was going, what happened there at one? A little bit of a misfortune. Yeah, I mean, I was at first. I didn't know whether it was like my equipment or like the supplied equipment, but I was like, something weird happened there. I was going mean, to my best start. And then uh, just saw him in the water. Found out it was my handle. Yeah, the, the rope came back, and it looks like uh, we lost half the bar. So, yeah, um, so me and handles were not good luck this year. No, so <laughs> On last year. <laughs> we'll have to find you another one for the next round, yeah, but uh, get it all sorted. All right, thanks, Ali. Yeah, just waste of a round, that's all, but ah. we'll try again next time. Just unlucky. Back to you guys. Anyone, know, anyone around here knows someone who can restring a handle? All right then, so that was uh, Aaron Davies there. We look forward to seeing him in round two. Here we go, this is Jaime Palomino, who has who, uh, who has run 10.75 meters earlier on in the season, did that in round number one at uh, the Swiss Pro. Really strong offside. He tends to use too much his shoulder sometimes, and sometimes he penalizes it for it, but uh, I think a lot of times he just Helps him turning a lot and get a good grip going into two balls. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so this is man's first round. Yep, indeed. We're about not even halfway through. No, no, we're on in. we're on skier number five right now of 19. So we've still got about another 14 skiers uh, remaining before we round off uh, round number one. And there is uh, a, a portion of our remaining skiers. Uh, skiers uh, remaining 14. There is uh, Manuel Domini, who seems to be, who's quite photogenic, I would have to say. Wouldn't you agree with that, Alice? Looks good on camera. Yeah, there you go. There is uh, Stephen Island, uh, along with uh, uh, Elizabeth Island. They navigate them way around that. Uh, I think that they're really having fun in Europe. They're enjoying France, yeah. Greece, Spain. <laughs> yep, yep. Enjoying the benefits of traveling all the way around this uh, beautiful continent. All right, Jaime, coming back 11.25 meters. He needs to run this pass in order to get a chance to overscore the leading score. Somewhat of a good one, a little bit late out of oh, the Oh, and one and a half is going to uh, go his way. Unfortunately, did not get a good score. I didn't think one wasn't so bad, at least for him. He, he can still get through the pass with uh, not a good start, but unfortunately overturned two. And um, just killed the speed out of it and fell in. And ended up with exactly the same score that he produced in the U21 world. Yeah. You know, it's really hard because he's a young skier, so he definitely knows how to run his passes, but it's still har hard uh, rope lengths to ski with. So you need a little bit more experience to make it through by remaining patient and everything. Yeah. He's going to learn from it, definitely, uh, but it's not going to be any good score. And he's uh, replicated this score, one and a half, 11.25 numbers uh, on 11.25 meters on uh, many, many occasions uh, within uh, the last uh, the last few uh, weeks and months. Yeah, he pulled, as we can see in the replay, he pulled very long into two. And uh, when he pulled so long, the only way to make it around is crank the buoy. Yeah. So really turning quite hard. And unfortunately, his shoulder was a little bit down and remained there. All right, so that is Jaime Palomino. It is a one and a half at 11.25 meters, which will leave the way clear for our next competitor to uh, to make his uh, his mark on the water. It is going to be Tim Tornquist. You know, as we were talking before, going back to your ski always feels 
home. So um, yeah, three rounds to settle in. Uh, I think it's gonna feel obviously better on his keys. It's his own. Um, let's see what he's gonna be able to do this set. We can see all the cameras pointing at him, getting yeah. out of the water. This is the path for for this setup. You get pulled over on the other side of one end, you get dropped, and then you go in for the first pass. Um, and watching him skiing down the lake, we're going back to Ellie on the dock. All right, so Nikki, first time here at Kayafest, what do you think? Yeah, super excited. Um, yeah. I'll see what I can do. I, I hope I get a big score, but uh, let's see. Yeah, so a uh, pretty, pretty different vibe here on the dock. What do you think of it? Oh, it's amazing. Uh, the lo loud music and yeah, I love it. It's the best uh, event of the year. So just wait till tomorrow. Yeah, I'm super excited. The party's just getting started here. Best of luck out there. Back to you guys. Zupa Alfregant, I believe, is the, uh, the translation there. Of what? Super excited. Oh, super excited, yeah. <laughs> Did you study German? It cannot speak German, but, well. Well, we know, we, we, we know of at least one other person that did it the other way around, who actually learned German first and then tries to learn Italian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see him a little bit later on in the season, starting next week. All right, then, here we go. This here is Tim Tongquist of Sweden. 30-minute line, starting first pass. They don't off buoy number one. Easy and early. Just trying to fill back his key, how the turn feels, how the yeah. connection with the ski feels. Uh, yeah. Well, he's gotten reconnected to the ski, at least on a physical level. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I mean, we actually. I mean, who who was uh, who was actually interviewing him? I think it was Freddie Winter, and he said that uh, that the, that he managed to get find a person who would be prepared to travel three hours from here to Mathens, then spend two hours at the airport, and then come back Some three kilos, hours. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's uh, go back to Ellie on the dock and see who she has. Dock side with the nervous parent. We just talked to Nikki sitting on the dock. How you feeling? You know, do you get more nervous watching him? I'm always more nervous than he is, and. I give him all my energy and the hope that he can take it and, and that, that, that's an extra boy. What's your uh, routine while he's skiing? I know my mom's kind of a pacer. She'll sit with her head between her knees. Do you watch? I watch, of course. Caro, my wife, is the opposite. He goes in the forest and hides herself. But I'm always with him and I try to find out what I can help for the next round and, yeah, to support him. Yeah, for sure. It's always nice to see parents dockside and having the support and, I mean, I know I'm missing my parents back home. I'm sure they're watching. So, hey, guys, we'll get send it back to Tony. I don't know if he gets more nervous than Nikki. I've been with Nikki on the dock a few times. He asks a lot of questions. I think he gets pretty nervous. But uh, back to Tim. Uh, second pass, 12-meter line, I believe. Yes. Definitely a little bit more confident than the first pass, a little bit more aggressive. All right. So, Tim Tongquist and, uh, yep. Yeah. Looked fairly easy so far. I mean, it, I mean, he seems to be very light on that ski and relies I think his upon first it. First pass was a little more patient. Now it was. Now it now is a now is a little bit you know a Back little to bit Tim. yeah exactly a little bit more uh, uh, energetic. And there is uh, Nicky Antonsen, the uh, the arms of Austria himself. The uh, managed to get onto the podium, uh, scored a second place finish, I believe, in the U21 World Championships, which were brought to you exclusively live on TWBC about three weeks ago. I like this view, all the skiers hanging out in front of the dock in the shade area. All the Italians, that's and there's, and there's Nate, Bea, and Brando. Bea, and uh, yeah, they're all there just trying to uh, stay chill. Manuel Dominic in the driver's seat, getting more comfortable every pass with the boat. 
He's going to have a good summer, Manuel, as well. I think he's coming to drive the San Gervasio Pro-Am and the uh -huh. Europeans as well, and maybe some other tournaments. All right, so not the last time we're going to see him this season uh, behind the helm of a towboat. And uh, win a ski of your choice by going to waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play to find out more details and to enter to win a ski of your choice, whether it's a D3 or a Conley. Check it out, waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play. All right, team, back at 11.25 meter. A Ooh. little bit of a delay, one, good two, coming back at three ball, it should be back at it, a little bit of a stall after some buoys, Whoa. but all manageable considering. Yeah, he did all right, He's, he certainly uh, worked his way through that run and he had to be a little bit more methodical on that one, he uh, less reliant upon his natural technique and uh, is now uh, more uh, reliant upon what he the muscle he puts on behind the boat and there you see uh, the Nikki best gloves out there <laughs> the best gloves out there I mean uh, uh, we've got Alicia Bagnoli here the uh, the brains behind uh, the pro gear gloves skiprogear.com skiprogear.com to find out more let's see his pass back again reaching out to one a little bit in the back they all tend, you know, as the water heel feels a little bit faster, they all get to the buoy quite fast and they're all reaching a little bit too soon and lost a little bit of connection and tend to have a little bit of a slow turn. That's what seems is happening a lot with the skiers. So if he wants to run the next pass, he needs to trust the confidence, to trust the speed, uh, make sure his line is tied before the buoy in order to get a good turn afterwards and we'll see. All right, here we go. This is Tim Tonquist. Leading score, three at 1075, going to one. Good one. Good hookup. Nice hookup off number two. He's a lefty. And I tell you what, look at this. Round number four. Look at this. Now, oh, no. Oh, what? come on. It was, I thought, I was going to say he was going to run it. I didn't say it because. Obviously. But it was actually, it was looking great. It was really easy and he was really in it i think he didn't want to fall into five so he's safety too much um okay so it's a little bit of good news bad news good news he's taken the lead yeah. bad news he didn't run it yeah you know as a lefty you have a little bit this problem one through five it is your good side but you're also you know you can fall quite easily so i think he wanted to make sure he was going to run it and it just did not turn in enough and didn't get around six all right, so whether he has trust issues with his slalom ski, having not been on it for a couple of days or what have you. I think it's still a great score, 5 at 1075 meters, a first round back yeah. on his ski. Yep, certainly he's in the lead with that. He's definitely, have the, he's definitely capable of running it for next round, so. No doubt, no doubt. We're looking at this severe instant replay. Uh, looking good. Yeah, it looked, it looked good now that I'm re-watching the replay. It was getting a little bit later and narrower through the pass. Like here, he just lost a little bit. He had a good turn, but he lost a little bit his width. And um, being the line length so short, it just didn't have enough space before five volt to turn it good. All right then, so uh, checking in with uh with those that are messaging on our live chat. Good few of you, uh, uh, Chris Olivet, uh, thanks a lot for, uh, for tuning in out of uh, Geneva. Melissa Nicholson, who's she related to? I, I think so, yeah, I think so, yeah. Thanks a lot there, uh, Melissa, with your message and uh, Damien Cooper. Yes, uh, they are. They are skiing uh, uh, in some heavily in some heavy ve ve vegetation. But uh, this time last year, uh, much of where we are right now was almost covered uh, in, uh, in, in 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 bushes and, uh, and, and and other stuff. And uh, the actual local government here actually took it upon themselves to actually clear a lot of the uh, the jungle aspect of this event and turn it more into a forest than a jungle. So uh, we're, kudos to them, and uh, it's an absolutely beautiful uh, place here, right, uh, right outside uh, Zakaro. Uh, this is a Kayafis Pro 2023, and uh, 
And I don't know if we're going to check in with Ali. And yes, we are. Let's check in with Ali. Hey, Tim, so uh, five at 10 seven, you're our new leader. Back on your stuff, how did it feel? That felt amazing. I mean, my 11, my, my 38 was a little bit of a struggle. I was a little nervous coming into that pass, how the ski was going to react. But on 39, 10, 7, it felt amazing. I don't know what happened out there. I pulled a little bit too long to four ball, got stuck and nervous. Yeah, I mean, pretty good for the first set back on your stuff. I know if I ever ski on other skis, it's always weird coming back. Yeah, it is a little bit weird coming back, but yeah, it felt good. I mean, I knew what this ski was capable of, and luckily they are making pretty good skis, so they all, they're all good skis. I didn't train on a bad ski, so no, felt good. All right, well, congratulations on taking the lead. Back to you guys. All right, thanks a lot, Ali, and thanks a lot, Tim. Next, here is Nikki coming back. First pass at 30 meter line. Only started running 10.75 meters uh, a few weeks ago this season. Did that for the first time over at the King of Darkness. Yeah, I think he's been running them um, a couple of times in training in the past years, but that's the first year that he actually ran quite a few of them uh, in quite a few tournaments also. And there you go, season. good opening pass of 13 meters and uh, getting set for 12. I know his family was here last year and he wasn't, so this year he decided to join them and um, alongside with Jaime for this tournament. Not looking bad there. Nikki coming back from a second place at the U21 Worlds in Mexico. It's a party, right? Yeah, hearing Stevie saying it's a party, it definitely is. <laughs> he doesn't know the half of it <laughs> yet. Here I am, Tony Lightfoot. She's uh, uh, Alicia Bagnoli, and on dock side we've got Ali Nicholson. All right, guys, here with our rock star from last night, Stevie Island. We get to do some skiing today. Yeah, last night was a trip. Oh my goodness! Uh, but we're really stoked to be here. Me and Elizabeth have had an amazing time. The hospitality in Greece has been out of this world. I'm sure you can agree. Uh, it's, yeah, it's been fantastic. Yeah, for sure. I saw the shock on your face. Um, for those of you that don't know, Stevie got called up last night to play with the band. Got to show off his uh, guitar skills and singing skills. So uh, everyone loved it, though. Really great job. Oh, thank you, Ali. I appreciate that. Yeah, that was a good time. Uh, thank you to uh, George and everyone here at Kai Office. It's been amazing. Yeah, first time here. It's going to be really fun. Thank you. Back to you guys. Good luck. Yeah, we always see, uh, we always like to see the people coming here for the first time and uh, their reaction to the tournament. Yes, and certainly uh, if you've uh, kind of put off the urge to come to Kayafas uh, uh, to be a part of this uh, this tournament live on site, uh, make sure that uh, that you uh, pack up a bag and uh, make sure you, you're here next year because I tell you what, I mean, it is going to go off uh, within, the, within the next uh, day or so as we uh, get ready to ski towards the uh, the finals. This is uh, round one of the men's. You definitely need to come here in Greece also to watch live because from the webcast is one thing, but also from the live experience with all the music and uh, new things are gonna be tomorrow. It's a different experience. Oh yes, absolutely. We just yeah. saw Nikki coming back at 12 meter line. It was uh, looking really good. I think his confidence is coming back. You know, it's, it's really hard to come back from a world championship but it was so soon during the season. It's a pretty big tournament, and uh, the season is still long with a lot of tournaments, so he still needs to get his head into it again. And it was incredibly hot in Mexico as well. I mean, it, I mean, oh my I word. About here, Greece, though. Yeah, Very hot. Things, yeah it's, it's just a little less humid over here in Greece. Yeah. No, and, a, and a lot of it is due to the vegetation here as well, which... Mexico, which, no is you need her, so. Exactly. So... Let's have a look and see what we have from Nicholas Antonsen. He's gotten through 13 and 12. 11.25 meters uh, represents itself right now. We've been having Nikki a lot in the uh, Swiss Water Ski Resort in the US as well. Um, he's been training really good. Um, he's really understanding his technique and hopefully he can understand uh, how the side works here and get a good result. Coming into the gate, turning around one, good one ball. Nice hook up on one. See how really central is on the buoy? Look at his offside. Wow. There you go. He's there. Every buoy is there. Pretty much the same. 
There you go, that's 11.25 meters yeah. and gets it to go. Nicely done. Yeah. I was it's a really good technique because he leans a lot through the wakes, but then he brings all his weight on his front leg just before the buoy. Good direction uh, coming off the uh, the second wake into the whitewash. Mm -hmm. And uh, and a nice pull out as well. He seems to have gone the, uh, the, the setup uh, prior to the course uh, well dialed in. It's definitely a good pass to run before the 10.75 meter pass. Here Usually, you know, the better you run your passes, the more confidence you have going into the next pass, but no matter how you run them, you can still have good scores. Mm-hmm, indeed. So, uh, Nikki Antonsum, who at the, uh, the World uh, Championship scored, I believe, a five and a half at 10.75 meters. I think it did get a six. Six he, with no continuation, right? Yeah, he completely blew over his ski and everything after the XCK. So I think it was a six, no continuation. But he did run his first round, and I think, I can't remember, he scored in the first round, but he definitely got it into he scored the one. Meter. He scored one and a half one at 10.25 yes. meters in round number one. Right, Nikki coming back, 10.75 meter. The leading score is five, so he definitely needs to get more than that. He wants to run this pass. Let's see what he has. Here he is, Nicky Antonsen. Needs to start. Oh, gets it on buoy number one. He's still there on number two. A little bit of a delay off number two, but he's still there. Oh, yeah. and just rears up on number three. A little angry with himself there, but he's two and a half buoys at 10.75 meters, which is good enough right now for a for third place uh, behind uh, uh, Carlo, uh, uh, I believe yeah. Carlo Elias. Yeah. Uh, oh, but still in the lead, right but still in the lead is Tin Tong Quest on five. Yeah. It's definitely not going to be a, enough for making it to the finals. Um, I think one ball didn't look too bad. It just pulled very long into two. Uh, a little bit slid back in his tail and actually kept his weight all the way back. You see how it rocked back? Yeah. Yeah, just couldn't recover from that approach into number three. It's hard to recover from not a good start. So I think at this level, you know, the young ones they still need to have a really good start in order to run it. Uh, compared to the older pros where no matter how they start, they can still manage to get through the pass. Right, you are. So Very long, already in the back. Didn't really get a strong pull into three and just... Just arrived way too late and uh, uh, the ski actually made contact with the line as well to boot. All right then, so on uh, on deck right now is Stephen Island. Currently uh, the, uh, the starting list. We've just seen uh, Nicky Antonsen, then we've, we've got Stephen Island coming up next. Then we have Tom Paul, Sasha Deska, John Travers, Corey Vaughn, Matteo Lizzeri, Brenna Caruso, Thomas de Gasperi, Robert Hazelwood, Will Asher, Freddie Winter, and Nate Smith, the remaining skiers to come. There's your leaderboard, Tim Tornquist with five, Carla Lice on three, and Anton Sim with two and a half, all on 10.75 meters, representing the top three at the moment. Let's check in Dockside with Ali. All right, Tom, we were just talking about how gorgeous this place is. You said you spent yesterday on the beach, kind of feeling like you're on vacation here. Yeah, it's nice. Um, we got girlfriends with us. Um, they skied yesterday, so unfortunately we didn't go to the waterfalls. Um, but yeah, it's, it's strange, the beach being right there. The only places I know are like this are like Corey's and um, Lachenau, so. Yeah, just come down for a ski, head back you know, to, the uh, to the beach, have another ski later, so it's, it's nice. Yeah, yeah, I mean, gorgeous place here, gorgeous ski lake. I mean, I think conditions are pretty prime right now. Yeah, I mean, practice went really well. Um, I don't think anyone really had a disaster, so uh, there's going to be some big scores. Got to get after it, especially with three rounds as well. For sure, for sure. A lot of skiing yet to come. Best of luck. Back to you guys. All right, thank you very much. Drop down into the uh, the hole is uh, Stephen Island, who's had some pretty good scores in uh, recent times. 
mostly into 10.75 meters, uh, scored half at 10.25 over at the Swiss Pro. That represents one of his better scores of the season. We're looking to try and get a little bit deeper into 10.75 meters, enough to uh, put him in a chance to run it. This is a 13 meter start. Stephen Island coming to us originally out of Texas, but living in, uh, in West Palm Beach these days, along with his, uh, with his wife, uh, Elizabeth Montavon. And uh, with that, let's check in Dockside with Ali. All right, so not the score you were really looking for for uh, round one, but still a couple more rounds to come. Any adjustments you're planning to make next time? Um, yeah, no, round one was not very good. But yeah, I hope round two will be better. I don't really know. I don't. I felt like I had no power at all. So I hope I find my strength in the second round. But yeah, let's see. I, I hope. Still a little early for you? I don't know. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, I just hope second round will be better and we'll see. Get some lunch, feel a little stronger. Best of luck next time. Back to you guys. All right. Thank you very much, Ali. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Nikki. To take a scan around uh, the uh, the dockside to uh, check in on our uh, on our crowd here, and uh, certainly a good smattering of people here on a Saturday, but it's going to be a lot more crowded come Sunday. Trust me on that one. So waiting for our uh, Nautique Tobo to bring in uh, Stephen Island. He's gone through 13. This is now 12. Rolling in on 12 meters, uh, selecting Charlie 2. A less conventional setting from zero off as compared to a lot of our skiers. But he uh, looks like it makes he uh, makes light work of that pass as a result. So there we go. That is Stephen Island making his way into the drop zone. Past uh, the, uh, the little structure that we have uh, going into the canal, which allows us to put a uh, camera to uh, to go down the length of the course, the, uh, the boat path camera. There we see Tom Paul, originally uh, from, uh, from Birmingham in England. Claims to be a big fan of Aston Villa. So there's Tom Paul getting ready for Stephen Island to make his way back into the course for 11.25 meters. How did it turn back that far? All right, here we go. Coming in, this is Stephen Island. 11.25 meters, a pass he knows he's gonna get. And will coming in a little bit high in places, but he uh, manages to recover. Oh, a little bit of a bite there on number, number four. But I tell you what, he hung, hung tough on that one. Oh. Incredibly relieved that he's still upright after uh, after an atrocious uh, number five turn. So now he's dropped into the water and getting ready for 10.75 meters and definitely thanking his lucky stars that Fortune managed to pay a visit to him in the final uh, third of this pass. Got a decent start, not the best one, mind you. Again, a good, good, solid number two. Good reach. Moving around quite a bit on his uh, on his on on his offside turn, especially here on number five. Turn turns in, brings the handle low, and that ski was bouncing around 
well into his edge change for number six. And he barely got the ski round uh, to go through the exit gate. So there's the leaderboard. That target of Tin Tornquist looms large of five at 10.75. Carlo Lice with three and Nicky on two. Here we go. Into the course right here and now. This is Stephen Island. Round one. Solid on two. Three. He gets three to the wakes. And that will secure him with one of his better scores of the season so far. Halfway down uh, 10.75 meters. Just sets himself up with a decent total. And then it's something that he can work from. Will it be enough to send him through? Well, probably not at this stage. But, uh, but if he certainly uh, fancies his chances, he's at least got something to work from. All right. So that is Stephen Island with three. And now getting ready for our next competitor who comes to us from Great Britain and his name is Tom Paul. All right, good solid effort. So, as we get ready to take a Tom Paul into the course, we'll have a brief, brief look at the uh, the leaderboard as uh, as we work our way down. Tornquist, Elias, and Ireland in the top three right now, and then all the others have got to chase them. All right, in the water now, Tom Paul. He'll be going in on 30 meters with the boat speed of 58k or 36 miles an hour. Thomas Paul from Great Britain in the water. He starts with 13 meter rope. All right, with Tom Paul getting ready to go in on 30 minutes, let's check in dockside with Ali. All right, fresh, All right, off, the fresh water, off the water, Stevie, water, Stevie scored, scored three at 10.75. Um, how are you feeling? Um, you know, it was a little shaky out there. I think I need to regain some confidence and, and bring it on the second round because we do get three prelim rounds, which is awesome. So plenty more to go out there. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of nice. At least, you know, you have next round, then it's not like the pressure's on. I mean, sometimes when the first round doesn't go your way, the second round's kind of... All right, here we go. It's all or nothing, so at least you have two more rounds. Exactly, exactly. My same thing as you. All right, well, best of luck next time. Back to you guys. Thank you. All right, so getting ready for Tom Paul to make his uh, impact upon this event. Coming in on 30 meters. Just trying to stay uh, in good position over his ski. And nicely done all the way through from start to finish. And uh, with that, Let's check in Dockside with Ali. All right, we're going to surprise attack him here. 
First time to Caiaphas, how are you feeling? I'm okay. Um, I think the lake is really good. It's windy out, outside of the lake, but the water is perfect, so well, well protected. Uh, the only thing is the water is really warm, so we will see if the, the hands can handle it. Yeah, the three rounds are going to be a lot on the hands for sure. Yeah. All right, well, good luck out there. Back to you guys. <laughs> All right, obviously, uh, <laughs> Sasha uh, wasn't expecting that. But then again, uh, with, with the cameras and with the interviews on Dockside, uh, you should come to expect it, I guess. But, uh, but there you go. All right, then. So we've got uh, on the water at this time uh, Thomas Paul. Thomas Paul, let's have a look at some of the scores that he's uh, uh, conjured up for this season while I look for his uh, record. Okay, so at uh, the uh, Botaski, he scored two at 10.25 meters. Uh, back that up with one at the same, same score, same line length, I believe. So he has gone into 41 off a couple of times this season. Skier who uh, skied for the University of Louisiana at Monroe Warhawks at, uh, at one time. And certainly looks pretty good here and now. So if he can uh, come through with a, with a score through 10.75 minutes, it is certainly going to help his cause out a lot. There is Sasha Deska. So Sasha makes his way to the uh, to the edge, already out on the water and getting ready for uh, for pass number three behind that uh, world record ski nautique towboat. It is going to be Tom Paul. Manuel Domini. Manuel at the helm. And uh, the rope coming in on 11.25 meters behind or, uh, or about 37 feet. For those of you that work with, uh, with inches and feet rather than the metric system. That's where it is right now, 38 off. Of course, uh, that in. Whoa, look at that. He's still, he's round five. Oh my word, he almost fell out the back off number, number four into five. Recovered well enough to actually get outside number five, but not enough to, uh, to make uh, a positive impact on that run. So it looks like it's gonna be four and a half at 11.25 meters. Looked good up to that point, and then he just then he just overcranked uh, for some reason. Let's have a look and see what he's got. Entrance number one, a good hook up there. Number two, yeah, good hook up there, and this guiding the ski round. Number three didn't look all that bad either. And then just uh, just overcooked it on number four. It was open, and uh, and then he tried to bring the ski round, and then he brought it round too hard too soon, and the ski just hit the line, and uh, and he was down at that point. So it looks like it's going to be four and a half, four and a half at eleven point two five meters. We are about to take a skier number eleven of nineteen right now. So still a uh, fair amount of skiers uh, to come. And it is going to be Jonathan Travers coming up next. Actually, Sasha Desco, I beg your pardon.
All right, so brand new ski for this, year, this season for Sasha. On the Syndicate A1, a uh, Syndicate uh, uh, Works one. There is your current leaderboard. Tim Tornquist on five. Carla Leis on three. Stephen Island on also on three. So it's getting tight towards the top, but I feel that there is going to be uh, quite a bit of separation going on as we work our way down this list. Here we go, folks. This is Sasha Deska, who surprised and actually shocked the skiing world uh, prior to the season in uh, in transferring from uh, from a brand that he's uh, been skiing on uh, pretty much uh, all of his uh, uh, all of his existence, which was Conley, and decided to go with the Syndicate brand uh, for for this season and uh, taken a lot of people by surprise with that decision. But uh, so far, it seems to have been, uh, been working uh, quite well for him. And uh, with that uh, uh, in mind, let's go to Dockside with Ali. All right, John, welcome to KaiFest. How are you feeling? Yeah, good, really good. It's exciting, it's fun here, so it's going to be a good day. Got the, the music pumping down here. Uh, trying to stay out of the heat, I think, as long as you could. Yeah, it's pretty humid here, just pretty hot, but we have a lot of shade here, so it's pretty easy to get out of it. Yeah, yeah I mean, the water's definitely not going to cool you off, but uh, I think it'll ski pretty good. Yeah, Florida boy here, we're fine. We'll get it going. <laughs> Best of luck. Back to you guys. Yep, he certainly got that right. He uh, comes to us uh, from uh, from Groveland in uh, central Florida, where the, uh, where the heat and the humidity are a daily occurrence. So if he ain't used to it from that, then, then there's no hope for him. All right there, so here we go. This coming in. This is Sasha Deska. Working with A2. Now, this is a skier who uh, several seasons ago was skiing with a lot more aggression, with a lot more... Uh, with a lot more force uh, behind the boat and uh, doing, doing a lot more... Be at the end of the turns to get more angle, just really overworking the passes, and has now found himself a little bit of a formula and a little bit of a method in which uh, to uh, to gain the same results, but with a lot less effort. All right, let's check in dockside with Ali. So here with our current women's leader, um, sitting dockside, about to watch John. Um, how's it? How do you feel about here today? Yeah, I mean it's awesome. Really cool environment. We got people chilling on the dock, music pumping in the background. Weather's perfect, so it's gonna be a good time. Some comfy bean bags here to, to sit dockside and watch. Yeah. Back to you guys. Oh, why? Thank you. All right then. So we've got uh, we've got two members of the syndicate team. The third member we'll uh, we'll see skiing within about the next uh, half a dozen or so uh, competitors, and that'll be Will Ashton, of course. Okay, here we go, Sasha Deska. 12 meters. Looking good, looking strong. And uh, not bad through 12 meters. It seems to have a really, really good firm handle on that run. So at the Monaco uh, Slalom Cup, which took place uh, not too long ago, he scored a three at 10.25 meters. Has replicated that with uh, with with uh, 
Three likewise scores at the Fungless uh, Pro-Am not too long ago. So he's been skiing consistently well into uh, halfway into 41 off for 10.25 meters. And they're just having way too much fun on the dock side here. Jonathan Travers getting ready to, uh, to take to water as we get ready for Sasha Deskan to, uh, to make his way back into the course at 11.25 minutes. So here we go. This is Sasha Deskan. Riding the Syndicate Slam Ski working his way on 11.25 meters getting a good tight line there what he seems to do about as well not better than anybody else is line control and there you see not an inch of slack in that line during the entirety of that run 11.25 meters made to look like 14.25 meters for most other, other folks out there. Just knows when that line is tight, just knows when he can turn and place the ski underneath it and still be able to go charging across the other side of the wakes in the slalom course. So some good skiing are generally there by Sasha Deska. And now getting ready for 10.75 meters. A few of our uh, folks uh, towards the latter part of the list are uh, getting assembled around the dockside waiting for their go and this is 10.75 meters for Sasha Deska. Boat speed accelerating up to, up to uh, 58k, 10.75, oh, almost falling over the tip of the ski on buoy number one. He's still there on number three. He has the experience, he has the knowledge of this pass to stay upright and which he does and he gets around buoy number six. Oh, look at that. Wow, good, whew, tough skiing. I wouldn't say, wouldn't say particularly good skiing, at least on the part of Sachedesco, who normally runs that pass a lot easier than that. But we're gonna take a look at this. I, I do understand that there is a, a review. I don't know what portion of the run the review is uh, present on. But I think it's to do with whether he made it round buoy number six or not. A little slide there on number three, quite a significant slide as a matter of fact. He got round number four and he was still upright. Now let's take a look at this, his approach from number five. Oh, I don't think he made it round buoy number six somehow, but he tried to sell it, didn't he? So it's still under review and uh, we'll get the, uh, the score. Sounds about right. <laughs> okay, so it is a five buoy confirmed, five at, five at 10.75 meters, five at 10.75 meters, which Puts him in a two-way tie with Tim Tornquist for the lead, five at 10.75 meters. But I suspect that that score will uh, will be superseded. Here we take eight skiers through to the men's final, but 
each of our skiers in uh, in the elimination will get three opportunities to uh, to post up their best score. It's the best score out of three rounds, and all of our pro skiers, regardless of whether they're women or men, will have a chance to, to ski three times before being a part of the final round. Eight skiers advance from the women, and eight advance through from the men. Come on. All right, so having, uh, having done with uh, Sasha Deska as he works his way off the boat, we'll now bring on Jonathan Travers from Groveland in Florida. He starts with 13 meters. His personal best is one at 9.75. So, Jonathan Travers, age 35. Skied one and a half at 10.25 meters at the Lacanau Cup, uh, held just recently. He scored a two at 10.25 meters over at uh, Botas, twice the first and third rounds. And he has a smattering of other scores into 10.25 meters and with that in mind let's check in dog side all right Corey, so familiar face back here happy to be back oh man they're treating us so well uh this is yeah like a one-of-a-kind pro tour stop so delighted to be here water skis great and uh, i think we're gonna see scores picking up pretty quickly from here on out i'm really liking the cornrows you're rocking you know what? It was just a thing that was happening here, I guess, with girls so much, not with guys. But I wanted to jump in line. So, uh, you know, it feels good out there, and it feels a little cooler. It's very hot here. Yeah. I'm trying to let the head uh, air out a little bit. We had the same warm-up uh, yesterday as we did last year, some little, some water falling, some rock climbing. Oh, my gosh, it's the best. There was a point yesterday where I had no memory that there was a tournament today, and uh, that makes it so much easier. Not stressing all day the day before. Now it's just game time. <laughs> Back to you guys. Yes, indeed. Some cornrows combined with a Doc Holiday a goatee and moustache. Love it. All right, there. Here we go. Jonathan Travers on 13 meters. Let's have a look and see. 13 meters. Yes, he has a good grip on this run, most certainly, as he gets through the opening pass. He's had uh, other success into 10.25 meters. He uh, ran two at 10.25 meters twice at the King of Darkness. Ran it once, ran that same score again at the Swiss Pro and also at the, uh, the qualification series for the Masters over at Lake Ledbetter uh, a time as well. So, but... That is his best score of the season. He's replicated it a number of times. Let's check in with Dockside. All right, here with our very gracious host. Uh, tell us a little bit about your like idea for this event, your dream, what you hope to see it become. My dream and my vision for this tournament actually is to change how all the tournaments are, are, they have to be. Tournaments in water skiing are fun. Tournaments in water skiing are passion. We have to show the world what our sport can show to them. So that's what we're going to do. All right, then. Short and sweet there from, uh, from George Hatsis. And I certainly echo those sentiments uh, very, very much. So here we go. Jonathan Travers. This is 12 meters. Should make light work of this. His first time skiing in the Caiaphas Pro Battle. Certainly encouraged uh, to make the trip over to uh, Greece based upon what he saw last year on the, uh, the TWBC broadcast. And uh, 
Certainly skiing, uh, skiing pretty well so far. Practiced well uh, prior to this event. As we uh, look at our next skier to take to water on the uh, the KD Slan ski, it is Captain Cornrow himself, uh, uh, Corey Vaughan, out of Bumpus in Virginia. bit of high energy tempo music in the plane playing off in the background uh, should help the skiers along no end all right so we've got Jonathan Travers 11.25 meters Now is 11. Jonathan Travers in good shape. And he's not put a foot wrong so far. Uh, his technique has been so, so solid right from the get-go. He hasn't had to rush. He hasn't had to make up for, uh, for any, uh, any uh, unforced errors that he's uh, produced because, quite frankly, there hasn't been any. Just a solid, solid performance so far. Allowing himself to go down course when he needs to. And just piling on the pressure when he wants to. This is Jonathan Travers. Coming to us out of Sunset Lakes. The, uh, the ski school based outside of Groveland in Central Florida. Which has become a mecca of sorts uh, for, uh, for high performance uh, uh, tournament skiing. Matter of fact, for the second consecutive time in Askin. They will be hosting the uh, the World Water Ski Championships, the IWWF World Water Ski Championships, which will be taking place in the middle part of October. And we brought to you exclusively live on TWBC. To it there, uh, Corey Vaughn. Here we go. This is Jonathan Travers. Good setup. On the, oh, a little bit of a rock back on number two. Can he make this up? Yes, he can. He used the next two buoys. And look at this, folks. The first time that we've seen 1075 run in this competition so far among our male competitors. So joining Jamie Bull as one of the uh, two competitors that have run 10.75 meters in their respective events thus far in round one. Didn't get the, uh, the best of uh, starts off, uh, off number two. But just looked very, very strong. Handle coming in on the inside, but he's used to that. He used to be able to... Uh, to rectify that situation. But look at him go. That is Jonathan Travers. That is immaculate best. Pointed up to the sky after his uh, completion of 10.75 meters. And now getting ready for 10.25 meters. Now, Jonathan Travers is in a pretty good position as it stands right now, so far as the running order goes, because he's skier number 11 of, of 19. There are eight more skiers to go after him. He can set the bar here for the, for the remaining skiers to chase and see where he ends up. Let's have a look and see. Let's not forget that, uh, that the, uh, the, the, uh, 
the running order will be reseeded for the for the next uh, round and uh, the one after that. But there you go, that is Jonathan Travers. Good, solid effort there with a three buoy count at 10.25 meters. There is a review on that score, but we'll check it out to make sure. Let's have a look and see how he made out on 10.25 meters. Good, solid run here. Round number one, got around that buoy at least. A little bit of a, a down course slide. Does he get round number three? I think he does actually. But the judges have got to, uh, to have a concurrence here in order for that, uh, for that assertion to be made real. So we're just all right then. So the uh, the fact that he got round number three isn't the thing that's in dispute. The thing that is in dispute, however, is did he make it in time for the next set of boat guides? The S turn. No, he didn't. Okay, it looks like it's going to be two and one half. So. Two and one half there uh, from my reckoning. I'm sure the judges are... Uh, two and a half is approved from our officials. Two and one half. And that is the bar now because any score that is above that would immediately put that skier in the top eight. Now, let's not forget a couple of things. One, the skiers each have three rounds to set up their best score. And secondly, the running order will be receded after each round. But with that in mind, let's take a look at our next competitor. It is going to be the skier out of Bumpus in Virginia. This is Corey Vaughn. Corey Vaughn, who this season has a scored halfway into 10.25 minutes. Let's go dark side. All right, JT, our new lead. You went out, put the score up. Now uh, the rest are here to chase. So Corey's going to be our cut line, so you'll know here in a second, you know, at least for the first round. Yeah, it felt good. I was just a little nervous. Um, but other than that, the best score I've done on this tour, so I'm, I can't be mad. I can't. I'm just excited to be out here skiing well. Onside S turns are hard, huh? Onside S turns and two ball at 39 <laughs> kind of scared me. So I just, after that two ball at 39, I came in at two ball at 41 and just kind of got static and froze and just everything just kind of gets slow and delayed. But, you know, to get the nerves out round one and you put a good score up, I'm happy. Perfect. Awesome. Congratulations. Back to you guys. Oh, why, thank you. There's Jonathan Travers and Ali Nicholson. We check in with our. Uh, with our chief judge, that is uh, Demos uh, Alexopoulos out of Greece. And uh, at the helm of the towboat is uh, Manuel Domini, who will be bringing in to Corey Vaughan on pass number one. Looking good. on oh nicely done I see on 13 meters and uh, it's uh, it's time to go back dockside with Ali once again all right, all right Mateo, Mateo. So, so starting to see the scores go up how are you feeling well good I was a little concerned I didn't see a 39 going down and then JT threw a two and a half so that means conditions are good time to go and rip there we go. Yeah, I think it's uh, starting to get into the prime time. I, there's a little bit of wind picking up, but I think it's just, it's just a little texture. It's going to be nice out there for you. Yeah, it's three rounds this tournament, right? So there's time to feel things out while still pushing. Uh, let's try to do that for round one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, try to get it out of the way so we don't have to keep pushing yeah. every round. All right, back to you guys. All right there. So uh, Corey Vaughn on the water right now, age 38 out of Bumpus, Virginia. I'm Tony Lightfoot, and there is your schedule. Women's round one, women uh, men's round one, and then we'll repeat the cycle for, uh, for round two. 
Great to have you on board. Great to have uh, this uh, this Volkswagen uh, ID uh, Buzz van uh, uh, directly behind me. Uh, great, great looking vehicle. Certainly has the style and certainly has the utility. It's uh, completely uh, uh, battery powered and requiring no fuel whatsoever. Uh, the uh, it takes about about eight hours, a little under eight hours to fully charge with the power power unit at, at your home and can charge in under an hour out, out on the road using the high voltage charges. So check it out by going to uh, Volkswagen Gravitas, the, uh, the current dealership in Athens for Volkswagen. All right then, so that is Corey Vaughan. Going through that run, looking in good, good shape. There we see uh, Matteo Luzzeri, who's uh, going to be a uh, going to be pretty busy uh, within about the next few days or so. He is going to be uh, part of the organization of the San Gervasio Pro Am, which uh, will be brought to you uh, exclusively live next week on TWBC, and then two weeks after that, the uh, the Europe and Africa Water Ski Championships, also in San Gervasio, and also on TWBC. So, working our way down. There you see the uh, the opening from the main Caiaphas Lake into the uh, the main run here, where the where our tournament slalom course is situated. That little structure on your right hand side of the screen is where the uh, the the boat path uh, camera is lined up with the course. Let's have a look and see. Corey Vaughn. Round one and number two, this is 11.25 meters. Making light work of this, one of our lightest skiers on the Pro Tour is able to, to get from uh, one side of the course to the next with very little effort uh, uh, inputted in. And Corey Vaughn, born in 1985, which makes him age 38 as a slalom into 10.25 meters at events uh, such as the, uh, the Swiss uh, Spring Classic, the Monaco Slalom Cup, and the Lacanau Cup just this past weekend where he uh, ran into 10.25 in uh, two out of the three rounds of competitive action that they had on, on deck there. So, waiting patiently for his turn but out there waiting patiently for his uh, go to come back into the course at 10.75 meters is Corey Vaughn apparently there's a gate review on uh, the uh, the previous pass for uh, for Corey Vaughn vote to uh, waiting for uh, for its notification from the uh, from the officials. We'll see if the line tightens up or whether the uh, the skier relinquishes uh, the the handle to the tow boat. Okay, so the gate is approved on pass number two. That was... Okay, so 10.75 meters now with a tailwind. 
Let's see if he has got the minerals to make this happen. Entrance gates, buoy number one, the only one of our athletes in this competition riding a KD slalom ski. Look at him go. Look at him go at 10.75 meters and he absolutely crushes it. Seems to have found a good rhythm on that ski. No two ways about it. Good solid ski in there from, uh, from Corey Vaughan. Starting off with a quick gate shot into buoy number one. A little bit of an aerial edge change into buoy number two, but still managing to hold that ski close enough to the water. Mm, that approach into number four looking, uh, looking splendid. And strong as you like off five into number six. And there we go, Corey Vaughan. Now, eyeing up. Jonathan Travers's uh, best score of two and one half. Looking a little bit further along dockside, we see Thomas de Gasperi. Two-time world slalom champion, nine-time European slalom champion. So here we go, folks. Right here, right now. Corey Vaughan, 10.25 meters, needs a good start here. Gets, oh, almost gets it round buoy number one, but went for the handle too soon before his body got lined up. But he gets half a buoy and looks like there is a review on that score. Well, one would suspect that half a buoy at 10.75 meters uh, half a buoy at 10.25 meters is going to be the score for him. And just got broken over there off, uh, off buoy number one and unable to continue on with the run. Let's see if the notification from the officials It is half confirmed, so he does get the gates on uh, that run. So half a buoy at 10.25 meters, half at 10.25 meters, which I believe slots him in second place right now. We'll uh, take a quick look at the leaderboard okay. before we uh, bring uh, Matteo Lazzeri. There he is in second place. Corivon with half at 10.25 meters. Jonathan Traven is in the lead with two and one, one half at 10.25 meters. And Tim Tornquist and Sasha Deskern currently in a two-way tie for third on five at 10.75 meters. Only two people have run 10.75 meters. That is Corivon and JT. B1 is selected by Matteo Lazzari. Bravo one. So whilst we bring Matteo Lazzari to the drop zone, let's uh, let's check in on Dockside. Okay, so down, down. Um, um, feeling pretty feeling good about your set? Yeah, I mean the wind picked up a little bit, but uh, you know I just need to work a couple of keys that I have in mind and uh, go out there and be aggressive and do what I do and see what's coming out of it. So. Yeah, I mean you got a couple rounds, not too much pressure here. I think conditions are going to be good. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the field, it, it, it's its the best in the world, so everybody's here and everybody's skiing amazing, so I'll try to stay on top with the boys. All right, good luck. Back to you guys. All right then, so getting ready for pass number one and uh, a skier with almost uh, unbelievable consistency so far this season has gone into 10.25 meters in every round of skiing that he has uh, uh, produced. The three rounds at San Gervasio, the three rounds at the Monaco Slalom Cup have all yielded scores 
into 10.25 meters. And the skier in question is Matteo Luzzeri. And he'll be coming into the course for its opening pass of 13 meters. Here he is, opening run. Just trying to stay patient and not overexert himself too soon into his set, and that is a six buoy count on 13. All right, checking in dock side with Ali. All right, here with Corey Vaughn, we were just recapping a little bit of that set. Just uh, tell us a little bit about that 41. Yeah, well, uh, I was pretty happy to have the Tailwind 39 knocked down. I was excited about the Headwind 41. I hit my cues, which is wait a little later on the gate, go out strong, but I still got slowed down too much, and the boat overtook me. I had to slam it down. No timing at the backside of one. So uh, we'll see. I'm going to check around and find out who the wind god is in this country, see if I can make some offerings, and then come back in the second round. Yeah, I mean, the wind's definitely picking up. We're going to see that Tailwind start to play a little bit more at 10-7, I think. Well, I hope so. I hope it doesn't go away for these guys. Back to you guys. All right, then, and I think to answer is a question. I think the wind god, I think, may actually be Mercury, or was that the messenger god? Well, he actually had, like, wind, winged hills or something like that. Maybe there is a weather god out there, at least so far as Greek mythology is concerned. Anyways, good skiing there from, uh, from Cory Vaughn to get, to get as far as he did. Win a ski of your choice. Waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play to find out more and to enter. As we see Matteo Luzzeri. This is 12. Whoa, not getting in, in particularly good. Oh no, and he goes down on 12 meters. Oh my word. Wow. Unfortunately for his case, there are two more rounds. The, uh, the unfortunate part is, is that he's gonna have to work a, a little bit harder with those two rounds than he did. A... All right then, so uh, understandably there's a reason for this. He actually started on 12 meters and ran that. So sorry for the uh, incorrect call on the, uh, the opening pass of the line. But obviously he wanted to try his luck and see uh, see if this was a viable win strategy going in on 12 meters and uh, trying 11.25 meters with the tail and uh, and apparently the uh, the ski tip is up out the water which would suggest that there is a protester going on for Matteo Lizzeri now the judge uh, in the tow boat is going to be uh, communicating this to our tower officials and uh, we'll uh, check to see whether this is a viable uh, protest uh, courtesy of Matteo Lizzeri. Now, I'm not seeing much of anything that could trigger it, at least so far as the, the first two foes of the course are concerned. And getting round uh, that buoy. All right, just waiting on the result of the uh, the protest. Okay, so apparently the uh, the protest was concerning the mapping on zero off. Now, it's a little strange to me that he, he's able to ski with such precision and such feeling to be able to figure, to be able to uh, to feel 
that in the slalom course. And whilst uh, whilst we wait, we're going to bring uh, Matteo Lazzari into the dock while the uh, while the judges uh, figure this one out. All right, so okay, so it looks like we're going to get a word or two from uh, from Matteo Lutzeri, and uh, with that, let's uh, let's check in with Ali. Matteo, so you you went out at twelve, fell there at eleven. Tell us a little bit about what's going on. I honestly think the boat lost the mapping, the GPS mapping, uh, or the, the zero off needs to, in order to act properly. The boat felt completely different between the two passes, so I asked to, for it to be checked as a rewrite because it felt completely different. Yeah, I saw after you fell, I saw you holding the ski up, and I was like, something's going on. I wasn't really sure exactly what it was. So, uh, but they're going to check, so stay ready, I guess. I'm here. I'm here. We'll see. All right, back to you guys. All right there. So, uh, wow, uh, that we don't see that very often or hear of that very often. So the uh, the boat is being uh, being checked uh, for uh, for zero off mapping, and if it turns out that it lost its mapping, then uh, then Matteo Lazzari could actually get a, a re-ride on 11.25 meters. Now, to actually to answer uh, Corey Vaughan's uh, question whether there is a wind god in play there uh, in Greek mythology, actually uh, a little bit of research uh, reveals that there are four of them, one for, one for each cardinal direction, north, east, south, and west. So there you go, that answers that question. Boreas, Zephyrus, Notus, and Eurus. So there you go. All right, so let's have a let's have a quick look at the leaderboard and see where we stand with that right now. As we see uh, Matteo Lazzari uh, wait on the officials uh, to check the uh, the mapping. Jonathan Travis in the lead on two and a half at 10 to five meters. Corey Vaughn with half and that same line length. Tim Tornquist with five on 10.75 meters, along with one other skier with the same scorer, who I believe is uh, Carlo Elias. Actually, no, it's Sasha Desco, I believe. All right then, so as uh, we check out the boat, let's uh, check in on what's going on dockside. All right, so here in Greece, in your home country, tell us a little bit about why you're not skiing. Okay, so I had a back injury last year. Now I'm fine, I started skiing a month ago, but I'm not very competitive yet to, to compete. But uh, I came here with my new book, Mastering the Art of Water Skiing. It's the first book worldwide complete book about the water ski technique and uh, anyone can see it here, read it and anybody who wants to have a new PB, the book is here, the information is out. So you can buy it here, where else can you buy it? You can buy it here, you can buy it online from all over the world at philiposkipros.com, we have a website and uh, that's it basically. And also our resort, uh, Drapani Water Ski Resort. All right, awesome. Well, uh, we hope to have you back on the water here soon. Hope the back, you know, stays up and um, happy to have you here hanging out at least. And hopefully next year I can uh, get back to the Pro Tour and Yeah, for sure. Back to you, Tony. All right then. So, uh, Nicholas Kipria, uh, Philippos. All right, so 
Uh, we'll be back right after these in just a moment here on the 2023 uh, Kayak Fest Pro Battle. For skiers and water enthusiasts, Florida lakes are what dreams are made of. Combined with world-class golf, remarkable weather, natural beauty, theme parks, and so much more, it's easy to see that Florida is paradise. For more than 30 years, I've enjoyed Florida's lakes and many offerings. If you are interested in Florida real estate, let me be your guide and trusted advisor as you search for your paradise. Together, we can make your dreams a reality. on, just waiting on the result of the uh, protest to check to see if the, uh, the boat mapping uh, was uh, was correct at the, t at the time that Matteo skied, 11.25 minutes, uh, a lot of arguing going on on dockside, hopefully it'll be a result for the best very, very soon. I'm Tony Lightfoot, and there is your leaderboard here at the Kayafas. Pro Battle 2023. Jonathan Travers in the lead with about with about seven skiers remaining on this list. We are on skier number 13 of 19. So, so four and a half on 11.25 meters is the final score for Matteo Letteri. So next competitor up, coming to us out of Italy, it is going to be Brando Caruso. All right then, so. Mafrid appears to be fine, and uh, we've got Brando Caruso getting ready to uh, to rock it here. Brando Caruso, who skied a number of times uh, this uh, this season, in all but two occasions so far this season, he has uh, run at least into 10.25 meters. He skied in the Lacanau Cup, the Monaco Slalom Cup, the Botas Pro-Am, and before all of that, the Fungus uh, Pro-Am. He's had, a, uh, he's had a, a good degree of success in each one of those competitions. All right, let's check in Dockside with Ali. All right, so uh, we had a little bit of an Italian takeover here for a second. I mean, we had three Italians on the dock in a row. Uh, kind of made it feel like home. 
Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. Uh, I was just trying to focus on what's going on because I guess there were some issues, Mattel said, about, I don't know, the boat or timings or reaction of the boat, but it seems everything's fine, so we're moving along. Yeah, the wind picked up, so think about what I'm going to do. Yeah, broke the rhythm just a little bit, let the wind pick up. We'll let you focus. Back to you, Tony. Why, thank you, Ali. Good to have the pleasure of your company and also good to have these uh, these fine sponsors uh, involved uh, with this uh, this tournament, the 2023 Caiaphas Pro Battle. And uh, yeah, the uh, the tournament last year was a, was a great success. And this time around, from what I've heard from George Hatsis, it's going to be even better. Here we go, Brando Caruso on 30 meters. So good solid run there of 30 meters to get things up and uh, up and running. 12 meters comes up next. He sets himself up down into the zone as, uh, as the last of our uh, trio of Italians at the stage of the competition gets ready. That is Thomas de Gaspri, and here is Ali. All right, here with Rob Hazelwood. You're having quite the uh, European tour, some big scores going down. Hopefully we see more from you today. Yeah, that's the plan. It's been big scores, a little bit up and down. Had a few, had a little mis mistakes in there, here and there, but um, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, and this trip has just been fantastic without even putting my ski on, so I'm excited. Yeah, I mean, it's been a pretty fun uh, week so far. Some great, um, great hosts here, and I think the skiing's gonna reflect, you know, just the, we're gonna see that on the water, I hope. That's the hope, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a beautiful place, beautiful lake. So it was a little weird just putting my gloves on. Doesn't taste the best, but <laughs> the ski is absolutely fantastic. Wind's getting up a touch, but um, it's going to hopefully make a nice 41 head. But yeah, get through that 39 tail. That's all I can ask for. Yeah, one thing at a time. Back to you, Tony. Thank you very much, Ali. And Rob, here it comes. Coming in on 12 meters, this is Brando Caruso. Skiing on the good slant ski. The skier who we don't get to see very much on the, the Pro Tour, at least the state side anyway. Brando Caruso doing a fine, fine job there. So, so Brandon Caruso, second in the Botas uh, tournament. And as, uh, and as I said, has all but uh, has skied into 10.25 meters in every occasion, all but two times. Age 27, Brandon Caruso. And there we see Thomas de Gaspri, who is uh, considerably older but uh, no less uh, uh, no less able to uh, to get through the slana course on deep short line the current two t the uh, two time world slana champion and the current european champion a title that he's held on nine separate occasions So looking, uh, looking round our site. Looking in uh, very good uh, metal. Here we go. This is Brando Caruso. 11.25 meters now. The gate pullout looked, looked impressive. He gets round number one. In good, good shape off number two on 11.25 meters. Nicely done, stamps his authority on that run. No two ways about it. That is a fantastic performance there from Brando Caruso. As we look at the instant replay one more time.
not much to pick apart here on uh, on this pass at 11.25 meters. Pass looking strong. And uh, the pass that yielded six buoys there on 11.25. That is Brando Caruso. Nice aerial shot of the site here at uh, Caiaphas. Just wonderful scenery here. As we see uh, Thomas de Gasperi get ready underneath the shade and the camouflage netting. So, two scores, two skiers have uh, scored into 10.25 meters. Can Brando Caruso be join them? There we go, 10.25 meters. We'll be coming up next for Brando Caruso. Safety's on six and gets through the exit gate. So, uh, once again, he's perfect through 10.75 meters so far this season, having put in scores into 10.25 meters in every occasion that he's skied on this season. Scored three and a half at 10.25 meters. That gives you an indication of where he is in terms of head-to-head uh, -head slalom. In the Lacanau Cup, he scored four on this line length, twice. So he's a skier that is on form right now and looking to, uh, to pile on the pressure. So, Brando Caruso, who has tied the Italian record twice this season. Here he comes, Brando Caruso, there is one, there is two. Getting broken over, ow, oh, and inside buoy number three. But two buoys at 10.25 meters is certainly a, a good score to work from as he uh, now uh, gets ready to be prepared for the second and third round of competition. The second round a little bit later on today and the third round tomorrow morning before the skiers go into the championship round. 10.25 meters, breaking the ski into the turn, breaking the ski into the turn a little bit too much. He lost his momentum. Tried to make a uh, play on three, but unfortunately was not going to be. So there we go. That is a two buoy count at 10 to five. Little bit of a bounce there into number two, which kind of upset said is a rhythm. So he gets round uh, round number two, but no further than that. So there we go, that's Brando Caruso setting the bar up a little bit now. So official score is two. All right, so Brando Caruso and uh, Brandon Caruso is on two, Jonathan Travis is on two and a half, so Jonathan Travis currently holds the lead. So that's uh, currently our state of play with the top two. Now, next competitor up, coming to us from Italy. 
the current European slalom champion, Thomas de Gasperi. And let's check in dockside with Ali. All right, Brando, All right, so, so you just put yourself into the second place there with two at 41. Um, how did it feel? Great, you know, on T41, great. You know, then I did a small mistake on the gate. I don't know, it was, thought it was more windy, but it wasn't. So I don't know, it was like really long and late. And yeah, next round. Yeah, I definitely, I watched from here and I was like, I thought you pulled out a little long, but I know it slows down there a lot. Um, but yeah, I mean, great skiing. Your 39 looked great. Um, so you should be pretty happy with that, yeah? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. That was a good start. Still like getting used to the weather, you know, the water, it's really warm, so to recover is not easy, but nice. Yeah, well done. See more from you next round. Back to you. Thanks a lot, Ali, and thanks a lot there, uh, Brando Caruso. All right then folks, here we go. Coming in on uh, the opening pass, Thomas de Gasperi. This should be a 30 meter start, which it is. Looking strong, very smooth technique, just absolutely just crushing that opening pass of 30 meters. Skiing very, very subtly and just allowing things to work their way, uh, way out naturally. A skier who has uh, competed on multiple occasions and come through with podium position in uh, in events such as the Masters and the Moomba Masters and has won the World Championship twice. Has won the European title eight oh, times, it, actually nine times. Constantine. He is the current hey, can I get Moussaka European instead of Championship. Potatoes? I didn't know that was Moussaka. Oh. Me daddy. Rob Hazel yeah. getting ready. And he's already and thinking about dinner or lunch. Who does he think he is? All right, then, here we go, folks. No doubt we'll be talking to Rob in just a moment, but uh, before him, we'll bring on. Coming in, Thomas de Gasperi. This is 12 meters. Allowing the ski to fully rotate before dropping the hammer. And he gets it to, to go. All right then, so Thomas de Gasperi getting through that run of 12 meters. Pulling out to shorten to 11. Rob Hayeswood uh, uh, in a little bit of a playful mood uh, with, uh, with our drone camera. Apologize for the dizziness, folks. There we go. There is uh, Freddie Winter trying to be Chuck Norris. He's got the beard down. Yep. Need to get need to get him set up with the total gym. It looks like. 
All right, then, here we go. We have got, coming into the course, Thomas de Gasperi, 11.25 meters. He set the boat up for, uh, for Charlie 2 on the zero off. And not much wrong with this pass, uh, that much I can tell you. That is 11.25 meters, he nails that one. He'll have about 45 seconds at the, uh, the op opposite end before he uh, is brought back into the course for the next run, which is going to be 10.75 meters. Thomas de Gasperi, Skinner is immaculate best right now. Not making too many errors, if any, out there on the slalom course. And just seems to have a really, really superb handle on what he's, on what he's doing out there. Went in at 13, ran that, and 12, and 11, 2, 5. It's now gonna come down to 10.75 meters. of our folks taking to the shade and uh, here we go 10.75 meters here he comes four people have made it into uh, 10 point into 10.25 meters will uh, Thomas the Gasprey be joining them and the simple answer to that question is yes. There you go. A six buoy count for Tom Nurse de Gasprey on 10.75 meters. So Thomas de Gasprey so far this season. Let's have a look at the tail of the tape. Skied at the Mover Masters where he scored uh, four at 10.75 meters there in the final. King of Darkness, he ran 10.75 meters and had uh, had equivalent scores of three in each of the uh, in each of the two rounds that he competed in. Matter of fact, you'll be hard pressed to find a score that was less than the uh, than a uh, a score at 10.25 meters. He's been tremendously consistent all the way throughout this season. So ever since uh, the uh, the Masters competition in Callaway Gardens, he's uh, he's uh, slalomed. He's had 15 rounds of slalom, and they've all been into 10.25 meters so far as the final score is concerned. Coming in, Thomas de Gasperi. Two and a half is the lead been pretty reliable we're getting at least three he's round two he's round safety checks on three and there you go but a little bit disappointed we're just getting the three because it looked like he had a, a good run going on there now for a skier that's been fairly reliable on on three buoys at 10.25 meters, this will just just be another just another performance in that vein. But I'm guessing that whenever you get to the whenever you get into the whole habit of knowing that just three buoys that three buoys is pretty much the score that you can rely rely upon yourself to actually produce. When it comes to a point where you want to try and push out for number four and maybe uh, attempt the entire pass, it's kind of hard to break the habit in, in your mind that 
you know, sometimes it helps if you actually make a play and turn on three. And there, Thomas de Gasperi looking a little bit disappointed there with, with three at 10.25 meters. He has two more rounds to, uh, to see if he can't make his way into the eighth Sierra final. But uh, Thomas de Gasperi with three at 10.25 meters, having said all of that, is good enough for the lead. With about four skiers remaining. Now, whether that is going to be good oh, enough to keep him in contention for a final spot in the uh, the eight skier final is yet to be determined. A2, please. Just go down there and drop. Just go down there and drop. I yep. Skier on the water right now is Robert Hazelwood. All right, let's check in dockside with Ali. Hi. Thomas, our new leader. Um, how did it feel out there? Oh, it felt amazing. I mean, I had a great start, one and two. I was like, man, I'm going to go more than three, than my usual three. And I think uh, I wanted to turn a little early at three ball to stay ahead of the game. And they both just pulled me up and a little bit of headwind. And I was a little narrow, but that's the start that I want. That's the start I've been looking for, and that's the start I'll be looking for later. Yeah, I mean, it's always nice when it feels good the first round. You can hopefully build on that in the rounds to come. Yeah, the wind came up a little bit, but when I ski, it was perfect. So I was pretty happy, and it makes me feel good for the next round. Perfect. All right, back to you, Tony. Well, if, if that isn't a quotable, huh? Got the start that he, uh, that he, won Got the start that he wanted. And then that's the start that he's going to aim for for the uh, for the remaining two rounds. So uh, for those of you that are watching to see if uh, Thomas de Gasperi will conjure up a performance more than his standard three at 10.25 meters, watch out. All right, so Robert Hazelwood on 30 meters as we track behind him using our drone camera. There's four, there's five and 30 meters. No worries there. All right, let's check in dockside with Ali. So Will Asher, our reigning champion here from Caiaphas Battle of last year, excited to be back? Yeah, I am. I am. Like the, the last year, the energy was high. And today on Saturday feels like energy from Sunday last year. So George says he's got big plans. Um, I'm excited to be back. I mean, this place, this place is fun. Yeah, George keeps saying bigger. So I think tomorrow is going to be pretty interesting. Yeah, we keep asking for details. Like, you wait, you wait. It's going to be bigger. Well, best of luck. Back to you guys. All right, then. Uh, thanks a lot there, Will, and thanks a lot, uh, Ali, and uh, uh, keeping an eye on the messages that have uh, been uh, been put on the uh, the live chat here on the TWBC YouTube channel. Thanks a lot, Wayne Bryant, uh, uh, for your comments. Also, uh, Elena Weymouth-Thomas, uh, Michael Groves, Max Crack Cracknell. Uh, thanks a lot for your comments. If you want to be a part of the live chat, all you need to do is to go to the TWBC YouTube channel and subscribe with the button at the top, the big red button that says subscribe. Hit that, you'll be part of the live chat conversation. And if you hit the bell icon, you'll be notified as to when our next live event will, uh, will go live. So here we go, Robert Hazelwood on 12 meters. Looking good. In good shape and managing to uh, to stay the course on 12 meters. 
like what he's doing out there. And so too, I'm sure, his, uh, his parents, George and Flo, who are no doubt uh, watching at, uh, at their, uh, at their digs over at Hazelwood Ski World out inside of uh, Lincoln. George and Flo, if you are indeed watching, then uh, then throw up a message on the uh, the live chat on the YouTube channel. Let you know you let let us know you're watching. I'm Tony Lightfoot. I'm glad to have the pleasure of your company here at the Caiaphas Pro Battle for 2023. Sitting behind this uh, this Volkswagen uh, ID Buzz, one of the latest additions on the uh, the line of uh, fine vehicles offered by Volkswagen. Totally electric. Re fully recharges in under uh, eight hours using the uh, the installed power bank at your home. And uh, when out on the road, if you're able to get to a, uh, a high voltage charging station, then it could be fully recharged in under an hour. All right, here we go, Robert Hazelwood. 11.25 meters. He's been skiing remarkably well this season. And uh, been, uh, been throwing up some really, really superb scores, including the three and a quarter buoy scored that he uh, that he used to make it through to the final in the Swiss Pro Slalom, and uh, Robert Hayeswood, part of the, he is a part of Team Syndicate, although not one of the three nominated skiers uh, for whom uh, their points goes into the uh, into the TWBC brand leaderboard. You just saw a snapshot of that with D3 in the lead ahead of Syndicate. So looking looking pretty strong uh, this season so far, the uh, the Syndicate brand. And looking to try and make up for, uh, for lost ground against D3. Looking at some of the scores that Robert Hazelwood, A24, has uh, produced. In the Lackanau Cup, he managed to get halfway down 10.25 meters. Didn't make it through to the to the final, despite having scored that high. Stopping really short down there. Yeah, but like where they're stopping, it's, it's like short. Really, yeah, but the weeds are really. So here we go, folks. Coming in, this is Robert Hazelwood. 10.75 meters. Oh, brilliant start. Round number two, handle up high. He's going to have to work this one now. Bit of a delay off number three. It's round number four. How on earth he got round number four? I have no clue. And he managed to get round buoy number six. All right. Robert Hazelwood. Managing to wrestle that pass out of the claws of destruction. Round buoy number one, got the got the got the, about as good a start as you could get, but then round number two, Handel got caught up high, pulled him over his ski, managed, managed to hold on, and then a delay off his uh, offside turn, which is number three, managed to claw back that in, almost that entire deficit back on number four, safety on five, and made a good, good play on number six to join that group of skiers that have run 10.75 meters. Now the question is, how far down 10.25 meters will he go? There's your current lead and the skiers that have been into 10.25 meters. There have been four of them. His personal best is four at 10.25. Let's see what he will do today. So, there you heard in the background, his personal best is four at 10.25 meters. He's been, uh, he's been averaging around two or three at 10.25 meters on a number of occasions this season. 
Let's see what he can do with the right start. Round number one, he's got the start. Round number two, he's gone it better. Round, oh, he S turns. Oh, that is tactical skiing there from Robert Hazelwood. He knows that if he'd have tried to make a play on number three and he came up short on number four, then he, then he would have to work hard to try and get a, at least a good baseline score with the remaining two rounds. By skiing round buoy number three and stalling up and skiing for the wakes to score three, he at least sets up a decent baseline score and from there he can work a little harder. He had the space, he had the start and he had the play on number three to maybe, maybe turn it but he decides to uh, to put a good safe score under his belt and uh, and then work with uh, with the remaining two rounds to get up a little bit higher if he feels frisky enough to do so. His score of three at 10.25 meters is the current tie for the lead with Thomas de Gasperi. And there you go, right there. Mark of a professional. <laughs> and I don't know. I don't know what part of that was funny. All right, so Robert Hazel coming back to the dock. And another British skier will take to the water. Former two-time world slalom champion, Will Asher. Ο βασιλιάς του 2022 του Καριάπας Μπάτλ, Will Asher. Now on the water, Will Asher, the king of Καριάπας Μπάτλ of 2002. Let's hear it. So, Will Asher, That's all you the have. current no. champion from Caiaphas, and the defending champion. Make sure you subscribe to the TWBC YouTube channel. You'll get notified as to when we go live and also be part of the live chat. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. There you go. Yes. All right, looks like he's got his handle and looks like he's ready to go. Good luck. All right, so we got Will Asher going in towards the uh, the drop zone, and uh, while we wait for him to come into the course, let's check in dockside with Ali. Um, <laughs> I'd like to watch the video back and see. It was a little shaky here and there. 141 was absolutely money. I can't really do any better than that. I felt the tail move. I was like, boom, here we go. And then my two two balls, the whole set, weren't great at all. I did the exact same thing I did every other two ball. I was laid into three. Maybe, I put it one way, Will would have turned it. <laughs> but um, what can you do? It was a good score for me, so I'm happy. Got the three ball scaries a little bit. Pretty much. It's first round. We have three rounds. Wind died for me. Like, you know, none of people say, oh, it was the wind. No, wind died for me. I had absolutely beautiful conditions all set. It's coming up a little bit again now, but no complaints. Well, congratulations. Good ski, and I think we'll see a lot more from you. Thank you. I hope so, too. Back to you guys. All right, then. So, getting ready for Will Asher, and joining me here in the announcer spot is Corey Vaughn from Bumpus in Virginia. How are you doing, sir? I'm good, Tony. Thanks for having me in here. Um, just enjoying the battle. Got my time out there, and uh, now I've grabbed a coffee and thought I'd watch the rest uh, with the, the TWBC coverage. It's kind of the best seat in the house still. Indeed, indeed. So let's have a look and see Will Asher. Looking in good shape. Yeah, pretty easy. Um, 
I found out that we will be doing a 12 meter start for the final, so 35 off in the final round. Um, so I think we might see some competitors start coming out even in the first round at the, the 12 meter start. But there is a little bit of a wind factor all day. We've been here all week uh, training. There's been almost no wind. Uh, it's been hot and no wind all week. But um, there's a little bit of breeze. It's a, it's a headwind off the dock. All right, let's check in dockside with Ali. All right, Freddie Winter. Uh, here, this is our what, fourth stop now on the Pro Tour. How are you feeling? Or on the European Tour? I'm great. I, it's funny, the cadence was really heavy last week, and then we get to this week, and it's like, all right, let's go. Let's keep moving. Like It almost felt like only five days between tournaments seemed too short. I've been kind of ready since like two days. Just Let's just do this, you know, and the atmosphere here is getting us all going. We're all very excited to be you know, have people excited to be here in the music and oh, I love it, I love it. This is, this is what it should be every time, a party, uh, an opportunity for us to actually interact with people, have people excited about what we're doing and I, I, I'm so happy right now, this is amazing. Make water skiing fun again. Good luck out there. Thank you very much, let's make it fun. I agree. Back to you, Tony. All right then, so uh, that is uh, Freddie Winter along with, uh, with Ali Nicholson and this is uh, Will Asher. Corey, take it away. All right, I mean, another warm-up pass right here. Like I said, I think this is going to be a starting line length. Um, we can be almost certain Will's going to be in the finals. So this is just a feeling it out, getting the sense of the now tailwind from that end. It has laid down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and throw it right on the table. I had the, the most wind out of anybody by a pretty good amount. Um, I, I thought maybe it would stay up for all these top guys, but it hasn't. Um, but there is some out there for sure. It's a factor. And we're finding out on this lake, it skis a little bit differently on the gate from one end to the other. So that's another thing to feel out. 2005. Uh, at the starting dock end, where you begin, you run out of speed a little bit quicker. It's, you slow down a bit. And then from the far end, uh, you seem to carry a little bit more speed. So these things are a factor. It's nice to feel it out from both ends before you're getting into the 39-41 passes. But uh, even this next one for Will, 38 in the headwind, I think it's going to look pretty easy. All right, then. Excellent stuff. I'm Tony Lightfoot. He's Corey Vaughn. And, uh, and uh, a vehicle uh, behind you, uh, Corey, which, uh, which I know you're... Uh, you're, you're eyeing up a little bit the uh, the all electric uh, ID uh, buzz uh, from Volkswagen. Yeah, they brought that thing in here. You had the doors open. I got my head inside there, and I wanted it immediately. I I uh, have some hippie vibes, as everyone knows, and uh, bringing back the the bus. I love the look of it. I love the inside. The only thing I'm a little worried about would be the towing capacity. I might have to bring a boat around with it, and I don't know about pulling the boat in and out of the lake with the bus but well that's where the amrock comes into play yeah could be all right there here we go this is will asher on 11.25 meters selecting a2 which uh, which is a, a popular setting uh, for uh, for a skiers corey yeah um i don't get a whole lot of time behind the ski nautique so <laughs> For one time in life, I've just followed the crowd, and I do A2 also, and it seems to be fine. I don't put a whole lot of stock of the, in the zero-off letters. I don't get too wrapped up about uh, the differences between them. On my Pro Star, I run B2. When I went to the uh, Malibu at Lacano, I just stuck with B2, and then when I go behind a Nautique, I go with A2. Um, I think it's mostly what you get used to. You know, I know Will trains at Travers behind a Nautique, so he uh, presumably has tried the different settings and um, you know has felt the best behind A2 but you're right certainly the popular choice I think T-Gas may be the only one uh, rocking a C2 out there yeah that's right and I mean and, and, I'm, and I'm guessing the principle is is that whenever you set up the zero off for each of the boats it's done with the intention of making them make, giving like a standard pull across the across the nine uh, primary settings Right. I, I mean, like I said, part of it's what you get used to, and then boat to boat, there are differences. <clears throat> I would say uh, it wouldn't be su uh, surprising for people to hear that the Nautique these days, I think, feels like the strongest boat, and A, I think, is an attempt to soften up that pull, not encourage the boat to be any more for <coughs> forceful with you than it is already. That's, that's my very generic uh, understanding, anyway. 
All right then, so there we go. There's uh, Freddy strolling around up and down on the dock side. This here is 10.75 meters from Wallachia, the defending Caiaphas Pro Battle Champion. That's why it's wearing the uh, the yellow bib. This is looking pretty nice, Tony. I mean, this is it a is. clean. Handle up a little high on his inside, but yeah. on four. But even though uh, the number five didn't look particularly good, but uh, yeah, he, he, it's still better than most people's. Yeah, that was a nice clean pass right from the start. Solid gate, classic Will Asher. Um, you know, you could pick out. He had that little shoulder drop at five ball, but it was kind of a whatever. <clears throat> really like that gate shot. Nice off of one. Of course, Will is going to smoke two. And when you do that, you connect like that off the backside of two. That's pretty much when you know you have the pass locked down. You just have to not change the plan, not change the rhythm. Will's run. Oh, I think we have a gate review. Okay. Wow. Okay. That's about the only way you're going to see Nate drop a 39. Uh, not Nate. I'm sorry. Will drop a 39 these days. Nate, too. All right, then. So, looks like uh, we got a, a question here from the live chat. Uh, KJ uh, Kinander, who asks, is this salt or fresh water? It's okay. actually both. That's right. This is brackish water. Uh, my understanding is that they did something, some earth moving <clears throat> or some way of allowing more of the seawater, because we're, we're right next to the Mediterranean, they allowed more of that water to come in to make it a bit saltier and cooler with the idea of the ski riding a little bit better. And uh, we're seeing now Will's gates were approved there. That's good news for him. Uh, yeah, and I, we're on a, a 6.2 liter engine this year, and maybe with what they did with the water, I think it does all feel a bit better. Okay, so here we go. This is uh, Will Asher. He scored two and a half to win uh, this event last season, and he already, already the top score is three. Here he comes. Oh, look at this, round one and two. Oh, look at this, it's on. It is on. It is so on, like Donkey Kong. There you there go, it it's a six buoy count, and that is the new course record. That's right. You know what, Tony? You uh, you hit me with that uh, YouTube question right there. Right before that, I was going to say, be on the lookout that he's going to run that pass. I I saw that one coming, to be honest with you. Um, but I'll tell you one other thing. It's not the last 10 to 5. <laughs> George likes it. New course record. Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> but And it's raising the stakes. I mean, beautiful pass. When you run 41, there's really not an ugly way to do it. You have to be so on. Everything has to be right on time. Just n you can't afford a single mistake. And that's uh, Will had that perfect hook off, off the backside of two, and then never relented. He's unwavering in his in his moves. That's a beautiful pass. No, I was just just getting ready to say we're going to see some 41s go down, and Will looks good. And there it goes. But I, I'll say this again. That's not the last one we're going to see this weekend either. I don't think so either. And uh, so far as this season goes uh, for Will Asher, uh, the uh, the results and the podium positions have been uh, haven't been as easy for him to obtain this season as they were for him last season. This is the first time this season that he's run 10.25 meters. So this is some rare air for him. 9.75 meters. His best score of the season coming up right now. Will Asher, round one. S turns for the wakes. He'll ski into the dock. One at 9.75, one at 43 off for Will Asher. Pretty good stuff, Tony. Uh, Will's a legend of the sport, and this is why. And uh, he's just raised the stakes for all of us. But it does feel great out there. I think that's what we were saying right beforehand. The uh, the salt and fresh water, the boat this year, you know, we're we're going to see some big scores continue through the weekend. My understanding is tomorrow's going to be a little hotter, no wind, and uh, the Caiaphas battle, the finals, is going to be a bloodbath. Oh, wow. So, Will Asher, aged 41, and he's still swerving with the best of them. Running 41 at 41, hard yeah. to beat that. <laughs> Indeed. So, so who do we, we have next here? We got Freddie, huh? 
Yep, we got Freddy. We got two more skiers to go. We got Nate Smith skiing up last, and then before him, Freddy Winter. All right, let's check in uh, Dockside with Ali. All right, so we got Will Asher on the dock here after putting out an amazing score. One at 975. That's the first time you run it this year, right? Yeah, I think it might be the first time in practice or competition. I don't even know. Um, Oh, that looked that looked amazing. It was like you could almost say that that was 11. It looked amazing. It looked perfect. I, I I mean I don't know what else to say. Yeah, I mean I got a great team behind me. You know we just Jamie and John and Ali. You know we're kind of doing our thing and we just keep improving. If we're not if one of us is down, we just chip each other up and we just rebuild. We rebuild. And it's, uh, I'm very fortunate to have the people around me. Too. Still showing the kids how it's done, huh? You know you gotta you gotta keep them on the toes. Great job, Will. Great skiing. Good luck in the next rounds. Back to you guys. Well, obviously, I didn't know that Ali, uh, Alice, Ali had taken a break. I think uh, she's getting ready for the, the second round of the women's uh, slalom uh, competition. But uh, thanks there for, to Aaron Davies for picking up the mic and uh, doing a great job uh, repping uh, uh, Bennett's as well. There we go. That is Will Asher with his one buoy score at 9.75 meters. <laughs> One at 43 off, and that is the new course record here at Kayapas. Yeah, and we're only in round one, Tony. We've still got two more rounds and a finals to go, and we haven't seen Freddie and Nate yet. So that uh, I'm going to predict that we see more 43s. I don't know if we're going to see someone go to two ball or not. That's That really is the big question. Yep, it's one of those of huge questions hovering around this section of the event. We've got Freddie Winter out on the water right now in the drop zone. Uh, we see there a Nate Smith uh, getting his slalom ski situated. And here he is, a member of Team D3. This is Freddie Winter. Now, Freddie is actually on a new slalom ski since uh, since Lacanel because uh, there was there was some problems with his uh, ski uh, there was actually a crack in his uh, slalom ski which prevented him from really pushing pushing uh, too hard on that ski in Lacanel and with that in mind let's check in with uh, with Aaron Maybe Aaron's having a hard time chasing down someone to interview. I, that dock job. Here we down here on the dock with Nate Smith. Uh, we've just seen a big score from Will Asher put down. How are you feeling? Pretty good. Took two practice rides this week. The play ski is amazing. Will made it look really, really easy out there. So uh, go out and see what happens this round. Luckily, we have three qualifying rounds. So just kind of go out and enjoy. Right, you are. So what are you looking for? Just get a score down for the first round and then you know chase after that or what's the what's the game plan? I don't really know. You go out there and try and match what Will did. That's kind of the, the, the one to chase. So uh, he just showed it to all of them. All right. Good luck, Nate. Have fun. Back to you guys. All right, so uh, back here, I'm Tony Lyford. Uh, this is uh, Corey Vaughan next to me. Uh, glad to have you on board. And uh, thanks uh, to all of these sponsors here that you see underneath here for their contributions to this, the Kayafas Pro 2023. Here we go, folks. This is Freddie Winter. Gets a good start. This is 12 meters. Yeah, so, like we said earlier, just getting a feel from both ends here. Very easy warm-up passes nothing to that right there on the neo 2 slalom ski which uh, which he's uh, been riding so far this season now if you're in the situation that Freddie is right now where where he uh, ne needed to get off his old ski and onto this one I mean how 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 much does that does that really play on your mind I mean I guess it really just <clears throat> depends on how much you trust your backup ski um, right now I feel very fortunate I have a backup ski that if I needed to 
moved to it, I feel very good that I can go out there and really not miss a beat. I mean, I'd like to have a practice ride on it. I'd hate to have to switch in the middle of tournament rounds just because I mean, it probably plays with your head more than anything. But, um, you know, I have a backup ski. I feel great on it. So not too big of an issue. And I think we did get to practice here all week. So Freddie's had some time with the ski. Um, had the opportunity to dial in with it, and I think it's the exact same, you know, Neo 2 as his other one. So I, I think at this point he's probably ready to uh, to go out there and, and be game ready. And probably the reason why you actually have a crack at backup ski, Corey, is because you're the only person that's skiing on that brand in this in this competition. Yeah, before I went home, before I flew here, uh, sorry, I was debating whether I should travel with the backup ski or not. I elected not to, mainly for fear that. Uh, if the airlines ran over one ski, they they might run over both if they were in one bag. So I left my other one at home, and uh, fortunately, we've made it this far, um, no problems. All right, here we go. This here is uh, Freddie Winter. Now, back in the day, I know uh, stories of Andy Mapple and uh, Christy Overton actually uh, actually carrying each each one of theirs uh, backup skis uh, uh, on the on the one or two, okay, just just in case that uh, one one ski doesn't arrive, at least it arrived another method. Uh, but uh, but there you go, that is uh, Freddie Winter, that is pass number three, he's gone through 13, 12, and now 11.25 meters, and uh, the uh, the pressure's starting to, uh, to ratchet up here. Yeah, and I mean, on these passes, you know, especially once you get to 38, 11 meters, you can really start to see, you know, if people are dialed in, if they're clicking, how they're standing on their ski, how their rhythm is looking. Freddie here, every pass has looked very solid. He's skiing with confidence. Uh, he looks strong. And, um, you know, now he doesn't feel like he needs to make any big adjustments as he nine is not going to be much of an issue. All right, right you off. 39 is next there for, uh, for Freddie Winter. Our final skier about to take to the water is Nate Smith. And uh, we'll see what he can do. As we look at uh, some of our folks are around uh, Dockside uh, getting ready for, uh, for Freddie Winter to come back into the course. So there's already a pretty good uh, scene, like a lot of spectators coming out today, and I've heard that tomorrow we're in for something <laughs> really special, which well, I'm that, excited to see. Well, that dock has got a weight capacity associated with it. <laughs> we, we, need to, we need to try and get a few of those folks along the shoreline, but here we go. This is 10.75 meters for Freddie Winter, nice extension on number four. And that is about as good as it gets. Yeah, I mean, so uh, just what we're saying there, the confidence that he built from those early passes and the way he can trust his ski, that pass right there is not, well, let me run this to make sure I get through it. That is, let's run this pass to set up uh, the next pass, which is 41. He saw Will go out there, do it in front of him. He's not thinking about a safe three at 41 to just make sure he makes the finals he wants to go right behind will run the pass and i think he set himself up with a pretty good opportunity to do just that um the way he ran this 39 it's pretty convincing yep looked on fire here yep yeah, <clears throat> it's just he's gonna have to get the the gate right that's gonna be the big thing yeah, but everything hinges upon getting a good gate at 10.25 meters. I mean, I've, I've mentioned this once and I'll mention it again. I mean, when, whenever whenever I was announcing with Marcus Brown back in the day in 2009 at the World Championships, he equated the level of perfection that needed that needed to exist for a gate shot at that this line leg to be in the whip of a garden hose. That's right. Uh, yeah, I remember there was a famous article, uh, Jamie Beauchene, I think, said that Marcus and Jamie maybe had discussed that together. Um, but yeah, that's that's about right. It may be a little bit wider than that these days, but maybe about the, the width of a slalom ski. It's not much, uh, not a lot of wiggle room here. Let's see what you get. This is the end where you slow down a little bit. Uh, that looks like he's got brought decent speed in. Good one ball. Nice. Freddie, you can count on for a big two. Ball. Yep, here we go. We're in this. And that is his offside turn. Big four, can he make it out of five right here? Yeah, he's going. He's there, yes, 10.25 meters. Oh, look at that. All right, score under review though, but uh, he certainly made it a convincing case to have the six buoys counted and then continuing on from there. 
But I tell you what, Caiaphas is certainly uh, delivering at this early stage. This is just round one. There are two more rounds of this. One more round today and another one tomorrow morning before we go into the final round. Yeah, so it may be, um, you know, somebody now, Freddie and Will, are in a great position where they know they're in the finals. I think they can rest assured. So they don't have to ski two more rounds. They can rest the body, um, you know, maybe ski one more round just to get a feel for the water or go out there and do a down and back. You know, they've really created some options for themselves. Yeah, it's round six. Yeah. Yep. Yes, indeed. That is six buoys. That is a confirmed score. Six buoys at 10.25 meters. Let's have a look at some of his previous scores that we've seen in his. All right. So he scored one at 9.75 meters on two it's occasions. It's hard to get there. Yeah. Sure. Lake 38. No! All right then, so let's see what he can do. The European record is two. Round one. Oh, and gets the one. And he ties the lead with Will Asher. He scored one at 9.75 meters also at the Botas Pro-Am a few weeks ago. But I tell you what, back to really good, hot, rock, solid consistency. That is... Uh, Freddie Winter, once again, conjuring up some magic out there, Corey. Yeah, I mean, just a great run from the from the very beginning. I think I said, you're going to run 41. Usually, those warm-up passes are going to build to the next, to the next, to the next. That's the way he took that set. Now, Will and Freddie have both uh, laid down something for Nate to go after. Uh, I guess the question may be, not can Nate run 41? We know he can, and he likely will is will he try to turn one ball. <coughs> Freddie right there was thinking about taking that one, uh, taking a turn. Will went just straight for the full one. He didn't even make an attempt at turning it. Freddie realized he wasn't gonna get out of it, then played the safe move right here. Right now he's thinking about turning, realizes he can't, and then bails out. Takes the full one. All right, let's check in Doc's side with Aaron. So we're down on dog side with uh, Freddie Winter. Just put an amazing score out there. He's equaled Will Asher with one at 9.75. How do you feel, mate? Good. I don't know if the news got back, but they put me on 12 twice. So I had to opt up to 10.7. I, I wasn't gonna start again. I don't, I'd be too tired. So I got a bit of a narrow gate there at 10.2 and just pulled really hard and trusted the ski and I got a great ski. I'm so happy with it. And yeah, I mean, I had to, I, I got four at 10.25 here and 2013, we all tied it last year. I, I want to. I don't want to have him. Uh, we, you know, nice to be equal with with Willie. Went and got a good score, and I went and backed it up. I'm happy, very happy. Yeah, you said we just spoke oh, earlier. You yeah. said you've had a few ski issues, and you're on a new ski uh, the past few sets. So you must be happy getting on an, on another ski and putting a score like that out there. Really happy. Yeah, I, like I, I put a crack in it in a crash at the Monaco tournament. And then skied on it in the final, which was maybe, I, I didn't see it. So, but no, I mean, it, it's amazing to have another ski in my bag. Never skied on it. Did one set before Lacano, then Lacano, three sets this week, and then that one. I'm pumped. I'm so pumped. It feels so good out there. It just feels like, I don't know, Manuel's driving really well, and it's, it, it's set up for success. We'll see some big scores this weekend. We've already seen big scores. Happy to be among them. What do you think they can do? Well, you're never going to bet against him running 10.25. He's got a tailwind. That tailwind's pretty tricky at the... At the, at the near end here, or over there. I struggled, I actually had a pretty good cut through the gate, having had a, I was a bit off on the, on the glide, but I came up a bit narrow, but I had a good swing. So I don't know, I mean, he can do something good. You know, he, he tends to get, he'll either get, I think he'll get a half or he'll get two, you know what I mean? Or, or, or he'll go inside of one, because he commits to it. That was me today. I was like, I'm not, I'm not gonna get one, or aim for one, I'm gonna aim for two, and I got one, but you know, but I tried to, you know, it's, uh, it's easy to go inside a one at nine. Cool, great words there from Freddie. Great, uh, great opening pass there from Nate. Back to you guys. All right then, so let's, let's kind of open this, uh, this thing up a little bit to the live chat because the one thing that he opened up with was the fact that he had to, that he ran 12 meters twice. 
because the, the rope wasn't shortened from 12 meters onto 11, and then it became technically an opt-up through 11.25 uh, from 12 meters all the way through to 9.75 meters, Corey. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to hear that when you're out there because it puts you in a bit of a precarious situation. You know, if you go out there, you opt up to 10.7 and you miss it, your score's at 11. But frankly, one, Freddie was confident that he's not going to miss it. He's skiing well, obviously. And secondly, to make, a, make it into the finals, you have to run 9.7 anyway. So presumably you get a little less of the feel, you know, by not skiing 38 off 11. Um, but really, you know, he had the same number of passes. So I don't think it put him at that great of a disadvantage, except for the surprise that you know you're, you're skiing an uh, unprotected pass. But he obviously handled it very well, didn't stop him in the end. And, um, you know, a skier of this caliber, of, of Freddie's caliber, is going to make that move nine times out of ten as long as there's not strange wind or bad conditions, something like that. He obviously felt good out there. And as uh, Nate Smith runs through 12 meters, as he's expected to do, what do you think, uh, you guys out there in the live chat? Uh, go, to, uh, go to the TWBC YouTube channel, click on the subscribe button, and get chatting away. There's a live chat going on on the right-hand side of the YouTube player. What do you think about that situation uh, with, uh, with Freddie Winter having to run through 12 meters twice before seeing nine, uh, before seeing uh, uh, 10.75 meters. He eventually scored one at uh, uh, 9.75 meters, but uh, do you agree with what uh, what Corey just said, or uh, or do you have your own take on it? Uh, go there on the live chat right now on the YouTube channel. Well, uh, <laughs> that, that's just that that just boggles the mind. I mean, not not so much that Freddie actually ran it, but uh, how that's even possible. <laughs> uh, I mean, we've seen it happen before. Every once in a while, you're going to get that. It's a lot of skiers. It's a lot of shortenings. The you know boat judge is also being the rope handler, so he's calling things in on the radio. They were doing a, they might have been doing a gate review or something, so he might have gotten sidetracked for a moment. Uh, you know, he might have had to check his TikTok for a second. You never know what's going on. Uh, I'm gonna guess it's not that. I'm kidding. Um, but anyway, no, Freddie handled that just fine. I do want to make sure that Nate started at 13 because he has been having the habit of starting at 12 a lot lately. I think we're. We're assuming that he did and that this would be 38 off right here, but uh, okay, this is, we're getting confirmation. This is 38. 38 off, 11.25 meters. Not looking too bad out there. No, I mean, I think Nate's back at home. He's behind a ski nautique. That's his uh, preferred boat. And, um, you know, you're seeing the conditions are super nice, water skiing well. No, no excitement there at 38 for Nate, which is exactly what he wants. No excitement. Yep. Just on his game, on his rhythm, and looking in very, very good shape right from the outset. He got through 11.25 meters and made it look like 14.25 meters. Uh, you're encouraging everyone to get on the live chat. I think that's great. I know it's, uh, it's about 140 here in Greece, and so probably uh, 1240 in, in a lot of Europe, but... Um, Probably got a lot of sleepyheads in America still. Thank you to those who are waking up early and joining us for some sports and coffee. Um, over here, I'm still having coffee, so it's a, it's a good thing to do. All right, then. Looks like we've got a comment here from Tio Vild, who believes he thinks it's surprising at first, but Freddie, as an example of a very experienced athlete, so he's definitely able to get uh, right to 10.75 meters. Yeah, I agree with him. Yeah, I think, you know, it's the kind of thing that you don't wish on maybe one of the guys that went out early in the field because they're going to have a lower percentage of 39, you know, of running 39. That's what they're really hoping to do. Freddie's not really even thinking twice if he's going to run 39. So had that happened to, you know, we had an unfortunate incident, I think, on the first gear of the day, Callum Heath. We had a delay. He had to go back out. And he, had to, yeah. he had to run 38 again after about a seven, eight minute delay. And then, you know, he, he got a half at 39. He kind of lost his timing. Here we go. 10.75 uh, meters here for a Nate Smith. Looking in good shape here. Oh, almost had to uh, take a second bite of uh, number four, but managing to, uh, to get round five and number six as he typically does. Well, I mean, it's fantastic skiing. You know, if you, if you just tuned in and watched that, uh, watch somebody run 39 and a half off that easily. You know, you're right for your jaw to hit the floor. However, 
If we're going to compa compare and contrast to the last two skiers, uh, Will and Freddie, I'd say they actually may have had a little nicer setup going into their 41. I mean, at least comparatively anyway, Nate, we're used to seeing him run 39 so precisely, and not, not that this is off the mark by any means, but, um, but I think we've seen him do it even better. So, you know, the question is, how's he feeling? As almost, he goes to 41, almost had to stretch a little bit. Too yeah, exactly. Far to I get mean, five. we're nitpicking, you know. As a, with my coach's hat on, if, if I see somebody do that, I'm going to be very happy with them. But we're holding Nate to Nate standards here, and we're expecting to see him go run 41 like the last two skiers. And I'm I'm not sure that his uh, 41 setup is is as clean as Freddie and uh, Will's was. All right, then, here we go. There is the boat there in the drop uh, drop zone and getting ready to pull Nate Smith back into the slalom course. It is going to be at 10.25 meters. Yeah, anybody watching at home, too, you can go on um, Google Maps or something similar, pull this place up, and then just kind of scroll out, zoom out a little bit. I mean, it's just stunning. We're a stone's throw away from the Mediterranean Sea, like the beach, and... Um, we took an amazing adventure yesterday to some waterfalls. I mean, the, the countryside. All right, then. All right, then. So here we go. History being made here with 10.25 meters from Nate Smith. Yep. Gets a good start on buoy number one. Whoa. Looking and go around buoy number two. D3 right now ahead in the TWBC uh, a brand leadership and looks like they're going to extend their lead further. Look at that. First time in history that the top three three scores at 10.25 meters, all six buoys there run for the first time in history. All three, in a row. All in a row. Yeah, and, oh, and look right there. So Nate, Nate heard my comments and decided to run the 41 better than the 39. I mean, this was just a cleaner pass. I mean, there was zero mistakes, full commitment everywhere. Full send. Yeah, full send. Off the backside of two right here, Boom. I just kind of knew. I was like, okay, we we don't see Nate really lose it from this point too often. And uh, he's got Freddie and Will in mind there and the score that he wants. So now we're in this somewhat predictable situation that Nate runs 41. Now the question is, does he go for the tie um, or does he go to, to set himself apart and try to go to two ball? All right. So, yeah, absolutely. So, and of course, too, you know, the way he just ran that pass, that, that's pretty much skiing at the peak. World record is his record set in 2012, two matched in 2016. Two and a half at this line length. Is he feeling like this is a time to push for that? I'll tell you, Manuel's driving and it feels fantastic. The conditions are really good here. Well, it, the excitement here is, all, is already at a fever pitch. If he got round number three into the wakes, it'll be absolute bedlam. Yeah, even if he gets to number two and takes an outright lead, uh, I think we're going to hear George through these microphones. Indeed. Here we go. This is 975. He's, He's uh, Oh, and <laughs> one buoy. He was thinking about the turn, though. It was in his head to go to two, just like what Freddie said. He not taking the safe one. Tried to commit. Knew it wasn't going to happen. Bailed out. Got the one. A three-way tie with one well, at 43. That is pretty insane. It's become a competition of Will, Freddie, Nate, and then everybody else. Hey, and just keep in mind, this is only round one. There's a lot of everybody else that, uh, that can make their way to this spot as well. These are the guys that we see doing it the most. There's no doubt about it. But... Um, I think you're going to see the scores come up from the rest of the pack also, especially when we've just been shown this. Uh, the motivation is going to be up in round two, and people are going to start uh, taking big swings out there. Swing for the fences. Swing for the fences. That's, Boom. That's what it's going to take. All right, then, with that in mind, let's check in uh, once more with Aaron. Hey, guys. So we're a uh, duck side after the last skier in men's slalom, Nate Smith. Just equal the best goal, one at nine seven five. How are you feeling? Pretty good. I mean, it's not often you go out there, and that's the the first round prelim score. You got to go out and tie or beat. So, Will kind of set the pace for us, and um, went out there and had really, really nice set. Like the forty one was pretty good. Got a little slow at three and four, but um, the place is amazing. Yeah, they must have put something in the water here. Everyone's skiing amazing, um, but I mean, 
just every the whole set just looked great, man. It just had a little slow one sometimes on 41, but it just it looked made it look easy. Yeah, I mean it's 41, right? Yeah. <laughs> but everything else felt great. I practiced two times here this week and it felt amazing. So I'm um, looking forward to the next few rounds. I know we got two more. I don't know if 90 degree water and hands will take it, but um, we'll see. We're good, we're, so we're looking at back, next backup score is like for the top seed, right? So what's the game plan? You know, do the same again, go for two, hope see what happens. Or? Yeah, maybe. I mean, we're all stacked at three or one now at 43. Yeah. Um, it just depends if we all ski the full three rounds or not. Um, right. I'm not overly concerned about it. I mean, I'm going to go out there and do my thing either way. So um, if it, you know, if I'm not top seed and my score is not big enough, then good on whoever beats it. But um, just keep trying. All right, wise words there from Nate. Good job, mate. Yeah, thank you. Back to you guys. All right, then. So that concludes round one. We're going to go into round two very shortly, starting with the women. And uh, it's uh, been been great to uh, to share this spot here with uh, with you, uh, Rakari, as we have a look at the leaderboard. Will Asher, Freddie Winter, and Nate Smith all tie with the lead with one at nine seven five. Thomas De Gasperi on three, as well as Robert Hayeswood, but both of them tying for fourth. Jonathan Travers there with two and a half at 10.25 meters. Then we've got Brando Caruso on two. Corey Vaughan, yourself, on uh, currently eight spot right now with half at uh, 10.25 meters. And the rest of the scores uh, consist of Tim Tornquist, Sasha Deska, and the remainder of that list. All right then, so uh, that is the, uh, the conclusion of round one. In a little over 10 minutes time, we'll have uh, the women's uh, round two. This is the Caiaphas battle for 2023 and we'll return in that time after this. What if I told you there was a place, a place where the sounds of nature are only broken by the roar of a boat, a place where that summer feeling lasts all year long, a place where the Florida sun is only outshined by the smiles of the skiers place where first-time skiers can ski alongside world champions and the world-class coaches work with all levels of skiers. What if I told you there was a place where life slows down and your only job is to make lifelong memories? That place is Swiss Water Ski Resort. Book your trip at SwissWaterSkiResort.com. For skiers and water enthusiasts, Florida lakes are what dreams are made of. Combined with world-class golf, remarkable weather, natural beauty, theme parks, and so much more, it's easy to see that Florida is paradise. For more than 30 years, I've enjoyed Florida's lakes and many offerings. If you are interested in Florida real estate, let me be your guide and trusted advisor as you search for your paradise. Together, we can make your dreams a reality.
I'm involved with the Flowpoint Method because I think it's a really strong program. We've been working on a couple things and it's just fine tuning and I want to be able to make sure that I can do those movements no matter where I am so I can feel confident skiing at any site. It's just really all encompassing and I think that's really beneficial. It's very helpful to like keep on those keys and have a support team behind you that you can ask questions to and are there for every step of the way. My name is Thomas de Gasperi. I'm from Italy. I'm a two-time World Slalom Champion. I've been coming here at La Guapa for four years now. What I really love about this place is that we get a chance to ski in a big natural lake right behind me with a perfect course. Also, we have a chance to go 10 minutes away to a perfect man-made lake where conditions are always perfect. The boat, the drivers are always top level. The weather is always perfect.
What if I told you there was a place, a place where the sounds of nature are only broken by the roar of a boat, a place where that summer feeling lasts all year long, a place where the Florida sun is only outshined by the smiles of the skiers, a place where first-time skiers can ski alongside world champions and the world-class coaches work with all levels of skiers. What if I told you there was a place where life slows down and your only job is to make lifelong memories? That place is Swiss Water Ski Resort. Book your trip at SwissWaterSkiResort.com. Thanks for calling Wake House. This is Brian. How can I help you? Uh, yeah, Will. Can I let him know who's calling? All right, just a second. Will, I got a fill for you. Perfect. Give me just one second. All right, hit it. Thanks for holding. This is Will. Hey, hey how's it going? Good.
Well, welcome back to continuing coverage of the 2023 Caiaphas Battle. I'm being joined here uh, this time around by Matteo Lazzari. Say hi to the good folks. Hello, hello, everyone. Good to be here with you, Tony. Good, 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 good. So, uh, so far as uh, order of business, well, if you well, if you just missed the uh, uh, the slalom in that we've just seen, uh, shame on you, uh, because uh, look at that. Right up the top there, Will Asher, Freddie Winter, and uh, Nate Smith. One at 9.75 meters. Uh, yes, you, yeah, you saw that right. You see that right. That's one of 43 off, three times in a row towards the end of the competition. Thomas de Gasperi in fourth, uh, tied with Robert Hazelwood. And, I mean, you, you can't help but be amazed by their scores there, Matteo. Yeah, inspired, really. Uh, I didn't have the best first round. Actually, maybe my f worst first round ever. Uh, but then I saw Will, followed by Freddie, followed by Nate, running 41 off in powerful fashion, so definitely inspired for round two. Uh, unbelievable level here at the Caiaphas Provaro. We're only in the first of three qualifying rounds, and we already have three scores at nine. I mean, unbelievable. All right, so which brings us to women's slalom two, the women's slalom second round. First gear up is going to be uh, uh, Taylor Woolsey, uh, still on that comeback trail after seven years uh, absent from the pro scene. Uh, Ali uh, Garcia will be uh, second up, followed by uh, Alicia Bagnoli and Beatrizia Yanni. Elizabeth Montavon, uh, fifth skier out, followed by uh, Manon Costa. And uh, Ali Nicholson, our penultimate skier out, followed by Jamie Ball. And uh, just to say that, and let's have a look at uh, this, uh, this performance here from, uh, from Ali Nicholson. This is 39 and a half off, uh, 10.75 meters. Robert Hayeswood, you've just joined us. Fashionably uh, late as ever. Yes, indeed. Uh, tell us what you think. Uh, I think this could be the biggest choke of the day. Um, love Ali to bits, but come on. This was, the, this was just, oh, <laughs> I didn't see that. Um, she was absolutely on it. There was, she's had quite a few close calls this summer. Um, and last summer, to be fair, and she just hasn't quite managed to make it out of that four ball in good nick. But um, here we see Jamie, who very much did manage to get out of that four ball. And um, I mean, this is probably one of the best 39s we've seen all year, even. There's very few mistakes. Um, yeah, just a pretty beautiful pass here. Your take, Matteo. Well, I mean, Jamie has been consistent, right? Like, she started the season on this new ski, and it's really showing how well it works for her. You can see, like, she's backsiding four at 39, waiting for five. I mean, unbelievable pass this morning. And I believe she got a one, right? A one at 41. Yeah. Um, yeah. Taking the lead after round one. But, I mean, that was as easy as he can get as a, four, as a 39. You know, I think Jamie could be the worst traveling partner because we get to the lake, you go there, I'm like, oh, I'm feeling good today. She goes out, like, 241, makes it through to the final like it's nothing. I mean, look at this 41. Um, just needs a few more reps here, but beautiful gate. She said she was happy. She just went, you can see she went a little hard into that first wake. And that's okay if you're going to hold it. She didn't and gets kind of flown straight at that one ball. But, um, I mean, she's she's been on it this week. I've watched a few times she's skied and um, she looks very, very, very strong. I mean, probably, I think you would agree, Mateo, this is probably the best she's skied ever. Um, uh, I would say, in terms of consistency, for sure. Even if we think back of like oh. World 21, it was a, uh, yeah. it was you know? a good day for her to run yeah. 40, 39 back then. Yeah, um, now it's routine. Oh, we've got a change in driver. So Manuel will be driving the women here. That's an interesting. We don't usually, we don't tend to usually swap around, but so we're going to have Manuel driving the women this round in round two and Nathan driving the men, I assume. And then in round three, we go back to the first round and then the finals will be the same as that first round. So just, um, I mean, the drivers, I kind of sometimes feel sorry for the drivers. You know, they come, they fly all this way and sometimes they don't get to have a spread of skiers because we want to have the same driver every round. But I kind of like to see that the drivers have been able to kind of fly all this way, put in all the work that they do like we do as skiers and be able to drive the men and the women and get that kind of excitement. All right then, let's check in dock side. Hey guys, so we're on the dock with Alice Bagnoli. She uh, has got four in the first round at 11. What are you thinking about this round? You know, the wind is a little up and down, so the gates gets a little tricky, and that was what was wrong on my first 11, on my first set. So hopefully I'm going to get a better, 
perspective of it, and um, yeah, it's all about the gate, my 11. So if I get a good gate, hopefully I can run it. What are you thinking, 11 headwind? Yeah, I'm gonna start at 13 again because also I skied 11 that way, so I'm gonna have it the same way, and it's headwind. Nice, good tactics there. Uh, what do you think about the site so far? Site is great. I've been here last year. We're all having fun. It's hard to concentrate on skiing with all the music, but that's a fun part. So. Thanks, Alice. Good luck. Have fun. Back to you guys. All right, then round two is a go, and we've got our first competitor out on 14.25 meters. This is Taylor Wolsey. Looking good there at a one ball. Had a bit of a bit of an unfortunate fall in that first round, going down pretty hard on that boy Juan. Um, but she looks a little bit more settled here this round. First round, she kept every time getting that ski biting a little bit through the front side um, and then opening up. But that looked a little more settled, a little more rhythmic. So um, hopefully, hopefully we see a little bit more uh, rhythm from um, her this second round. All right, then let's check in Dockside with Aaron. Hey guys, so Doc with Beatrice Yani. She got five first round, so close. Uh, but what do you think about this round, really? Well, I'll start again at 13 and try to have the 11 headwind and probably try to run it this time. Yeah, so I noticed the wind's a little up and down, like now it's kind of settled down. You know, when we were looking at uh, the first pass before, it was a little a little more windy. Um, so you get what you're thinking coming into the gates. Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. You, you want to be fast on your gate. So this gate is a little bit weird. So... I'll focus on that and try to have more speed that I can. Nice. All right. Well, good luck, Beatrice. Thank you. Have fun. Ski well. Back to you guys. You can you can kind of see there when John's uh, t-shirt and Ali's hair. It's it's windy. Um, I think I I dropped down after that first pass and said to uh, Manuel, I was like, it's a good job the wind's not coming the other way, because if it was coming all the way down that big open lake down there, but. Um, the wind's definitely going to pay a f play a factor today, and it'll be interesting to see if any girls change those um, those start speeds. All right, Taylor Wolsey, second pass. Mateo, go. Yeah, a little bit of a wobbly one, and I must say, like the gate on the way back is a little strange, but it looks like she's back in the rhythm. Coming around four, still looks like she's still trying to find you know where to stand on the ski. You know, like it's. Um, it's her first big tournament in a while, so as you know well, Rob, when you don't ski for a while and you get back, you know, finding the spot of the ski even is a just, Even just one off-season, I'm coming back shaking, like, do I remember how to do this? Right, but um, <clears throat> no, went through the 13, coming back at 12, headwind. The tricky bit about the wind here is that we are in such a narrow body of water that you can't really see the, the effect of it, right? Like on the water, it still looks flat. You can mm -hmm. see it from the webcast. Mm -hmm. But uh, on the body, there is definitely wind. And the second you pull out for the gates, you'll, you'll realize. That's a question for you. I, I like that, actually. I never kind of, I kind of noticed it a little bit. I was fortunate the wind kind of died on me a little bit. Um, so I didn't quite get that sensation. It's been flat the last few days. Do you tend to prefer a situation where the water is very rough, like on a big lake, but the wind's actually not that strong on your body? Or a situation like this where it's pretty protected, there's a lot of wind on the body. Swiss Pro comes to mind a lot. Um, yeah. There's a lot of wind on the body, but the water's pretty flat. Because for me, I, I, I like body and flat water, but I don't know what, what, your, what your take on that one is. Yeah, I'm, I'm more of like the, the other side, right? Like I'd rather see the water move a little bit, but like not being affected on the yeah. body so much, like tailwind as opposed to headwind. Yeah. Um, but you know, we are experienced. We need to figure it out before getting in the water and, yeah. and sort it out. Oh, that's okay. We have Taylor Woolsey here coming in 35, half at 35 in the first round. Looks a little shaky out there, but let's hope she can shake off the nerves and put out a little bit of a score here. The gate pullout looked uh, looked a lot better this time around, and uh, she get all oh, she gets past that mental block there around buoy number one, but she's round number three. She's oh, and she just two and a half. Just in simplest terms, she looks scared to move forwards. She yeah. looks like obviously the she the ski bit a little aggressively on her in that uh, in that round one, and just looks like she's not trusting the front of the ski to move through that turn, so she's ending up on the tail kind of everywhere, and um, as we all know, that's not an easy place to be, especially when you're in your first pro event in, in quite a few years, but. Yeah, and that's the challenge, right? Like, you you ski the first round, tip of the ski bites a lot, one ball, what are you gonna do second round? Try to avoid that, mm -hmm. and then the challenge is after the first two passes, go, okay, I'm, I'm away from that, now I just yeah. need to ski. And yeah. it seemed like, 
even at this gate approach, he didn't really trust the front, the front bellwell of the ski. Yeah. Um, stayed conservative. Yeah, and that's I think that's for me. I get I I get it relatively commonly. I get a little bit oh scared of the front, don't want to blow the fin, all those kind of bad thoughts that come in, and that's when I just ski my worst. When I don't let myself rotate, don't let myself be aggressive back under the line. You can see here, she had a solid one, but just did not want to let that tail move through. Um, didn't want to use the front of the ski. She did use it there and just couldn't quite hold it. But she's she's in the final, she knows that, so she's just trying to get a little bit of confidence out there um, and put up a big score. But there we see the leaderboard. You see um, Taylor there with the bottom, but hey, she's made the final no matter what, so um, just trying to feel things out for that third round. All right, there we see Alicia Bagnoli uh, uh, in a rather pensive uh, mood and state of mind, getting ready for, uh, for round two. There's, uh, there's Ali, uh, Ali Garcia, who comes to us out of Horizon West in, uh, in the Orlando area of, uh, of Florida. And I don't, I don't know what they're waiting up on at the moment. Be interesting to hear from you, Mateo. Obviously, with your your background in um, in school, is this is obviously a very energetic situation, and today is not even remotely close to from what I hear what it's going to be like tomorrow and tomorrow afternoon for the final. So obviously, for example, Freddie and Nate were still on that dock. George is going absolutely wild when Will runs his 41. Just the whole place is rocking. And for us as skiers, we're not kind of used to this. There's music, there's live DJs, there's people on the dock taking photos, um, saying, well done, big job, all this kind of stuff. If you're the kind of skier that maybe doesn't like that, that doesn't, I love it. But if you're the kind of skier like the, the Pato font, headphones on, likes to be in the zone, what kind of things can you do to, to help this? Like you see Alicia there trying to focus. It's windy, it's loud. What, right. Any kind of tips for that? Well, I mean, I think, uh, you know, you have to find a way to collect yourself for a little bit right um, and there are opportunities here you have to walk a little bit you have to you know separate yourself from the rest <laughs> of the mayhem the town. <laughs> but then I think that if you embrace it you know yeah. then you're fine and then as, as people can see on the webcast we get a little half a pass down away from the music away yeah. from the from the noise to recollect ourselves for like yeah. a minute so yeah. really maximize that yeah uh, but I think that if you get in the groove of it and Tony you remember last year we had people dancing on the dock like it felt like you had to go through a dancing crown in a club to just get to the little mat where to put your yeah. ski on and no normally on a ski dock that normally on a, a pro tournament the dock is the last place anyone is they're down the because ski docks are always at the end of the lake yeah correct. so people are in the middle if they're watching and like and you know it's not the most watched sport in the world so here to have to fight your way into the dark, people getting in the way, and I'm like, ah, it's great. I love it. I love it too, man. The only place that has reminded me of Moomba before is here. How yeah. it's people who don't have any really idea what's going on. They're just here for the crowd. I mean, this has been advertised all the way across town. Um, so it's really cool to see. And I, from what I hear, I mean, I drive around. Today, George, yeah, George is there. Yeah, everywhere. And today wasn't massively advertised. And it's so insane to ski the to see the amount of passion that this country has for this sport, you yeah. know? And everyone here today, I believe, is a skier. They've come from all the lakes around Greece to watch the event. They're so proud to have professional skiers here this weekend, and um, and it's a lot of fun to be here, but there's some challenges to it. Oh, for sure, for sure. But you'll see, like, when they told you today that you, you oh, don't know what's coming tomorrow, they oh, are yeah. correct. I can imagine, I can imagine. No, it's fun. It's a, it's a really fun event. Like when I, when I saw it back on the calendar, I was yeah. very very excited. Well, I was, and and you know what? How the whole calendar's worked out this year. I, I've done every Europe event through the wrap, through the roof, and I love all the events. I'm very grateful to be able to go to every event and to be able to kind of live this life. But these last two, there was something special in my mind for this. I'm glad this is the way the calendar worked out because I knew that here was going to put on a special special show. Yeah. I know, I heard the stories from last year. He said he's going to go bigger. No one believed that what it was going to be last year and it was bigger than it was. And he said he's going to go bigger again tomorrow. So I'm mega excited for this. And then Italy doing some touristing. Yeah. I'm going to get some good food, some good ice cream. And um, I'm really excited for these next two tournaments coming up that will be webcasted on TWBC. Yeah, Tony oh, yes. will be there. That yeah. was a professional okay. level plug, just saying. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So... Still continuing here at the Caiaphas uh, Pro Battle 2023. Glad to have the pleasure of your company. Okay, we seem to be setting off again. Even I can barely hear what's going on. When we're 
We're like 300 feet away from the music and it's already dinging. Um, but we see Ali Garcia getting in. Unfortunate little fall this morning. Um, she's been skiing very well all over Europe. I'm not sure on the stats of where she ended up exactly, but um, she's been skiing incredibly well. Just missed that handle on that 1 of 38 in that first round. So um, hopefully she can get that figured out here today. Interesting to see whether she's going to stick at 28 and give herself that th um, 38 tail, or is she going to take the 32 start and take the 38 head? Who knows, but I'm sure we will find out in just a moment. There is uh, Beatriz Sierra just trying to get into the vibe, the whole vibe of the situation around the around the dock. Is uh, you no, know, she's a. Uh, She's uh, been uh, been known to uh, to partake in uh, in the whole club scene a little bit, hasn't she? Oh man, she's from Rome, man. Like so, <laughs> you know, there, there's no way you can get away from it, right? Um, but you know, I feel like in the last two years she's been able to balance everything out, and I, her skiing is showing, right? Last yeah. year she had a couple of podiums, skiing very strongly, and I was a little loud. Oh yeah. <laughs> Guys, I don't know if you can hear the music we hear, but this is unbelievable. Check out that live DJ set on top of a van with ski pictures in the back. I mean, wow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we need to tell the guy to move his head a little bit, though. I couldn't watch the skin on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, this event, it, I mean, I hope that the energy is coming across on this webcast. Um, but you see there where we drop, where she drops there, pretty silent. And again, the only place that reminds me of is Moomba, how it's busy, busy, busy on the dock. But um, here we go, Ali Garcia, 13 meters, so 32 off. She's going to be taking that 11 meters or 38 headwind. Um, so let's see, beautiful little hook up there. With one ball, smooth out of two. Ooh, buttery out of three. She's aggressive, nice. on time. And that was a very, very... That was, that was a 32 that I would say was ran by someone who goes out at 32 a lot. Yes, you know, you can kind of see the difference when someone goes, there's a 28, kind of, oh, we should start at 32 this round. That was the 32 of someone who knows how to run a 32 off the dock, who knows how to go out there with intensity and looked very, very, very relaxed. Yeah, and I think now, you know, like, uh, it used to be that, like, let's say for pro men, starting at 35 would be something you did in tournament at times to play the wind. But now with a lot of these tournament formats, uh, we have to start at 35, yeah. right? Like, ladies have to start at 32. So you have to become very flexible with how you approach your set, yeah. right? Whether it is like a slowly walk myself into the set or, well, it's 32, let's say, for Ali, uh, I have to start going immediately and that three ball showed. Yeah, yeah you can see she kept that intensity there. But it's in, I, when I was a kid, I hated. I did a nationals once where I did two times seven passes because I couldn't go out at 28, so I went out at 15 off and got all the way to one at 39 and did seven passes twice in a row. Like growing up, I detested going out on short ropes. Hated it. But isn't that a typical like Brit like British thing? It seems it was a typical me. I, yeah, I, I could not you maximize had, I had the like, entry. I had I like did, yeah, I did that too. Entry uh, Vince Turp was not best pleased. I was using a police gas. But here we go. Ali Garcia, 35 <laughs> off. 35. A little bit of a hook up towards the back there, but managing to settle down uh, on uh, on number two. But she's still there. Whoa. There we go. She doesn't run the smoothest of passes out there, but she is quite effective. That wind is going to be pushing right now. It'll be interesting to see how a lot of the how a lot of the ladies deal with that tailwind. A lot of them are going to be very confident on that 35, but if any of them take that 38 tail, if you can get through it, it's going to be a challenge, but it's going to leave you with a very, very nice situation in that headwind. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, we have now a 1 at 10.25. We have a 3.5 at 10.7. And then we have a two at 10.7. So there's a lot of there's a lot of buoys to be run at 10.7 to climb up on that um, on the provisional leaderboard, yeah. which again that will determine the uh, starting place for the final. So these ladies really want to be sure to be like towards the end of the of the starting order for tomorrow's final. Yeah, it's um, it's something as well. And I think in the situation with the ladies. Everything is so closely contested right now, especially in that final. There's a, obviously there's there's Jamie's a little bit maybe the favourite here. Ali's very close to being second favourite, but there's a big clump of ladies around that two at 39. So that's where seeding, especially a lot of them seem to be lefties. Ali's a lefty, Aliche's a lefty. Manol. 
Manon's a lefty. So that two at 39 becomes pretty powerful. So if you can get yourself up on that seeding, if you can get yourself where you know what the deal is, you know what you're going to need to in the final. Some people may not like it, but um, she's going to want to put a big score out for seeding here. So Ali Garcia, 38. Let's see what she can do. All right, here she is, Ali Garcia, round buoy number one, the handle up a little bit high again, but she moves it straight down, straight away, especially here off uh, number three and into approaching oh, number Ali. four. And then just a little bit uh, uh, snappy there uh, towards the end of number four and in the water having scored three and a half. I might have to give her a little bit of stick for that one. She actually looked not bad. She's struggling a little bit with that one, three, five. Um, but I mean the one, I don't know what you think Mateo there, nothing too bad in the two ball, look at that, beautiful. That was a great start and I mean she had a good connection with the line out of three, seemed like her left shoulder dropped in a little bit and couldn't really stand up of the second wake, so you know got a little bit too far ahead of the boat and didn't have the line connection, but seemed like the rhythm was there to, to go down the pass. Yeah, um, I mean she looked pretty good there. I don't really know what happened. Looked like she just couldn't quite hold the pull. Oh, here's my lunch. Oh, yeah. Um, sorry, distracted. Um, and I mean, this two ball, she is a very strong lefty on that two four. Very, very strong lefty. So got out of that three and I thought, boom, she's guaranteed to run this. Guess got a little on the tail there, but. Yeah, see, see how like of the second yeah. whitewash, she was still a little stuck with the left shoulder. Yeah, yeah for sure. And then just that's. Just couldn't quite get free. All right, we're gonna head to the dock. All right, let's check in dock side with Aaron. Oh. Taylor, a bit of a tricky time out there. Um, you know, first tournament back, is, is it like just maybe a little bit of not, uh, maybe being used to this kind of overwhelming environment, especially here, which is kind of a strange place to be anyway with all the music and stuff? Yeah, um, I was going to say to Nate, I never thought I'd ski after him in a competition like this. Being on the dock after three guys running 41 was intense, but this is a fantastic tournament. Um, I'm just getting my sea legs under me, so. And, I mean, you're in the final anyway. This is a seeding round, and, I mean, you'll put it together. You've got another round tomorrow morning, uh, and then the final, uh, you think you can kind of you know, get something together and start moving through and, and, and get, you know, putting pressure on the other guys? Yeah, I, I have... Um, I have the best coaches, and uh, we left one of my coaches back at home, my one-year-old Maximilian. So I'm sort of suffering without him. But uh, he'll coach me up tonight, and we'll be back on the water tomorrow ready to go. Sounds good. And we're going to see you at San Gervasio also in a week's time, right? Yes, you will. Hopefully I'll ski a little better. But um, I'm just I'm so grateful to be out here. So thank you for having me. And we talked yesterday. I mean, you said that one of your reasons for sort of coming back to it and, and training hard and all that sort of stuff in England, which is not an easy place to train, as I know, is because you see there's a future in the sport. You see that there's some excitement. I mean, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I have to say um, what Vince and the team are doing with TWBC is so impressive. It's like watching Formula One. Um, and I, I had to be part of it. So I'm back as a result. And the tour is doing better than ever. When I left, I think the tour had sort of hit a low and um, I decided to focus on my career, but I'm back. You're back. So first of many, uh, congratulations. You're back. The biggest stuff from you in the future. Uh, next round and the final. Back to you guys. All righty. Who do we have here? Alice Bagnoli. 32. Oh, aggressive start again. She's used to going out of this 32. A lot of the ladies have to do this in the finals. So very, very aggressive start, but kind of what I what I like to see yep and you know like you start at a pass that it may be a little shorter than what you normally would would opt for it's headwind so I think Alicia did it perfectly you know you you yeah. start the set as aggressive oh, I love it. you yeah. keep it and then you know you go home with no regrets despite yeah. what the score is no for sure and that's and that's something that I think um, for me is one of the biggest challenges but she her and Ali did it very very well is they're going aggressive, but in the right way. I tend to sometimes, you know, me with our little high hand thing and jazzy hands and all that kind of stuff. Every now and then I'm like, right, get your intensity up and I'll go out and fling off the handle, I'll fly in, I'll be too aggressive, drop shoulders. But she looked aggressive, but controlled, which is awesome to see. Very stacked, very stacked on the yeah. turns. Yeah. I think that's, especially coming off this off season, and I'm sure you'll agree, I think she's, she's kind of developed a nice little style. It's her, it's her own way of skiing. Sometimes the hips end up maybe a little separated, but the way that she stands on that ski 
and the strength that she has into that first wave, I mean, it works well for her. And let's see if it can get her through a 38 off today. I feel that, like, you know, sometimes people combine being aggressive with a lot of body movements, and I don't necessarily think that way. Um, I think that if you are skin aggressive, you have to be in a very good position of yeah. the turns, and I think Alicia is really, really there showing it here. I think she heard me. Those hips are mega up. That's beautiful position there behind the boat. Really nice. Coming out of five and waiting for six ball. 35 tailwind. Yeah, and much I, better this time around. I get the impression with the with the way that Ali and, um, and Alicia have kind of run those 35s, probably windier than it looks. Yep. I think. They obviously, beautiful passes and very, very safe, very sure of what was going to happen, but not the most still passes, you know, not the most rhythmic, rhythmic passes, but still a good pass. He should give her a little bit of confidence coming into this 38 off. Ooh. Oh, it took a big old hit there. But looking, look, but looking in good shape there for the majority of this run. Uh, got a little bit thrown down course. But I tell you what, I mean, that's that's no real deal breaker because as long as you're able to uh, to get some good residual angle at the end and be able to hold it across the back of the boat, then then you can afford to uh, to let the ski slide a little bit. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, she's hitting the boat at the right time, and whenever that time comes, she's making sure that she's stacked off the turn. Um, whatever happens sometimes out of the ball, people get shocked about like changes in position. Sometimes it just ends up being noise because the boat is not there with you yet, right? Especially at these shorter lines. And speaking of shorter lines, I see Alicia here at 11. Take it away, Tony. 11.25 meters. Alicia Bagnoli takes a good hit off buoy number one. Round number two, Ooh. she's still there. The ski is still driving away. It's what round buoy three. number three. Look at her go, round number four. Keeping the flow going. Round number five, and oh! no! Oh, she is in the weeds. I think she's okay. She's, I think that was a, th oh boy. I think she's just stuck in the weeds. Very, oh, oh, uh oh. No. I think she is okay. Those weeds are incredibly <laughs> either the, Either that or they've just released the Kraken. <laughs> yeah, okay. This was yeah, a surprise. She's, good. she's put a hand up. That was a beautiful pass. Just saying, 10-year-old me would be bawling in tears right now. If anyone knew me as a child, that was my worst nightmare, which has been dropped in the middle of the weeds. 100% I thought there was some big animals in there. <laughs> I mean, let's right. look at this again. I thought she was in a better rhythm, better position than, than her 12. Even even like two ball where she broke a little bit forward with the waist. Notice how she never stopped moving, right? Yeah. Carried momentum to the right and basically done after three. I think, you know, maybe to my, to do my profession, I think at a five, she might have had a little bit too many thoughts. Yeah. You know, she's in a great shape here. And then it doesn't quite connect. Stuck. Or, yeah, I mean, she she didn't, it looked like she didn't fully grip onto the handle, and then when the pole came on, it just pinged out of the I, hand. I get the impression from someone who does this a little bit as well, um, I get the impression she just maybe pushed on the ski a little bit too early at that backside, but look at that, money one ball, two ball, someone tripped her up. <laughs> but like you say, she's carrying speed, she's carrying angle, and the three ball keeps her in it, so she gets a very far back into the pass. She stays calm into four, gets a beautiful hook up out of four. I think Tony might be right. I think she might have missed grab. Maybe. I think she got it. I feel like oh. here, there. You see she pushed on that ski. That left shoulder goes. Um, I can't, I've done that one or two times, a few times. It kind of comes out of nowhere and it's a little bit scary, but luckily she's okay. And she's maybe got half of Greece's weeds on her. But, yeah, and I think, um, and I think she's, she'll be uh, upon retrospect glad that those weeds were there because I mean if there was a clear path all the way to the shore I think she would ended up in the forest yeah she, she carried a lot of speed when she popped the handle that's for sure well uh, obviously, obviously she'll be uh, good news bad news better better than the previous round uh, unfortunately not able to uh, to run the pass so it is a five buoy count it's uh, 
it's it ties with Aliche's uh, uh, score from uh, from round one right now. So, in all, in in the battle between the two Italians, uh, uh, Aliche uh, Bertrizia Yani uh, basically needs to uh, to outscore uh, uh, Aliche's score from round one. Correct. So, I believe round one for Aliche was four. So if yeah. Bea gets a piece of five, then she would be ahead of Alice uh, into round three tomorrow. Indeed. Of course, that's not that that's uh, that's not withstand the fact that uh, Beatrice Yani is pretty much in the in the same uh, same dilemma. It's a decent score, but you know you're close enough to run the path, so why not? All right, let's check in Doc's side with Freddie Elizabeth. Uh, you had a good uh, a good first round. You ran your 11. Uh, didn't make a huge dent at 10.75, but have you got a, got a plan this time? I'm going to stick to my normal plan. I'm going to go out at 14. I know that gives me a tailwind 11, um, but that's what I've always been doing. So I've been doing at home. So I'd rather take my chances there and then give myself possibly a headwind 10.7 uh, and see where I can go uh, from there. So I feel, I feel good about it, but it's, it's up and down. We'll see. I might regret those words in a little bit. <laughs> It's definitely up and down, but I mean, the way you ran that 11 in the first round, I mean, you, you had a little bit of win there, I feel like, and you still kind of, you ran it pretty clean. Um, anyway, let's talk about the European stops, right? So you, you, you're on number four, right? Four. And a little bit of different flavor at every single one. You know, we've been at Spain, we've been in Monaco, we've been in France, and now here. What do you, what do you feel is the most different about this place? Um, we're back to it being hot. It was hot in Spain. It's hot here. It's a dry heat. Um, the salt water is different. Brackish water. I've never skied in brackish water, so that was a cool learning curve, just how the ski sits, um, how it'll commit. Um, it's also pretty forgiving. Um, you can kind of pull along and get away with it. Um, Stevie and I were talking about it earlier. It feels like it's really not over till you're swimming in the water, um, so that's pretty cool. And I think we saw that with the men's skiing. A lot of great skiing. Congratulations. Really big scores. So um, I think they call it the campus battle for a reason. Stay in it. Amazed you didn't mention the atmosphere. We hear could barely hear each other. Uh, we're going to go back to the action. Thank you very much. Good luck. Back to you guys. Alrighty, you meet us here, enjoying some moussaka. Very good. Okay, yes, and uh, apologies once again. We've experienced a power power outage, and uh, but you have not missed an, a thing at all. Uh, we uh, we we experienced a power outage during uh, Beatrice Yani's opening run, and she'll have the opportunity to replicate that run right from the get-go. So. Uh, you're back here with live coverage. Apologies for the uh, for the loss of uh, power. Uh, something uh, beyond our control, obviously, but uh, we will be back very, very soon with live coverage. Vince is currently out back shooting the person that plugged their phone into the, <laughs> to the app. Or turn the refrigerator on. Turn the, someone, someone's in a lot of trouble. Hopefully it's not me. Usually it is. We are having some minor technical difficulties here, but we seem to be resolved. Vince is running around like a headless chicken, trying to resolve them. Um, I believe the boat is very soon going to be heading back up and down. But I just received news, or, well, not just, but that men's final today was, was what was it, Matteo? The first time that 41 has been ran three consecutive times in one round. So, obviously, Will went out first, ran it, Freddie went out and ran it, and Nate went out and ran it. Um, and, I mean... Kind of a crazy stat that what? It, 
in tournament round, is it 12 people, 11 people have ran? I think it's 12 people. 12 people, yeah. Have ran. Obviously, then there's Dane and Tigas on top of that that have done it in the runoffs. But essentially, 12 people have ran it in a head to head round, and we just had three of them. So, a quarter of the people that have ever run 41 in the entire world, it was run three times consecutive today. That's, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, absolutely bonkers, wouldn't you say? And I mean, it's. And I mean, it's just testament really to the site here at uh, Kaiaphis, you know, and the, and the whole deal where with this uh, with with this competition, the excitement, the buzz, you know, the music and all of that, you know, it kind of, you know, just just adrenalizes the whole situation. Yeah, and I think it's it's an odd mix. I don't know about you, Matteo, how you felt out there, but it's brackish water, which we only really ski on a Moomba, and even then, it's like it's like someone spilt the salt shaker in the end. It's nothing too crazy. Whereas here, it's like every time I get in the water and I put my gloves on with my mouth, I, I have a routine, everyone does it. Yep. And it tastes vile. It's like, whoa, every time I forget. And every time I get in the water and just like, just kind of let a bit of water slips in your mouth, let a bit of water in your mouth, everyone kind of does it. And every time I say, whoa, it's like, it's literally like the sea in there. Yeah, look, I think, you know, quarter people in the history that ran 41 did it today in consecutive oh, rounds, and right? So time. that brings me a, a few ideas, obviously. Tremendous driving, right? So, <laughs> very precise driving by Manuel. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, totally it's another testament to the level of men and women slalom skiing this year. Mm -hmm. I mean, even just during through, through this European stretch, just the cut to make the final has been unbelievable, right? Oh, yeah. um, and then the site. The yeah. site has, has been gorgeous uh, yeah. forever, honestly. I used to come here to ski an yeah. overall tournament where when, when I was a kid, and scores were already very good then. Yeah, that's. Um, so, no, a lo lot of things fell into place today to see those 41 offs being run by three skiers consecutively. All right, here we have, we are back up and running with Beatrice Aini. Yanni. Pronu pronunciation lessons out there after this. But here we go, 32 Yanni. Coming in, one ball. Interesting little, I'm sure everyone says it every single time, but interesting to see a ski with the wrong hands around I don't know why that is maybe she had some elbow issues or you may know that a little bit better but I do as a matter of does fact. it beautifully and um, that was a beautiful 32 off there All right. Okay, folks, uh, seeing Beatrice Yanni come into the course, and uh, the thing that I mentioned in uh, round one in respect to uh, how she holds the handle, considering that she's right foot forward, she actually sustained a, a pretty nasty injury uh, as a result of a crash that she took in the, the 2011 European Championships, which took place in, uh, in Rochetto. And uh, she'd been battling against that injury, uh, uh, skiing the conventional way, which would, would be left hand up. Uh, right foot forward, but to uh, realize that it was going to be a, a, a no-go situation, so she decided to switch her uh, handle grips and uh, to relieve the pain up in her shoulder, and uh, she's been skiing that way ever since. That must be a rough transition. Well, it was, and, you know, just to add a bit more context, she even, uh, so she had tendinitis, elbow tendinitis, like a lot of us yeah. tend to struggle with, but to the point that she had to stop skiing, got surgery to fix it, came back and still, still that thing was flaring up. Yeah. So she made the decision to change grip, to go to a curved handle and uh, take her time to relearn this new body position. Yeah. And man, last year she had some of their best skiing oh, she ever. Good. She kinda, I feel like 2021 was kind of my first year out on, on tour. And I think, it was, was it 
it was around the time after COVID. I think there was a few people obviously did that. That she kind of came back on tour, and um, I didn't really know who she was. She's older than me, obviously, so I hadn't seen her growing up. And she came out like a storm and just looked amazing. Yeah, I mean, Yanni, obviously, a, a family from Italy yeah. with an insane amount yeah, yeah. of skiers over the years between Fabio, Matteo, uh, Valentina. So, Bea, the, the latest one of the of the bunch. Yeah. Coming in at 38 off, 11 to 5 meters. Got a Tony. All right then, electing to go with Bravo 1 on the zero off, uh, setting a good extension around buoy number one. This is a 12 meter line. Look at her go. Round number three, continuing to, and inside buoy number four. But that, was that 11 or 12? 11. 11, so that puts her behind the eight ball so far as a battle between herself and Alicia Bagnoli is concerned, with a score of a three there. Almost looked like she never really reached full reach on that three ball. Like yeah. she keeps that hand kind of tight and never really gets that movement away finished. And always looks just a little bit straight at that one, three, five there. Yeah, and you know, that's that's the characteristic of the reverse grip, right? Like you saw her one ball wasn't the best, yeah. but then, you know, right palm up, right foot forward, two ball, you can just bring it, yeah. which she did and she needed to. But then the challenge is to control that handle position into yeah. three and unfortunately, when you don't feel that you can quite make it, you're just gonna stay a little conservative with the reach. Yeah. And um, that unfortunately didn't pay out a three ball. So, sounds like the final score is three, which then puts her, as we were discussing, Tony, uh, right behind Alicia Bagnoli for the time being. Yeah. Um, as, a as a reminder for everyone, there's a third round tomorrow morning of qualifying, and those three rounds will be used to determine who is in the final and obviously the seeding into the final. And you know there is there is one other skier that I know of that actually uh, ski that that, uh, that actually skied uh, for, for for many many seasons and uh, put up some uh, some impressive performances in in tournaments uh, during that time using the using the switch grip uh, even though he was left foot forward he went uh, left hand up uh, for the majority of his career. Can I guess? Me. Oh, okay, okay. Well, at those times, Tony, you, you'll be able to speak it better than Rob and I can. There was a bit of an even split. Like, some people were left palm up, left foot forward. Some people were right palm up, left foot forward. I know Mike was the wrong way around. Well, he, sw he had the same thing um, as Beatrice. She kind of had elbow issues, so he swapped, went back, and he changes everything every other day. But um, he ended up swapping going forwards, backwards a lot back in the day, I believe. Well, there's some we're going to see on the water later on today, Carlo Alice, who also has had struggles with that. And I remember there was a time that he was so accustomed to switch that we skied it together one day. First set, he skied left palm up. Second set, right palm up, same scores, into 41. Like, he got so accustomed to change that he could switch between one set and the next. Wow. So, pretty impressive. But, yeah, it's, uh, I guess, you know, there is a consensus now that there is a quote-unquote correct way to do it um, but sometimes you know you you have to do what you can to just be able to sustain the load and ski yeah. all right then so there's our leaderboard uh, based upon the results on round one and uh, the results that we've had so far in round two uh, there's, there's obviously that that tie with a five boo it's 11.25 beers by Beatrice Yanni and Alicia Bagnoli but Alicia Bagnoli has the upper hand because of a superior backup score from uh, from from uh, from the previous round. I'm incredibly excited to see these last. Is it four ladies that we have left? Um, yeah, yeah, we have four, four ladies. I mean, all of them. I, I believe it was Monaco, if I'm correct, or Botas, where Elizabeth skied out of her mind. I think she got three at 39. Looked very, very good every round, and then she had just a little bit of a slump. Missed a few 38s here and there. Um, and I don't think made that final for Lacanau, but she has looked fantastic in moments this trip. So I'm excited to watch and see if this trip is going to be one of those. I believe she missed a gate in the first round at 39. Correct. Um, so, so let's see what she can kind of do this round. She obviously got through that 30. She got through that 38. Did anybody catch the start speed on that one? Yeah, 32 off. 32 so off. this was a 13. Opted to take that uh, 11 headwind like the ladies before her. Uh, and just, you know, because we were talking about Taylor, just I'm mentioning since they use the same ski, you can tell that like 
even Liz is like not rushing to jump onto the tip uh, of the ski into the ball, but then she just seems to be able to find that sweet spot a little bit earlier, like just a little bit before yeah. the boat the buoy comes. And so far, her turns have been spot on. Yeah, it seems like that is not a fire alarm, by the way. That's just music. <laughs> um, it seems like Elizabeth always has done. I mean, on the days of the good, she always sat a little bit back as well. Um, so I believe that's kind of her style anyway. She probably has it set up a little more bindings back, fin back kind of situation um, so that she doesn't necessarily need to use that tip. And I believe she rotates a little more on the, he on the, on the heels. And I find it really interesting in a situation that I know the difference between me um, versus, say, John and Will. John and Will really rely on that tip use a lot more. And when they try my ski, they're like, ooh, tip doesn't feel quite as safe. But I right. love that feeling, hey? So it depends on who is who. So she has now come back on 13, so we were incorrect. She's going for that 38 tail. Um, this is going to be a tailwind 32 right here. 13 meters looking good. A little back at a two, but lovely rotation on that off onside. And uh, Elizabeth Montavon, who's uh, whose style and technique has, uh, has been uh, the subject of much criticism, you know, in the last... Uh, last season or two uh, tends to ride the back of the ski a little bit more than most and we'll discuss that uh, going forward uh, when we uh, return from uh, our dockside interview. Here a frustrating round for you there maybe a little bit unlucky with some wind it's up and down now there's nothing five minutes ago it was really strong. Yeah it was really strong actually when I was at 12 I was like okay this is nice but then I started at 11 I had a great start but then the wind really came up so I couldn't pull that strong. It's funny because, I mean, that's what happens when the wind's up and down like this. I'm sitting on the dock, I see you coming to Boy 2 watching, and suddenly there's a big gust goes past. It must have stalled you big time at 2 there. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's luck. When the wind is like that, it's just luck. Ah, uh, well, another round tomorrow and then the final. I'm sure you'll do great. Uh, go get recovered. Ready for tomorrow. Back to you guys. All right, then. So... When yeah. I mentioned our latest point of discussion, you kind of rolled your eyes a little bit there uh, with, insofar as Elizabeth Montavon is concerned. I think people jump to give this woman stick wherever, wherever they kind of wherever they kind of can. But I mean, as someone who has a slightly weird style myself, hey, whatever works. You know, she's, she's working on, she's pretty late to the sport in terms of the professional level. And I can see the way her style's developed in the last few years, I really like. So here we go at 35 off, 12 meters. I mean, that onside is just rocking right now. Oh, there you go. There's the offside turn as well. Oh! And uh, got, got in a real deep on that one and just couldn't really hold on to it. And that's where I think the one bit for me that if I was going to pick at straws would be she's very rushed to alignment. I think that's... She, she has said a lot in the past. Whenever I've talked to her, she said she... She's always indicated how important alignment is to her. But to me, she just kind of rushes the alignment over rotation. So even though that two ball is beautiful, you see here, she rushes to alignment, i.e. tries to get the hips up and set to that handle. But in that movement, ends up pushing a lot on those feet, not allowing that ski to come into the line. So yes, she's aligned, but the ski is still pointing at the bottom. Yeah, it's just like there's a little bit too much pressure on the ski before the line is sustaining her, yeah, right? Yeah, well, without the angle head, that's, yeah. But, I mean, you can't really get a better one ball. Let's be interested in the hurt from her and see if the wind maybe played a factor, just slowed her down, ended up falling over with pushing off that handle a touch. But I think that's just one of those that she's going to have to try to forget. She knows she's in the final, so let's head to the dock and see who we have. Ali, not the best round of your life. You looked actually in good shape and then it just, it just didn't happen, right? Yeah, I felt um, pretty solid. I think that I've been riding kind of a high, had a really good couple weekends, and uh, luckily I am able to ski again tomorrow and hopefully get my feet back under me. Just tell us a bit about the vibe here. It's way different to what we're used to, right? It's absolutely crazy. Um, the music, the people, it's, it's really awesome to see so many people on the shore supporting us, here to watch. It's, it's really cool. Should we have every event like this, or is this like a nice one-off? I mean, I'm young, so I can do this every weekend, but who knows? I'm old. I, I'm good. We, let's do it every weekend. I'm, I can still get into some partying. All right. Back to you guys. Well... I don't know if you could hear, interestingly there, obviously the, the wind coming through that mic. 
Um, so I think we're kind of sat in this little little cove back here. I can't even see the lake. I can see the trees ruffling. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that wind is playing a factor out there. It looks relatively strong, but I do believe these last three girls probably aren't going to be rocked too badly by it. It's going to be a little bit of a challenge for that 39 tail, but I'll be interested to watch. All right, then. So, uh, skier uh, about to take to the water for a first pass is uh, Manon Castard, who's, uh, who's been largely absent from the sport over the uh, the last couple of seasons. Uh, wanted, wanted, wanted to take a little bit of a mental break away from all the hustle of traveling. Now, now Matteo, a doctor in sports psychology, can attest to, uh, to, to that need and that desire. What's your, what's your read on this? Well, this is a life encompassing sport. Like there's no like you're spending the whole day at the lake, you're traveling the world to attend these events. Sometimes the work or ski life balance can be a little off, you know, and uh, there's no right way to get it back. Uh, Mano decided to um, take a little bit of time off of the sport to reorganize herself and uh, we're also happy to just see her back on the water. All right then, so uh, Manon Kostar, 14.25 meters. Ordinarily in the past, we've uh, been accustomed to seeing her go straight in at 30 meters, no matter what hell or high water. But uh, yeah, I, I disagree with you there, Tony, because I believe, obviously we have, oh, we're gonna head to the dock and we will talk about this after. Indeed. Ali, we keep trading places, interviewing each other, so uh, welcome to your turn. Um, you're thinking strategy. You had a perplexed face a second ago. Where are you thinking? I'm just kind of looking at the wind. I mean, I want to give myself the best shot, obviously, um, at 10-7. So it's a pretty strong tailwind right now. I guess I'm just kind of sitting here looking, thinking if I want to take it in the headwind or not. Um, I think it's going to be a last-minute decision. You already have the second best score of the day, and quite a comfortably the second best score of the day, ahead of third uh, by, I think, a boy and a half. So you've got to feel pretty good about that. Maybe, I mean, not to put anything in your head, maybe it's worth going for that, you know, take that nice headwind and run the damn thing. Yeah, I mean, I think this is kind of the round to uh, experiment and play, so maybe worth it. I think it's a pretty strong headwind, uh, so maybe it would help. Yeah, I I don't know. <laughs> I'll leave you to think about it, but I, I think it's meant to be flat, flat, flat tomorrow, so there shouldn't be any strategy tomorrow. Um, we'll see. Good luck with your decision and with your skiing. See you later. Back to you guys. So, so for me, Manon's kind of been the one, obviously you have your Regina, Whitney, Jamie that stand out to go out at 32, but she's been kind of the one that I see likes that 28. She likes that time. And just look at the early rhythm that she sets here. She's pretty up course. She's incredibly early and swingy on these early passes. Swingy, and which is a euphemism for backsliding. No, not even, no, that, that, see that, I feel like is one of the biggest misconceptions in the sport is um, swingy is more to do with before the boy. It's more in front in front of the boy off that second side, creating the swing so that you can actually rotate through the backside. Um, because everyone loves to focus on a turn, but if you're straight at the boy, you can never turn. So um, I'll catch you. I think she likes to set that rhythm, likes to set that high swing and hopefully keep it as she goes all the way down to 39. All right there. So, uh, so Matteo, uh, looking forwards, we got uh, uh, Manon Kastar out in the water. Uh, she uh, she scored a four at 10.75 meters. A two, a two, uh, a two a in the two, first round. A two in the first round at 10.75 meters. So, what what has she got to realistically do here to uh, to get to get off to a decent start enough to run that pass, which we've uh, normally seen her do uh, in in years past? Well, you know, like. I've seen her ski in Lacano. She had a pretty good, like a strong ground there. To me, it's just reps, you know. Like I, it's it's impressive to see how little her confidence, her style has changed since she's been back. I think it's just a matter of doing what she's doing. Go to tournaments, get your reps in at 39 in a pressure situation, and I'm sure that sooner than later we're we're gonna see that pass going down for her as well. All right, let's have a look and see. In the Lacanau Cup, uh, she uh, she scored a uh, one a score of four at ten point seven five meters. This is eleven point two five meters. At uh, twelve, I believe. Fourteen, yeah, twelve meters. I beg your pardon. So she'll be coming back at eleven point two five meters on the strength of that run on twelve there, Rob. 
Yeah, that was a very, very nice pass. And I think that's where that's where she comes in well with going out at those early alignments. She keeps the rhythm and she runs these early passes incredibly well. She dominates these early passes in comparison to, say, Ali and Jamie, where if you make Jamie guard at 28, she moans about it a lot. And she kind of wakes this, that, this. But obviously, you can see she swings up incredibly early on that boy. Whether that helps her on her shorter lines, it's probably up for a pretty lengthy discussion, but she skis incredibly early on these early passes, just waiting on that boy. And yeah, she looks very, very good out there, dealing with that headwind very well. You know, like going back to what Freddie was uh, kindly suggesting to Ali, namely, you know, go for it and get your 39 head. I'm assuming that's what was going on in Manon's mind as well, right? Like, these ladies know they're in the final. She's, as of right now, third in seeding. Why not try and get 39 head and get your shot at running it, you know? Yeah, that's very fair. I had not done the maths on the, the head tail situation going on here. Um, you know what would be what you know what'd be interesting is if we have that drone like fly directly overhead and give it and give us like a a, a skier's a path of view of uh, what this what this would look like. Here we go. 38 11.25 minutes. Round number one and two. Good for three, keeping the handle down nice and low. This is number four. Dropping in hard on number five. And for the second time of asking, 11.25 meters under a bell. That was an incredibly well ran 38. Ma not, well managed. Not quite sure what happened at th with three ball. She did a little circle with the handle, a little dancer. Um, but looking very strong. I mean, that wind is up. We can see the trees by the lake. It's not the easiest uh, wind down there for that tailwind, but I mean, very little slack, very little problem. Yeah. Just looking very, very good up there. Well, here's that number three, Mateo, coming up. Yeah. Wait, 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 steering the soup, you know, not something, you not something that we tend to see for Manon, really, but stirring the soup, winding down the window, it looked incredible, I mean, again, that rhythm from the 28 to here, it's the exact same, intense, early, and very wide, which is great to see. And we did see on the, on, on the screen before, Manon skiing for Conley Skis, when it comes to the ski brand leaderboard, yeah. uh, kindly sponsored by the TWBC crew. Um, managed to get some points for Connolly last week in Lacano. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm sure, you know, ready to add more to that this weekend in um, Kayafas. Kayafas. She, yes. needs to, she needs to get on the phone to her teammates and tell them to, to fly over and do some tournaments. Need That's to, correct. Need to support her because she's doing a fantastic job right now. Um, so let's see, 39 the big, 39 lovely little head breeze. Got that boat set to A2, ready to see what she can do here. Quite a long run into that gate. Give her time to relax. Here we go. Let's see what she can do here. Nice Dropping gate in. there. Good one. Come on, let's see if she can keep moving at the two ball. She gets it. She's still in this pass. A little narrow three. Is she going to get across to four? She does. Can she get the full four? Whoa. Oh, no. no. She three and a half. Cannot. So that puts it tied with Ali Nicholson right there. She's going to regret. She could regret that S10. We'll see how it all falls out in the next two rounds. But... Um, I thought she was going to have that full four there, then kind of the same thing would happen at 3 at 38. Let's take a look at this again, Matea. Yeah, I mean, to me, that looked like a little strong, solid gate, a little broken into one, but like with the connection of the line, ready to get the pendulum going. You know, a little, a little long into two, and then here at three, even more broken. And, you know, like when, for someone like her who's used to get super stuck out of the turn, without rushing alignment, as we talked as we talked before, like when you start to get a few turns like that, it becomes hard, right? And then the S turn didn't, didn't pay off. the handle on the S turn. Gotta I, I keep think the she might have gotten caught up in the weeds a little bit there, as a matter of fact. She just got that hand on. It's, it's hard because you feel pretty unbalanced out there on an S turn, but you see she put the hand on early, and at the end, essentially, the, the whole point of the S turn is to go inside, outside, to carry, sh shut down your speed, and then a big turn at the end of it. So she rushed back onto that handle we see here, obviously the tail out of three, gets the four, does a good job there, puts the hand on, and now she's given herself a two-handed turn. Uh, so she has nothing to rotate into, nothing to get any ski, and then just gets stuck on the tail. And you said it well, right? Like to, to do a proper S turn, you have to first realize you're not going to get out of that buoy, and then truly 
point yourself to the boat with no line in order to start slowing down yeah. in the way out. And it seemed like Mano almost thought, ah, maybe I can turn, maybe not. And that's what kept her too, for too long on the side of the boat and not being able to come back in before the boat guides of five ball. Right. I'm going to have to run. I, we're having such a great time on this deck. Yes, absolutely. That I, I missed my teammates, but I will... Um, be back soon thank you very much everyone all right then well thanks a lot robert and uh, and if you guys out there want to want to be in a chance of winning a ski like manon's then uh, you can enter the uh the skier audience prize waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play to uh, to be in a chance to win yourself either a conley or a d3 slalom ski let's check in on duck side but on uh Second tournament back after a little while off. I mean, that's good skiing. You've got to be pretty happy, right? Yeah, no, I'm excited. Uh, I was a little bit worried about Tailwind 11, to be honest, which I shouldn't be, but it was pretty strong. It died down when I was skiing, so it worked out. And then 10, I really liked the starts. My sub 3 was a bit narrow, but feels like it's not super far, so it's exciting. I mean, I think you should give yourself more credit. It, it, it was windy during your 11. It died off a tiny little bit for 10, actually. I mean, my 11 was really windy. Well, I'm super happy then, even more. That's good. No, I felt good. Felt better this round than last round, and I'm excited for the next one. Good work. All right, back to you guys. All right then. So continuing right along, we got uh, Manuel Domini uh, from uh, from Italia, uh, one of our uh, two uh, two hotshot uh, boat drivers in this competition. The other one being Nathan McGarry of Great Britain. Drivers that you will see back in San Gervasio next weekend. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, broadcast live exclusively on TWBC. All right then, here we go, Ali Nicholson. Well, looks like Ali listened to Freddie and started this set, giving her the best shot of getting 39 or 10.75 headwind like Mano did. Here's Ali at 14, a pass we normally don't see her uh, use as a starting pass. Getting just warmed up, settled in, and, and waiting for six ball. Yeah, and just a case of just like managing the line and just managing uh, the at the end of the turns as well. Because I mean, if she if she tried to run 14 the same way she runs 13 or 12, then uh, then it then it could end up in tears. Yeah, you you're just skiing further behind the boat, right? So if you're someone that is used to start at 13, you're used to a certain type of freedom of the second wake that you don't really get at 14, right? So it can't even yeah. quite catch you by surprise, but obviously, you know, Ali, the experienced skier that she is, just stayed calm and used this pass to, you know, feel things out and get settled in for the next few passes ahead. And certainly Ali Nicholson has enjoyed her time in, in Europe. Uh, she's uh, She skied at the Botas, where she uh, she put out a, a score of a two and a half in the the head-to-head -head, uh, slalom uh, final, having scored one three and a half in the earlier round in Monaco. Uh, she uh, produced a score of uh, three at 10.75 twice, and then at the Lacanal, then she got four at 10.75 uh, meters. So uh, she's been on a uh, pretty uh, pretty uh, good good run of uh, scores and uh, results. You know, we spoke before we Rob about how many people ran uh, 41 in the pro men division. Roughly the same number ran 39 in the pro women division. And obviously the the chat is who's going to be next, right? And a lot of people have their money on Ali being the next one running 39 off. She's been awfully closed a lot of times, always in the second half of the pass. So who knows? Maybe it's this round. Yep, indeed. So uh, that is Ali Nicholson through the opening couple of passes. Uh, 14 and 13. 12 is next into the wind. 11 with the tail. So setting herself up for 39 and a half off with a little bit of a, of a, of a stiff head breeze, uh, one, one would assume from this, uh, at this juncture. Right, so we're here talking about you know uh, her trying to run 39. We are in a similar situation in terms of seeding that we discussed with Alice and Bea, right? So now, uh, in order for Ali to stay ahead in the seeding ahead of Mano, she has to get a piece of three ball at 39 off or 10.75 10 meters. Uh, we know that her goals are more about herself and trying to run, go through the 39 off pass. But uh, there's also those dynamics at play, especially for the ladies who are 
all through the final, but they still want to start later on to get an idea, right, of what, what it will be tomorrow to, to, bring the, to bring the title home. All right, and then we see Jamie Paul pacing up and down the, the dockside area and uh, getting everything uh, situated for her is, uh, is JT, uh, Jonathan Travis, who will be slalling himself uh, before too long. Let's have a look and see what Ali Nicholson has. This is 12 meters. All right, coming in at 12 with a little bit of a headwind. Great connection out of one, a little back at two, but all it is about here is maintaining some good rhythm. Great four ball and wait for six ball. All right. In a tremendous shape out there, that is uh, Ali Nicholson, who comes to us originally from Gallatin in Tennessee. And uh, looking good. Yeah, I guess you can see, we said it before, like you can't really gather the wind um, strength by the, the water ripples because there's basically none. But you can see in this replay, you can, you know, it, they, they do show that there's a bit of headwind Quite a bit of headwind in the first pass, so that explains for those who just those who just tuned in, um, you know, Ali starting at 14 and Mano before her starting at 14 to try to get a little advantage at 10-7, uh, which we will see in a couple of passes. That was 38. 35. And now you can see Jamie Bull wearing that yellow bib, signifying that she's the. Defending champion of the Kayafas Pro Battle, or as they called her here, the Queen of Kayafa. All right. All right. Okay, so here we go. This is Ali Nicholson. Looking in good shape here. This is 11.25 meters. Look at that oh, four ball. Nice. That is a four that many people can only dream of and get in round uh, five and number six. So 10.75 meters is coming up and uh, things are repelling out as planned. 10.75 meters into the wind coming right up there, uh, Matteo. Yeah. You, oh, we're going to the dock right now. To the dock. All right, so we're continuing right along. We got Jamie Ball. Now, and you know what, Tony? Like, of course, Ali went uh, 11 tailwind to try to get a shot headwind 39. And you know, if you're someone who's trying to run 10-7, 11 tailwind is no joke, right? It's it's quite the task. And if you run it as confidently as she as she just did, especially with that four ball we saw, that puts you in the correct, you know mental framework to go okay now i just have to continue to do the same thing i get the advantage of a little bit of a headwind and uh, the pass is mine to take as we see syndicate teammate jamie bull warming up getting ready for her ride now this is someone who has been running 10-7 a lot so we will see what she'll up to start at as we see ali coming back Chasing her first 10 7. I believe PB is four and a half. Here she is, one ball. Very There's good one. Ball. Round number, oh, a little bit back on number two, but she can make this up on buoy number three, which she did. She's round With number four. four. Keep continuing going. She's round number five. And for the first time ever, Ali Nicholson Sorry. has run 39 and a half. Let's ball. go. We just had that conversation before, like we were waiting for the next lady to run 39, and here we have her. Ali Nicholson just completed six buoys at 10, seven, five meters. And look at that five ball, man. Like she just hammered it. Super confident. And you know the buoy, the buoy that made it for her was the one, was the worst turnout of the lot. Yep, really was. Like look at, great start, two ball. Didn't really get her ski under the line immediately, but stayed calm, continued to drive through the wakes towards three. And from here, she decided now, today's my day. Amazing four ball, and here's five, right? Like, you have to commit, and look at that commitment there. Bam! Bam, look at that. 
an early as you like into number six, and I don't know what was going through in mind at that time, but uh, we would have to see the stats here. I, from a quick mental count, I think she's the 11th ever to run 10-7, but I think so. I think you're right on the nose there. We're about 11, 10 or 11 skiers have only uh, sampled this rare air. 10.25 meters for Ali Nicholson. First Here she ever. comes. First time ever. This is PB territory. She's round one to the wakes. There you go. Unbelievable job by Ali. Getting her first score ever at 41 off. You can see in her face that she's super excited. And that ties the lead with Jamie Bull. That's correct. That's correct. Ties the lead. So if Jamie wants to maintain her lead, she will have to ski more than three and a half at 10.7, which is Ali's backup round. Let's take a look at this gate at 41. She still has to work to make to, to get make that ski go on the outside of one, but there you go. Fantastic job. Look at her, she's stoked. And I know one person at least that will be back in the United States, and that is Zane Nicholson, who's probably jumping up and down right now on the sofa. <laughs> yeah, for sure. He's probably having breakfast or not too not too later after that. But look at that what I mean. Just full one. Let's oh. hear from Freddie and Ali. All right, well, Ali has just run her personal best. I think the 10th female in the world to run 10.75, whatever it is, doesn't matter. It's your moment. Uh, we talked earlier, you said, I just need to get out of four and I'm going to turn the hell out of five, and you did. Congratulations. Yeah, and I, I'll be honest, I really didn't think that the start was that great. I mean, nothing compared to what I had this morning, but I mean, I almost didn't ski. I wasn't feeling good before I skied, and well, I'm so glad I did. I mean, I'm on cloud nine right now, for sure. I was just watching it with John. We saw one and two, and we're like, oh, you know, it's okay. You turn three, and we're like, wait, there we go. And you, you, that four, that offside's been so much better this year. What have you done to change your offside to make it more consistent at 39 off? Man, I don't know. I've been working on my gate a lot. I think it's really been helping just get the start going. Um, I've been getting great ones and twos and just trying to keep the momentum going. Um, yeah, I just, I think there I kind of was like, I didn't have that great of a start. And then I turned three, I got over to four, and I was like, just keep going. I got out on the end, I was like, please tell me you shortened it, because holy cow, I'm going to be so upset. Oh, man, I mean, yeah, that felt great. I'm really excited. And you didn't baby boy one at 41 there, are you? I mean, lefty onside turn. I'm like, well, we said, you turned it. You just didn't quite get your feet underneath you, but I mean, you, you were going for it, right? I just really didn't. I'll be honest, I really don't want to have. I wanted a full one. Um, it's been a while since I've even tried 41, if I'm being honest. So, yeah, I'm really excited. And with that big tailwind, it was a big ask. Hey, congratulations, it's your moment. Well done, really happy for you. A lot of work's gone into that. Uh, amazing. Back to you guys. Alrighty then, so let's continue on, shall we? A 13 meter start for Jamie Ball, uh, obviously looking to take her uh, 10.75 uh, with the tail and uh, looking to, uh, to throw 10.25 into a headwind situation. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we spent the last seven skiers talking about like how to get, you know, either 11 or 10.7 headwind. Jamie wants 10.2 headwind. Right, so that goes to show how consistent she has been getting into 41 off. Uh, already in this uh, European stretch, I believe one and a half gave her the victory in Lacano last weekend. Um, I think she's ready to get a bit of an advantage at 10-2 and see what she can get uh, at 10-2. All right, so, oh my word. There's, uh, there's Team Syndicate there around Dockside. There's Will, there's JT, there's Robert, and uh, they are all uh, they're all extremely happy. And uh, uh, for the first to congratulate uh, Ali Nicholson around the, the starting dock area. So, uh, so well done. Yeah, what a moment for her. What a moment to do it in Greece at the Kayafa Pro Battle. And in a great fashion, in an aggressive fashion. You know, extreme commitment out of five and just ran the pass. And that should uh, keep uh, Team Syndicate in the running for the uh, for the brand uh, uh, team uh, team uh, championship. Yeah, I mean, our three teammates running that are uh, Jamie that we're watching now ski and then Ali and uh, Will. So good start for Team Syndicate at this event. But let's not forget that all is decided in the final round tomorrow. Of course, here we go. This is Jamie Ball out of North Bay in Ontario, Canada. Looking in good, good shape. 
seems to uh, relish this type of uh, situation where she's uh, called upon to uh, conjure up a big score to uh, to rival the the best score up to that point. Yeah, I mean, Jamie is a competitor, right? So take alone the fact that she wants to get further down into the 41 off pass. You know, skier before her went out and did one. So that gives you that fire necessary maybe to hold on to that little extra strong pull or commit a little more in the gate, whatever it is that she needs to do to go further down at 41. Um, someone doing a good score before you will give you that, will give you that. So there we go. That is uh, Jamie Ball. Looking at some of the comments, uh, most of them uh, that have been, uh, been uh, uh, sent in, uh, we got a couple from Zane Nicholson and um, yeah, like I say, he's uh, probably quite happy with uh, with what has seen transpired, and uh, I'm sure uh, Ali Nicholson's uh, parents are uh, are in the same boat as well. As we look at Aaron Davis, he'll be our uh, next year out. He'll be the first one up in the men's uh, second round. Looking to try and put a halfway decent score up there after uh, his uh, first round where his handle broke. That's a little bit uh, in, into the future. Here we go. This is uh, Jamie Ball. This is 11.25 meters. Little ways down course. But like I said before, being down course uh, uh, isn't altogether a bad thing. It's what you do with the, in terms of generating angle at the end that keeps you in the course. It's the relationship with the boat. That's what I tell my students all the time, right? Like, this sport is a dance with the boat and it's just so incidental that we have to turn six buoys and there's two that we have to get in and two that we have to get out. But if you are in rhythm with the boat, to a certain extent where you end up turning the ball is not so crucial in as much as, you know, every time you finish a turn, the line is there for you to go. And basically Jamie is probably one of the best in the world, actually without a probably, is one of the best in the world at doing this. Indeed. So 10.75 meters comes up now uh, with with the tail breeze and with the music on. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting into this. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to get into it pretty soon because I'm up in like five. So I'll stay here with you to watch this next pass. Hopefully two passes. Sure. And then I'll I'll go and warm up a little bit. Hope you don't mind. No worries, I'm sure we're going to keep uh, Ali Nicholson by dockside and uh, bring uh, bring over one or two of our, uh, of our female athletes here to assist me in in, in uh, commentating for the, the men's competition. Here we go, this is Jamie Ball, this is 10.75 metres, gets a good start. Round buoy number one. Oh, a little down course Ooh, at two. A little bit broken over into number Needed three. A big three. Round that four, and even even worse off there of, that, of number four, but she just and has she it. she just ran 39 off tailwind. That's exactly what she wanted to do in order to get a, a bit of an advantage with that headwind at 41 off or 10 to five. So great, great on her. And look how calm she stayed. You know, like sometimes it's hard to stay calm when you're down course tailwind 39. And she just kept waiting for the line and, and getting stuck to get to the other side. All right, so Jamie Bull, the current world slalom champion from two seasons ago in 2021. A former NCWSA National Collegiate Women's Slalom Champion has won titles all over the place. She's the defending champion from last year's Kaiaphas competition and has now put herself within striking distance of the Canadian National Slalom record, which currently stands at two and a quarter. Two and a quarter at 41, national record. I believe last year, almost got no sorry two years ago she got almost got a piece of three at uh, uh, the malibu open yes so let's see Come on. she set this up for a headwind so now it's gonna come down to the gate pullout essentially to make this happen correct this has been the end that most skiers have been preferring for the gates there's a little bit of a headwind let's see what jamie can do all right rolls in Turns. That's a good one. That's the good one. That's the one that she needed. She's round. Oh, so 
close. Within one complete buoy of the Canadian national record, that'll be scored as one and a half. That is Jamie Ball at 41 off with one and a half buoys at 10.25 meters. I mean, unbelievable score. That's the score she had last week to win in the finals at the Lacano Slalom Cup. But you can avoid by thinking, man, with that one ball, a headwind, could we have seen the three? Like you can see on this shot, Tony, the headwind that she was facing, also on the bib there. This gate and one was the one to go to three. She hooked up exceptionally well there, but it almost looked like she overdrove that off, uh, off that second wake into number two and carried a lot of speed that she couldn't really bleed off in time. Look, one of the things that is really hard at 41 as a right foot forward is to trust your ski to go outside into two. And I feel that she was just a little hesitant of the second wake, not really trusting the ski to go out. You'll be able to see it in this shot. See skis underneath her, underneath her, underneath her, out. Just a little bit too late to get the ski under the line. So. Yeah. One and a half for her. All right then, so that is a one and a half buoys there at 10.25 meters. That, is, that keeps her ahead of Ali Nicholson with a new personal best of one at 10.25 meters. So congratulations to those two competitors in getting into 10.25 meters. Manon Costar with three and a half at 10.75. Elizabeth Montavon still in fourth place with, uh, with her score from uh, round one of zero at 10.75 meters and then we see Alicia Bagnoli getting ahead of uh, Beatrice Yani uh, both on 5.11.25 but superior backup prevails Ali uh, Ali Garcia currently in seventh with three and a half at 11.25 meters and Taylor Wolsey on two and a half on 12. all right then in just a few minutes we will go into the uh, we're going to go into the men's but uh, let's check out Dockside bye Jamie, I mean, we saw you with the tail and we're like, okay, I mean, if she can run it, it'll be like, you know, anything you can do, I can do better. I mean, that was pretty special. Uh, take us through the 39. Not the best boy too, but you just committed a three as a, as an, uh, on your offside. Yeah, um, I wanted to try and run a tailwind. Felt really good this morning, so um, kind of a bit of a challenge and see how things would go. And I did not have the best start. Gate was a little funky. One was okay, but really slow into two, came off early and got pushed and kind of like shied away from the tailwind. Um, but into three, I was like, just keep moving. And I did, and it worked out well. So yeah, I'm super happy. 10 to five, I've seen you run two a handful of times. You did it at the World Championships. You did it, I think, at Hilltop and, and Lake 38. But that's got to be the best approach you've had into two to actually be turning it. Yeah, um, I had one in Malibu Open a couple of years ago where I was inside three, um, but one was great, into two, the headwind's actually pretty strong, so probably came off the handle a bit early, it was narrow into two, but yeah, I just, I don't know, I have a handful of twos, I want more than two, so I'm trying to keep moving. And I mean, we're seeing you ski, I'm going to say it's the best you ever skied, right? You've got to probably agree with that. What's the, you know, as you get used to this ski, like, tell us, wh wh where can you go? We're going to be seeing threes and fours and fives and world records? I don't know, I mean, hopefully one day, but yeah, I just kind of trying to keep progressing and keep moving and do better every weekend. And win pro tournaments, right? Yeah, that'd be nice. Good job. You've been dubbed the Queen of Caiaphas Battle by George. You, you won it last year. You're looking good for this year. Good luck for the rest of the tournament. Let's see some more special stuff like that. I'll ask you one more question. What's the difference? Like, why are we suddenly, I mean, we've seen crazy stuff happen today. Like, you know, some, a lot of, like, a lot of firsts in, on the men's side. And then you're like, you know, running 39 tailwind. Like I've not really seen Many people run it like that before. What's different? What's what's what feels so good? Yeah, I mean the site feels great, water feels great, boat feels great, but I think really it's the energy here. Um, everybody's so positive, everyone's so excited, and it's really uplifting everyone. And we get a couple big scores out there, and it just starts pushing everyone else in the field. So it's really cool to see all the athletes pushing each other, but also all the people here in Greece who are loving the sport and pushing us to ski well for them. It is like that, actually. It's like, it, you know, there's that vibe and you almost don't get nervous because everyone's just lifting you up, right? Like, you know, I, I had Will go out before me and get a huge score. I'm like, you know what? Let's just go do it. Yeah, absolutely. I think usually we're like pretty alone on the dock. Everything's really serious, really quiet. Whereas here, it's such a different vibe. And I think none of us are really used to it, but I think it's really great. And it's, it's just making everyone like in such a great mood to go and ski and put a good show on. 
It's almost like we're real athletes today. Like we've got people who are like coming out to us and telling us good luck. You know, we've got people we don't know all excited to meet us, right? Yeah, absolutely. Lots of pictures, lots of excitement. Um, it's really cool. It's very, very cool. Well, if we got to, if we listen to George, he said that tomorrow is going to be nothing like this, much better. So. Uh, looking forward to that. You'll ski tomorrow at least once in the final, maybe. In the, I don't know if you'll do that in the morning. Uh, good luck with your recovery. Well done. Back to you guys. Why, thank you. Uh, uh, thanks uh, to uh, Matteo Lizzeri for, uh, for guiding us uh, through uh, the, uh, the women's slalom round two. Also to Rob Hazelwood uh, as well. My name's Tony Lightford. Glad to have the pleasure of your company here at the Kayafas uh, Battle for 2023. Here's our men's uh, starting list reseeded based upon results in uh, round one. Aaron Davis will take to water first, followed by Jaime Palomino, then Arno de Rick, uh, Tom Paul, Matteo Lazzeri, uh, Callum Heath, Nicky Antonsen, Carlo Elias, uh, Stephen Island, Tim Tornquist, Sasha Deska, and uh, Corey Vaughan. And uh, the remaining uh, skiers on the list uh, consist of uh, Brandon Caruso, uh, Jonathan Travers, uh, Thomas de Gasperi, Rob Hazelwood, Will Asher, Freddie Winter, and then finally Nate Smith. And uh, we'll uh, roll straight into uh, that, that event, starting off with, uh, with Aaron Davies uh, first. Now, now so far, uh, Aaron Davies is, uh, has, been a, has been a bit of an unlucky alpha so far as that is concerned. You know, uh, his handle broke on 11.25 meters. So let's see if he'll be uh, using a brand new handle or a re or uh, or he's restrung his old one. to tell if that's a new handle or not but uh, I think the uh, the caps uh, will probably give it away good to uh, good to see all of you here watching especially our uh, our good folks uh, watching uh, through the uh, the webcast or via the live chat and all of that for those of you that are watching the webcast and uh, corresponding on live chat right now uh, certainly if you uh, feel uh, feel inclined to be a part of the the super chat uh, in the in this uh, this tournament you'll see a, a sign there on the bottom right hand corner of the the screen if you tap onto that it'll be uh, certainly very very much appreciated all right then so we've got uh, Aaron Davies he's uh, he's in the drop zone right now and uh, there's about 45 seconds and for those of you that have just joined us, welcome. Live and continuing coverage of the Kai Afis Pro Battle 2023. For those of you that missed the earlier action uh, with uh, Will Asher and Freddie Winter and Nate Smith all making it into 9.75 meters three times in a row, uh, you can actually scrub back uh, to that earlier coverage. And when this, uh, when the coverage uh, terminates uh, for the for the day, which uh, will be after the end of round two, there will be markers on the the bottom of the the screen uh, that will allow you to scrub directly to that coverage, and uh, that will be uh, right after the conclusion of our events today live. Good to. Uh, Good to have each one of you joining in with our coverage. It is currently a quarter to four in in Caiaphas right now, which is uh, Eastern European time. So it's almost eight o'clock in the morning on the eastern seaboard of the United States. There's a net. There's. Uh, I believe there's about an eight, seven or eight uh, hour time difference. So for those of you enjoying your breakfast uh, uh, on, a, on a Saturday morning and uh, getting checking in to some great slalom skiing, you are most certainly welcome. There is uh, Jaime Palomino uh, from Mexico who's uh, looking for a shot of redemption, especially uh, considering his outing at the, uh, the World U21 Championships that took place 
in uh, Mexico, and which was brought to you live by TWBC. Here is the leaderboard, taking into consideration the scores that were posted earlier and uh, the score that's in progress right now from, uh, fr from uh, Aaron Davies. There's Asher, Winter, and Smith with one at uh, 9.75 meters. Uh, Thomas De Gasprey with his typical three, tied up with uh, Robert Hayeswood for a two-way tie for fourth. Jonathan Travers there in fifth, half a buoy behind. All right, here we go. This is Aaron Davies. This is 12 meters. Aaron Davies, last year, was the uh, the skier of the day. Uh, that, that award uh, presented by two U Nutritional Bars. And the opportunity for you to actually vote for that uh, starts tomorrow. But in the meantime, if you're interested in uh, interactivity so far as this uh, this competition is concerned, then you could go and win yourself a ski. Why not? Uh, you can uh, go to waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play and uh, select which skiers you believe are going to feature in the top three in both the women's and, and uh, men's event and also select a tie-breaking score. And uh, if your name comes up, with, uh, with all of that information uh, correct. And if there is a tie, then it becomes a random draw. But if you end up winning, then you will have the, uh, the opportunity to select either uh, a D3 or Conley Slavinsky. To find out more details and to enter, go to waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play. There we see we've got uh, Jaime Palomino trying to, trying to pick a fight there with, uh, with Arno Durick. Of, uh, of Belgium. Here comes Aaron Davies. This is 12 meters. Aaron Davies getting a really good hook up there on buoy number one. It is 11.25 meters now. Aaron Davies scored half on this line leg this morning. And uh, he's uh, scoring significantly better right here and now. And uh, and in the uh, the announcing booth right here and now is uh, my good friend and uh, recent skier into 9.75 meters. It is Freddie Winter. Hello, Tony. How are you doing? Not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, we seem to be uh, meeting like this uh, more and more frequently. Uh, not only here, but also on the uh, the on tour with uh, Freddie Winter uh, series of uh, podcasts on TWBC. Very very enjoyable they are for me. Uh, hopefully for some of the people listening at least. Um, yeah, like I said on there the other day, it's been sort of funny. We've we've had a, a few tournaments uh, without you guys there, and it's felt just a little bit different. You know, I'm not. It, there's obviously other people, other good good people doing a good job elsewhere, but you know, we're so kind of used to the biggest tournaments having you guys around so um i'm happy happy to see you again all right so good why thank you very much there freddy uh kudos to you sir aaron 1075 he ran three at lake 38 i believe let's get a decent one he's over to two and two's a little taily but three if he can it. He's over the front. He might run over to four and turn, and he's going to be in it until five, and we'll see. Here he comes. To, come on, keep gonna going. He's going to be maybe around it. Or he is around yeah, it. Yeah, there yes. you go. And making his wow. bid for what? skier of the day. <laughs> Look at this. Uh, I mean, he, he. I think he won skier of the day here last year. Yeah, and I he mean, did. And I, I'm sure you've told the story, but I mean, the guy 11 and a half months ago had, had an arm that was open to, 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 to the world. I mean, it was you know completely cut open. He broke his arm. He put his arm through the handle. And I would imagine that that might be one of the better scores. That probably would be the better score he's had in practice since coming back. He's only been skiing for a handful of months. And to do that, and I think that'll put him in maybe in that top top eight, you know, that, that top eight or nine that, that'll be needed to, to get into the final. If he can get a, you know, one or two at 10 to five here, uh, two would obviously be a lot better than one. But it, this is great. And let me, sorry, let me be a, a corporate loser here, but look at that ski he's riding. That's a Neo 2, and, and it's just working with him. He's making mistakes. It's the ski I've been riding for the last month. And, um, month you could win that ski. 
you should win that ski. If you, I mean, whoever, yeah, get yourselves a Neo 2 by hook or by crook would enter this. Um, yeah. And I tell you what, if in round one he was unlucky out, what is he in this round? He didn't look lucky there. He he just he did his work. I mean, it was it was a bit of a rough pass, but he stayed in it, and that's you know that ski will, will stay with you. All right, then, excellent stuff. So our first skier out, and already into 10.25 meters. What a what a start to round two. Here he goes. He's round that's number good one. one. He'll get two, I think. Around two. Does he get? Does he S turn out the exit gate? And yeah, that's a there you go. It's under review, but I, it looked fine to me, unless he missed his gates. Uh, I think I haven't got the scores in front of me. I'm going to say that probably puts him in about sixth place. I know Brando ran a two, Thomas ran a three, Robert ran a three. I think probably that's sick, tied for sick. Obviously, that second countback score is not going to do him any favors at half at 38, which is very unlucky. That's definitely a one. Let's see if you got around boy two here. Oh, that's going to be pretty close. Uh, it's one of those you know potential sort of ride over situations that we, that we hear about. Uh, the rule is that you're not allowed to significantly displace the boy. Now, what does that mean? Um, it's open to discussion, shall we say. Uh, I think I think he ran over it. I think that probably that, I would, if I was a judge, I'd probably give him one. But we'll have a look here. It's not up to me. It's not up to us, Tony, is it? Well, Aaron Davis, who last year scored a PB yeah. with half, uh, with a three at 10.25 metres last season, in round three. Event. He likes yeah. it here. Yeah, he if does. we can get that replay up again, here's here's the clue. And this is what I think sometimes the judges don't look at, unfortunately, is, is that when you can see something wrap around the boy, uh, you know, like when you have the spray wrap around the boy, it generally means it's either been run over significantly or you're inside of it. And I think I saw that. So I'm going to say that probably would be a one in my book. I'm taking nothing away from Aaron. One confirmed. There you go. But bloody, bloody good job, Aaron. I mean, it warms the heart, doesn't it, when you see someone come back from an injury and he'll just be so happy. Um, I talked to him yesterday. And especially after breaking the handle in round one. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. I mean, the, the horrible irony there is that, you know, when he, when he hurt himself, it was because he put his arm through the handle and it didn't break early enough. So um, that puts him in eighth place. I, I talked to Aaron yesterday, and I mean, he, you know, he doesn't have high hopes necessarily for these tournaments in terms of, like, making the finals, but he just he had such a good time last year, as you can see all the stuff that's happening around us. You know, he experienced this last year and didn't want to miss it. And, and here he is. It, Jamie... Uh, Bull said it a minute ago when I was talking to her. She said that just the vibe around here, like we don't have this at tournaments. Usually it's sort of this slightly awkward, like people are you're getting ready together and there's this slightly awkward, stressy vibe. Here it's not like that. You just don't, you know, you can't feel stress when everyone's kind of just, you know, there's music going. You can't even really hear yourself think. Everyone's so so chatty. And it's, 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 it's bringing everyone up. You know, it's, it's, the, it's the tide that's rising all boats. You see from the scores, it's amazing. We need this Red Bull truck everywhere. I mean, I don't care if it's Red Bull. I, I just want George Hadzis everywhere. That's what I think. <laughs> Bring him everywhere. Get him to organize the DJs. Get him to organize the entertainment. Because, I mean, you know, this is a Saturday. It's the, okay, with the, with the exception of Moomba, which is impossible to replicate 60 years of, of, of heritage and bringing people to the same place every year, year after year, uh, in the middle of a city. You can't replicate that. But what you can do is do what George has done, is promote the absolute nuts off of this tournament. You know, made it fun, made it interesting. You know, we have a great sport, but it, it's not that great to watch from the side of the lake. I mean, we see more and more people stay at home and watch the webcast. Well, no one's doing that here. There's no one sitting in Zaharo or even in Athens in Greece going, oh, I'll just watch the webcast because it, it'll be better than watching the event. The webcast is great, don't get me wrong, but you're not getting the feeling we're having here 100%. I mean, this is the best tournament you can go to all year. Um, probably, you know, King of Darkness was amazing too in terms of atmosphere, finals of the evening. Uh, Moomba as well, but this is just incredible, and, and you know, very. That's one in each continent. This is our European blockbuster tournament, in my opinion. Right, you are. Here we go. This is Jaime Palomino. This is a 13-meter start. Now, he's someone that's looking for a little redemption here. Not, not, not entirely based upon what he had produced in round one, mind you, which was one half 11.25 meters. But uh, more recent uh, results, such as the uh, the World U21s, where he scored exactly that score in the opening round of that competition. Let's check in on Dockside with our correspondent. Hey guys, we're here with Aaron Dezis. He was telling me before he wasn't sure whether to take 1075 tailwind or headwind, and I guess he paid off for 10 too. Oh yeah, I was just like, you know, that's the first time I've run it in tournament since the injury. It's only the second time I've ever been on 10 2 since injury, so I'm just super happy to run it tailwind as well. And last year here was a great score for you, you got three, and this year back to an injury, you got two, so that feels great. 
Yeah, it's the first time I've run it since since then. So come back and it is amazing. Just so happy to do it again. We're happy for you, Heron. The crowd is here for you. So back to you guys. Why, thank you, Alice, and thank you, Aaron. And uh, and you know, Fred, Freddie, here's an observation that I've made. How uh, how Alice and uh, Ali have grown into their roles uh, out, off the water. Uh, there's there's no doubt. I mean. It's like anything, you know, you get practice. We, we practice every day at water skiing, but also you get a little bit of practice behind the microphone, uh, talking to people, and you just feel more comfortable. And, um, yeah, no, Alice, she's a trooper for this sport. I felt terrible for her when she missed that 38, that 11 earlier when she really was probably in it. But she'll get there. But, yeah, no, um, just, just a, someone turns up to all the pro events and does all the work behind the cameras as well as in front of it. All right, here we go. This is 12 metres for Jaime Palomino. And he looks and really good. It, it, you mentioned those... Um, he's skiing angry. Yeah, he's skiing angry, and sometimes that can help. Sometimes it can't. Marcus Brown had a post yesterday saying you should never ski mad, but there's, there is a controlled aggression that you can take where you're like, you know, I'm just going to go bloody well do this. It's strange watching him. He looks fantastic. He looks balanced. And, you know, he's, he's been so consistent over the years. I've seen him come up. He's been so great. I, I saw that score at the watch. I just was confused. I, I didn't see actually this morning, but it's odd. Um, this is a guy that ran, I think, four at 10.75 or three at 10.75 in the Moomba Monday final, having made the first two rounds earlier this year. That is not easy to do, and it shows it's emblematic of a skier that's very, very dialed, very, very consistent, um, especially early in the year like that. Uh, so, yeah, a, a bit confusing to see these scores. I, I think probably he'll he'll break that streak here. I'd, I would, I'd be almost floored having seen his first two passes. He's got a headwind on this 11. He's taking a 10.75 tailwind, but um, I think he's going to run this. Yep, certainly. He's certainly going to have a, a good attempt here, you know, and uh, Jaime Palomino, uh, who's, uh, who kind of jumped onto the scene about two or three, uh, two or three seasons ago over in, uh, in San Gervasio and won the, uh, the, the junior uh, pro, pro event there. And it's, uh, he's been looking to try and uh, keep, put himself in a position where he's challenging the likes of Charlie Ross and, uh, and the like for, uh, for Slalom Supremacy. Here he comes. 11.25 meters. Pick up there into one. Nice one and number two. I like his I like his line management, uh, Freddie. I agree. It, and his offside is very good. It's just I didn't like his approach into one there. He he kind of almost double pumped. He, he he's moving forward as opposed to out. He needs to do a combination of both. He needs to get into the middle. Do you um, think it's a uh, it's it's a little bit too forced or a little bit for, for, formal, formally etic. I, I, I just watch this here. He, he, he just came off, came off the rope early and he moved forward. In a, in a headwind situation, that can be tough because you're going to struggle to, um, you know, to, 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 to have any space. He's, uh, I, I'm going to say he's skiing just a, a little bit tentatively. He's, a little, he's not you know, letting it flow. Which, 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 yeah, which I think is... It's normal for someone who's a young chap. I think he's, you know, 18, 19, whatever he is. And he's, he's not, you know, he's, he's been very confident. Very, if you're skiing well and you've had all the consistent results, you, you, you don't get stressed. But you have a couple of bad results in a row, which he now has, um, having broken that, you know, that, that, that streak, now having run the 11. Um, and I think, you know, you, it's, it's easy to have your confidence knocked, especially when you're young. You don't maybe, until you're older, if you ever get there, uh, you get that ability to go, oh, it was one, one bad round, let's move out, let's, let's move on, let's not push. Um, so, yeah, we're going to see him come back here at 10.75. He's going to need, you know, to make that final, uh, which would be at maybe the top of his expectations. He's going to need to run the whole thing like Aaron did. It's a better approach into one. He's over the front. Uh, needs a big two, and he's, he's actually got it. Oh, yeah, on, look mate. at this. Come on, keep going. Oh, he's going. over the front. It's a great three. Keep come going. On, keep oh, going. He just oh, bit. and he stuffs four. But he manages to S-turn, and I don't four think and he make, made it to, uh, to the boat guides for six. Let's give that an unofficial four and a half from here. But yeah, what a start. And I think his, his offside is really, really good. He's, he's a little bit taily out of two, four, but his offside, he brings it through and that three was exceptional. He had a better approach into one. He didn't do that little rock forward thing that he did into one at 38. Maybe gave, yeah, that's, that's pretty great. He just came over the top a little bit with that spare hand, put that weight on the front of the ski, but two was good. And then watch three, it snaps through and he finished actually his weight slightly behind his boots, which is kind of where you want to be. Moving, moving across. And then four, I think, just dropped in a little bit too much and oversmeared the tail of that ski and just couldn't keep the purchase on it to, to feel good into, into five. But Well, he gets around number five. Now, does he get to the boat guide? 
Well, we can't see from there. Well, I don't. I don't think he. There. I don't think from the camera. I didn't. Uh, the, the, the the boat camera. I didn't think so. But anyway, um, worth noting. Actually, he's one of these young guys that's uh, that's on 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 a soft boot. Uh, there's you know, no one really. I mean, actually, I, I guess Dane, Nate, and now Corey. Corey moved started this year. Uh, Dane moved started last year. But on the T factor. On, yeah. the, on the T factor soft boot. Um, it was Nate for many many years. Just him. But these. But then there's Nicholas Nelson. There's there's uh, there's Jaime. There's a there's a handful of young guys that kind of feel that's the boot for them. So let's see this S turn and no, 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 missed it by a few centimeters. That's all right. He will, at the very least, he'll be happy that he's broken his duck. You know, he he was in cricketing terms, he was on a pair. Yeah. Um, and he's managing to, uh, to 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 get you know four and a half into five and a tailwind is, is a score that he you know that's no 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 disgrace whatsoever. It's more up to where he wants to be. I know he can, he can run that and he has run it, but I think that you know. That's a score for a guy under 21 level that's very, very, very good. Very, very handy. Just checking the cricket score actually now, Tony. Oh, you are? All right, then. So our next competitor to take to the water, representing Belgium. It's a, it'll be Arno de Riek. Arno, oh, another member of the TWBC crew. He was carrying a camera on his back for many, many hours today. Uh, getting ready to ski. He only got off the camera two or three skiers before the end of the men's season. So another servant to the sport. These guys are really doing it. He worked at Swiss Ski School. He's a fantastic driver, actually. I, I was um, I was stuck for someone to ski with at Swiss. Uh, my normal uh, driver, of Vince Stadelbauer, um, was not available, so I upgraded to Arno, um, which was... Uh, <laughs> I'm getting abuse on the talkback right now. Um, so Arno took me in it, 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 before Moomba and it was fantastic. He's a great driver. Um, he's putting the hours in behind the wheel and he's a great skier. He's got the meanest onside turn in the world. Um, we'll see that in a minute after we go to the dock. So Jaime, you absolutely killed it out there. You got four and a half at 10.7. I mean, that's, that's insane. I remember the day that you and I grew up skiing together in Miami. Uh, how does it feel skiing at Kayapas? It feels good, definitely better than Miami where you completely beat me. Um, but yeah, it was fun. To be honest, I didn't expect that. I lost my confidence after the first round. I didn't want to have 11. And now, even though I didn't get the S turn, it was tailwind, it was a tight four. And to be honest, I'm just happy to be here. Dude, I'm glad that you skied amazing. I'm super happy for you. Well, now, what about the environment on the dock? It's good. I feel like I'm like in an Egyptian carnival or something but we're in Greece. <laughs> awesome, it's good seeing you, great skiing. Let's keep it on it. Back to you, Tony. Egyptian uh, carnival. Uh, yeah, I, I was gonna query that as well. I mean, it, uh, to me, I, I've been to a handful of nightclubs that sound like this. I've never been to any carnivals in Egypt, admittedly. Um, but yeah, good to see. He said he was nervous on his 11, that showed, and they freed up at 10, at 10.75. Arno taking uh, 13, headwind to take therefore 11 headwind i'm sure he'll get there now watch this guy he gets so low on his uh on his onside turn that, that 135 at any pass it's something that it looks extraordinarily cool actually i posted him on my instagram story and it was my biggest instagram story i had like 7,000 views and like a million shares and and um yeah the people want to see more of arno's uh, slam dunk, but it's not. Let's say it's not the most efficient way of doing it. With zero no. off, you've seen that slam dunk go away. It used to be when you had those those smaller engine boats, it was not a bad thing. You'd almost pull the boat R back a little running bit. perfect pass. Yeah, perfect pass or even hand driving. But yeah, it's not really the move. So so what what will happen there is when he slam dunks uh, around the back end of a one three or a, uh, one three or a five, he'll get so much pressure and get pulled straight down the lake by the big powerful boat, and then he has to, a real tricky situation avoid two uh, or four. Uh, and not being able to turn it there. So he's going to want to slam dunk the least as possible as much as the world might want to see Arno's huge, uh, huge uh, onside turns. All right, so uh, Arno Derrick and uh, actually noticed one or two things with his technique, uh, especially on his onside uh, with the opening pass that I might, uh, might query you with and uh, see if there is uh, something that can be done maybe to rectify it going forward, but uh, let's have a look at that, shall we? All right, Arno, tailwind, 12 meters, 35 off. 
Here looks like a go. nice gate. He's got the right amount of speed. He's not overshot it. He's not undershot it. And there he is. The big one. And you know, it's just a little bit too much tail smear. And he's so deep. And it's yeah. It's like it comes off the turn and he almost squares his hips away from the wake going off a one three five into his two four. Yeah, and, and, and you see just the, the ski, but when he's he's dropped his weight so far on the inside that his shoulder's in the water, but crucially that means that there's no weight on the ski. So what does the ski do? It smears out and it looks almost very close to the, for the tail popping out. Now, because he's uh, turning on his onside, which you tend, to, you tend to turn more with your heels, he keeps the, keeps in the water, but once the ski's gone, you know, it's got to come around from behind him so far that he's got no control and a lot, a lot of pressure, so it's, it's not ideal. Um, I'm not, I don't want to tear his king apart here. He does a lot of stuff really well, but I think that that's probably the main thing. If, if, he, could, if he could drop, his, drop his, uh, his shoulder a little less around one, three, and five, he'll be able to get a bit more of a, 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 an easier turn. He has a re really nice offside when he gets there um, in good shape, and we're going to see this, uh, we're going to see this 11 and a headwind in a second. Some slut dropping from Tom Poole there. Good stuff. A, a, a favorite of a lot of pro skiers. A little bit of a slut drop before the tournament. I think, I'm not sure if it's more for the legs or just to kind of feel good about yourself. I've been guilty of doing it myself. All right then, as we continue to add another term into the water skiing lexicon, uh, the uh, the word smear. Smear, yeah, well smear is huge. I mean, that that's, let's uh, let's have a look at and then see how, how Arn is able to control the smear here. Big one, oh. and just drop down. He must have strong legs. Come on, Arno, let's see it, mate. Look at it. Good it's a big oh, three again. That. Come on, nice easy turn. That's a better four, and I think five will be fine. Come on, no, oh. man. terrible. I'm, I feel bad for saying that. It's oh. like it's the same. His his TWBC teammate uh, early earlier today, Aliche. You know, one, two, three, four. Fairly good, fairly controlled, and then and then um, and then Arno running four and a half. Just again, just so. What, okay, let's let's watch here. This is an exaggeration. This is what happened at five. Brilliant angle here. We're going to see his shoulder drop in, all the pressure off the ski. There's, the ski is so low, and then he's crushed like over. That. He still yeah, managed exactly. to get over to two in decent shape. A uh, lot of front foot pressure. Again, over smear from the tail. Um, that's kind of like oversteer in, in, in race driving terms. Um, and this this was okay. A little bit of understeer here. You know, into uh, two four. And then and then just too much. His tail didn't sort of come through. He, he sucked his knees up. That's a shame. I'm sorry. You know, Arno's a he's a he's a bloody good guy. One of the one of the very best people I know in the sport, actually. And um, he's really um, said he's been frustrated the last few weeks, not being able to ski as much as he would have liked. He's not. You know, he's kind of moved between events. I saw him a couple of weeks ago in in Spain. Um, and uh, yeah, so so an unfortunate four and a half for him. We heard through the talk, talk back that Vince is in the lead uh, with the TWBC crew. So what did Vince run yesterday? Uh, he actually ran, I think, about two, two, two at two at thirty-nine. Two at thirty-nine, did he? Yeah, Jamie bastard. <laughs> well, there we go. Even a even a stopped clock is is correct twice a day, isn't it? Tony? Yeah, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> Ow, my ear hurts. <laughs> All right, Tom Paul. Strange again. I mean, he, you know, Botas. Two weeks ago, ran two at ten two five, made the final, skied uh, against, I think Nate in in the in the first um, uh, in the first of the quarterfinals, uh, but made it work and, and and skied really well. Didn't see his his score uh, into eleven earlier, but uh, um, we'll see what he does here. We're going to go to the dock though. I am here with Matteo Luziri. First round might have not gone the way you wanted. What are you going to do to change it? I know the wind's getting a little bit heavier. What are you going to change for second round? Well, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm still on a high for Ali Nicholson's score. I was just screaming with Tony at the mic. So I'm trying to channel that energy into the second round. Quite windy in the first pass. I'm going to maintain the same strategy out at 35 off. Well, I don't want to hold you up too much longer. Go out there. Go conquer that wind. Conquer Kai office. Take it to battle. Thank you. See you. There we go. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. Um, yeah, so Matteo had a strange one earlier. He missed his, missed his 11 and um, yeah, wasn't quite sure what happened. The, the boat came back and, and there was something, some sort of uh, 
a situation going on where there was a question about something or other, a protest. Not sure it was granted, but anyway, um, he'll be out there again earlier. Again, uh, Matteo also ran some huge scores over in Monaco uh, a week and a half ago. God, we've had so many tournaments, my lord. Tom Poole, 30, 13 metres, presumably. Yep, this is 13 metres. And he's got a, he's got a, a nice slalom style, especially his approach into uh, into 2-4, his neutral side right there, where his, where his line management is, is something to behold. So looking good for that uh, for that second run, or well, actually that first run that was uh, I believe 14.25 meters. So I know Tom quite well. We've, we've skied together a fair bit. We were teammates at the Superior Water Skiing University of uh, Louisiana a number of years ago. We were briefly what um, was that at Monroe? We were briefly. Um, briefly roommates he stayed on my couch for a few weeks while he sorted out his accommodation at the start of his tenure at Monroe um, he's a he's a really good skier had a probably let's say had a rough few years like he, you know 2019 we traveled together a few tournaments he was running twos and threes fairly consistently and then I think you know COVID probably wasn't the best time for him I mean, it's hard to train by yourself um, he's had had some br a broken ankle and I think he had a you know it wasn't diagnosed all that sort of stuff so he's back he's on a new ski he's all excited and uh Tom will be, you know, he's certainly capable, I think, 13, 12, 11, so he's run, he's got 10, 7, 5 in the tailwind, but it hasn't hurt Aaron Davis, and it and it didn't didn't hurt the start of uh, Jaime's um, uh, pass. And he's been known to frequent the OWSC, uh, the Oxford uh, Water Ski Club, uh, alongside yourself and Aaron and uh, and, uh, and Callum Heath, who are, who are all here. Yeah, OWSC, phenomenal place. Um, one of my favorite places to be in the world, actually. Just a great place to ski. And yeah, Tom worked there for a number of years. Aaron's currently working there. Tom does probably more of his skiing up at Hazelwoods these days. Um, his, uh, I'm not gonna say sister-in-law, but his his uh, long-term girlfriend's sister has a caravan up at Hazelwoods, so they'll go up there a fair bit and do some skiing. Nice. Okay, pulling out into the drop zone and there's Nate McGarry. And there is uh, Matteo Lazzari getting ready to uh, to rock the roost here at uh, Caiaphas. And uh, he did pretty well while here last season. He got it into uh, 10.25 meters. Looking for uh, for something similar here, but uh, just couldn't get it together on uh, on that, uh, I believe, 39 and a half off in round one. Yeah, he, in the... Um in the Monaco Cup of a week and a half ago, which is the first of, of, of the, the water ski pro tour stops in Europe, he ran in the first round through at 25 straight off the bat, and he looked good for it, really, really good for it. And the next round he ran two, and the next round he ran two, in the final he ran two also. So, you know, getting really good ones. Um, he'll be he'll be confident, honestly. I mean, he had a bit of a hiccup in the first round there, but no, uh, not not so um, not something that he can't do to get the score that he needs. And actually, last year. Having snapped his Achilles tendon in 2014, I think it was the first time he cut to three or hit three. Um, was was this tournament last year, and he got on the podium, came third. So he's he's a podium contender from last year, and he will be this year if he can get through into that 25. Anyway, Tom Paul, 11 meters. He didn't run this the last time. I, I don't really understand what happened. I, I think you're completely right considering his technique, Tony. I mean, his offside is very good. He's always said that that's his better turn. He looks more balanced there. Pulls the hand a little early, a little high. Oh, almost overloaded too much. God, I was talking about in general uh, what he does on the onside, but that, that's kind of maybe a little bit of a, you know, a continuous mistake that, that, that he makes, which I think he could probably improve just a little bit. Um, that when that handle comes on the onside too early and too high, you end up sitting on the tail. And um, this is what happens when you count buoys, like one after the other, because I mean, if you, I mean, if you make the turn as as a singular entity, in my in my mind, you know, you're concentrating on that turn and that turn alone. But as you get closer and closer to the end of the course, then the anxiety kicks in, like saying, okay, uh, either got to go or not. And I think he did he run four and a half in the first round, so probably he was he just did. you know almost overthinking, it. and that that was close to being a four and a half again. He was out the tail, just yeah. very similar to Arno, you know, just. You know, uh, Lefty, overturning, too much smear of the, of the tail of the ski and kind of finishing on the on, on the back of it. Too much pressure not, and too much to hold. Yeah, he managed ski, to hold it. Yeah, and the ski actually hit the line on number five in the previous round. So oh, is that right? past that. Oh, yeah, that's that's, well. that's very frustrating. You almost feel like you can't really do anything in that situation. 
All right, so where are we at right now? We've got 14, 13, 12. Uh, that was, I believe. That was 11. He, he, he needs to run uh, 10, 7, 5 here to, to have a chance at the top eight. Of course, there's that another round tomorrow. Of course. He'll be taking if he doesn't make it here, but slight tail. I think it's dropped off a little bit. I think it's okay. And then um, not a bad one. Let's see if it's two. I think two's good. All right, Tom, go. come on. Slow with the hands here, here and he's a little wheelie there. Four will be decent, he's and then there. he's going to need the five. He's there. The he's there. Look at this. That's his best onside time Boom. of the whole set was probably 5 or 10, 7, 5, which is a good time to do it. Good time to do it. That's and some big scores this round. I mean, already, I think we're three or four uh, skiers in, and we've had two, three, 10, 7, They're 5, and four and a half. Yeah, everyone's improved. Everyone's figuring out a little bit, understanding the conditions. Um, yeah, one was fine, not exceptional. Two was pretty Two and four with Tom, we don't need to worry about too much. It kind of just works. Like, that's, that's pretty good. Now three, a wheelie, again, just finishing on the tail. That handle coming in too early. That ends yeah. up with his weight on the wrong side of the ski, where you want it to be, you know, your weight to be sort of moving gradually towards the weight. So he was moving it back across on, on the other side of the ski, but then five, he figured out. He's quite late, that helps, because the tension on the rope stops you from putting your weight uh, on the other side of the ski. And uh, he was able to, to get that great turn, which he needed, and out the exit gates. Uh, and that is six, 10, seven, five. Tom, let's say this. Um, we, we're not being broadcast onto site, which is nice. We're not have, there's no speakers on site with our, with our voice. So you can kind of be a bit more honest. You always get a little bit nervous of speaking, uh, let's say, negatively. In, 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 you know, when people can hear you. You don't want to upset the skiers. Um, but with, 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 uh, with his onside turn, you'd think that you know, it should be safe, but will he be able to get over two? But if he can get over to two, his offside is so good that he might you know, have that chance for three, and three will be a really good spot to be. Um, tying Thomas Gasper for fourth place. All right, looks then, like a decent gate. Go. Good ap aggressive approach. I think one's, his PB is here good. somewhere. Round number. Oh, oh, throw it, throw it. No, no, no. no, no. But there you go. That's two. That's uh, that's a sizable improvement upon uh, what he did in the round uh, previous to this one. And ties Brando for fifth place. Sixth something place. Like, yeah, something like that. Yeah. So uh, Brando Caruso is currently in seventh place right now. Uh, oh, because we've got John with the two and a half. I keep, I've forgotten about John there. So, yeah, seventh yeah. place. Seventh place. Uh, so, he's tied with that score. So, uh, so for the time being, he's put himself in one of those top eight spots. But... Number of skiers left to go. Number of skiers left to go. And... Uh, I think he should have thrown it there. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't that far away. Just that onside slidey... Would, you know, that should have, gone, should have gone for the skier of the day. Well, that's it. You know, those quarter of a boys are so, so incredibly important. And I mean, you know, right now, two is going to be seventh and eighth spot. You're going to need a two uh, to get into the final. That's that's certain. And, 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 and you you know, two and a quarter is gold dust. You saw, uh, I mean, myself, I threw it threw it to get around a boy four a couple of weeks ago and it got me in the final. Whereas if I'd have, I'd have been really on the edge if I hadn't got the, 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 the quarter there. And that does put in one buoy ahead of Aaron Davis. It does, but with the, remember, this unusually for a tournament, uh, for a tournament, there's three qualifying rounds. So tomorrow, there's another one, uh, which means that you know even after this round, we're not going to know. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, can't, I don't have a list of the skiers that are to come, but um, you know, you're gonna, you, you can have a look at. Uh, uh, I mean, you know, everyone's capable. Sasha, the Scun's obviously very capable. Corey Vaughan, extremely capable. These guys, these are probably the guys that you'd really think can do it. All right, we're going to go to the dock quickly. All right, let's check in. All right, so uh, we're here on the dock with uh, Tom Paul. Just put an awesome score down, 2 on 10 2. How does it feel, mate? Uh, yeah, really good. Not the best first round, so I kind of had to go out there and uh, do what I normally do. Um, Third tournament in a row, I've run 39, so really happy. Um, I know you went out there and skied really well, so two was in my mind, but I think on this site, with how good it skis, you're gonna have to get a piece of three, so it was like a half turn two, but also I wanna get to three situation. Yeah, so you're sitting in eighth at the moment. We'll have to see if that sticks to make it to the final, so good luck, mate. Yeah, thanks a lot. Cheers, good job, back to you guys. And it's good that Aaron's trying to make himself heard above uh, the noise that's going on in the background. It almost sounds like Martin Brundle on the the uh, the uh, the grid talk in Formula One. Yeah, he's definitely uh, definitely making sure that he's heard. Yeah, <laughs> it's important. I mean, it's so loud down there. You don't you can't really hear yourself, so you've got to shout over it. All right, I'm Tony Lightfoot. He 
is Freddie Winter with uh, with his trademark Hawaiian shirt. Yep, very cool on a nice day like today. Very hot. Got to got to keep a breeze going. That's why I've got the buttons done very loosely. <laughs> I don't like to overheat. Okay, that's cool. I guess in uh, in every sense of the word. <laughs> Well, Ali, I mean, I don't know if people heard the story, but Ali Nicholson had some some sunstroke. She was puking in the woods before she went out and ran her PB. I don't know what that says. But, what, um, what, here? I mean, literally an hour ago. Like, she, she told me, she's like, I don't know if I'm going to ski. I'm like, oh, well. Anyway, she got it together, and she went out and ran her best. And I think, you know... Talk about get it out of your system. <laughs> exactly. Very good. But I think it just shows that sometimes you go and have a ski set, the pressure's off a little bit. She's already probably... Well, she's already in the final for sure. She qualified pretty high with three and a half. And... Um, the pressure's off and she just went for it. She, you know, all out. Shades of Willie Beeman, I suppose. Here we go. We've got uh, Matteo Luzzeri, who's looking for a little bit of redemption himself. 12 uh, metres. Yeah. He's looking for that 10.75 into the headwind. He's the first guy to do it. It's a big move. I believe he did it first round. Yes, he? he did. Yeah, so so uh, it didn't pay off for him because that, that slight tailwind. But at the same time, I'm looking at the water here. We're, we're kind of sat back from the lake of touch, so can't really... We've got a lot of trees around us can't really see if it's that windy it doesn't look like it's i mean it looks like there's a breeze but nothing more than, than, than a slight push um i could be wrong uh, appearances are always deceptive i mean that's kind of always the thing you, you, we go to these you know horrendous uh horrendously tricky places to ski like moomba like the masters like like you know malaysia paris and people always say like well it didn't look so bad but you know when it looks bad on the water a little bit on camera it looks it's way worse in person anyway Let's we go to the, the dock side Hey guys, back on the dock again here with Nicky Anton Sam. Got two and a half in the first round. There's a big score to make it to the final. How are you feeling ahead of that? Yeah, uh, I know I have to do a big score to even get a shot at the finals. So I have to run 10-7 and get more than two at 10-2. Uh, I'm thinking about taking it at a 10-7 with headwind, so starting with 12. I'm not 100% sure yet, but let's see. You'll see at the dock then. It's just going to be one of those spur of the moment things. Sometimes it's got to be that way, but good luck. Have fun. Back to you guys. All right, well done. That's Nicky Antonson getting ready to go um, before uh, before he does. This is 11.25 meters from Matteo Luzzeri. Gets the start that he needs on buoy number one. Now, Matteo Luzzeri has had a good run of competition so far up until this one, where he's run into 10.25 meters more often than not and uh, looks like this time around a 12 meter start is currently paying off yeah that was pretty good a little bit of a loose fall there kind of grabbed the handle early when that wind's behind you you have less tension in the rope so it's actually easier to pull that handle towards you um like i said not doesn't look too crazy windy but but you know who am i to say i'm i'm not watching the water itself i'm watching a, a video um yeah he's, he's done well this year i mean i think he ran a full three he's run a full three maybe twice already and He's making it work. He's on that, that Syndicate uh, Works one, which is obviously working very well for for a lot of the guys. Uh, we saw Will ski very well on it earlier. Uh, he's a big fan. He was, um, I don't know, I hope I'm allowed to say this, but he was probably the only fan of the of the HOVTX a few years ago. No one else seemed to like it a, a, a whole lot uh, of the pro team, but he loved it. Um, was devastated when his um, broke down, and but here he is on the, on the Syndicate one, and he now thinks it's better which is quite exciting and that's obviously where that, that, that improvement in performance is getting better than he ever has certainly since his uh, Achilles break of 2014. All right then so in the Monaco Cup in uh, round number one Matteo Lizzeri scored three halfway down 10.25 uh, meters and look came back shot. with scores of two. Look at this shot that is absolutely wonderful. Of two at 10.25 meters and just look at this here we go we have got Matteo Lizzeri Needs to run it. Quick feet in the edge change there. I'm not sure he's going to like that boy one too much. No. Oh, and brings the ski round and unfortunately not able to connect with the handle and go back uh, back across the course. But uh, didn't exactly have the start. Yeah, not happy, not happy. Understandably, um, set himself up pretty good with the with the with the start there. Took, took it headwind. Uh, but yeah, I think if we're going to look at that gate again, I'm going to say he looked a little bit on his on his heels through the gate, and he kind of threw his feet pretty quickly. And I think people always seem to think that you've got to change. I mean, I'm not Matteo knows very well what to do. I'm not saying he doesn't know, but it's it's a common uh, misunderstanding that you got to change your edge quickly. I think he just yeah he just sort of threw his feet a little bit, and it actually puts you a little bit off balance. So he kind of didn't 
didn't really get that move, and then and then yeah, they, they just didn't have any purchase with the tail. It fell in on uh, on boy two. So here we go, uh, Matteo Lazzaro looking at this instant replay here. And you know, a lot of people equate to uh, Quate Slamski and its balance and uh, and its just general motion to uh, to being on like a, on a, on a street cycle, really. Because obviously, if you come into a turn and you pitch it over too much, then there's always the risk that the back is going to is, is going to kick out and you end up sli sliding along the gravel. You know, so I mean. You, you've got you you've got to have the balance right. You've got to have the speed and the and the turn and the exit all working together to uh, to make to make that particular uh, motion within that sport effective. Yeah, I, I think it is. It, you've got to keep your weight in the middle. It's kind of like a unicycle, right? I mean, you you've got to have your weight centered. You know, uh -huh. to go with that cycling approach. Like, if you're if you're too much on the front, you're going to fall over the front. If you're too much on the back, you're going to fall out on the back. It, it doesn't it doesn't work. And yeah, I mean, like you say, with with the it's very easy to, 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 to skip out. You cannot have too much weight on the front. You've got to have you've got to have weight on the rear and uh, the nose of the ski in order to make it working efficiently. Efficiently, um, and the best way to do that is to be standing in the middle of it. All right, there, skier on the water right now. Having left the dock, it is Callum Heath. Callum, Callum he, he yeah. skied. What did he run? Half a 1075 in the first yes, round. Yes, he did. So all of these guys uh ran less than half a 1075 in the first round it's funny so there's sort of some funny results there lo lower level results um in the first round and then everyone seems to have improved i guess with the exception of Arno improved a little bit mateo improved a little bit not as much as he would have wanted but yes some good stuff here all right a lot of it a lot of uh, activity dockside as we see mateo laceri make his way back Nicholas Antonsen about to go next with quite possibly the ugliest shorts in the world. Yeah, you, you've made a few comments about those over the uh, over the last month or so that he's been having them. I actually, I'm going to embarrass him here. Nikki and I are friends, so I'm allowed to. His mum told me that she buys all his t-shirts for him. So he's he's always got these cool t-shirts, sort of like weird non-branded t-shirts like you know of an artist or a painting or something like that and I've always kind of been like oh he's got this cool sense of style it turns out his mum buys it all for him and it made me laugh I said oh Caroline is that really is that really true that you buy him she's she said, yeah yeah no but he doesn't mind he enjoys it so when did your parents stop buying new clothes I don't know mum was uh I, yeah I don't know when I in my in my teenage years when I got extraordinarily rebellious and they wouldn't they wouldn't um they wouldn't wouldn't go with it anymore Going to the dock quickly. Let's go there. All right, we're here dock side. We've got Jaime Palomino here. He got four and a half. You know, we're going into tomorrow. We, it's getting into 41 and making sure that you're getting around two ball at least, maybe a piece of three. Pressure's on tomorrow. How do you, what are you thinking? To be honest, I'm super. After the first uh, round, I kind of lost my confidence. Now I kind of gained it back up again, and it was tailwind and. I just had to smack four and see what it what it could bring me. I kind of broke over a little bit. That's why I had to try an Eastern five. But I'm super pumped for tomorrow. I, I definitely think I can try and run it. So yeah. Yeah, man. We've seen you run it this year at Swiss Pro. Uh, you know, it's that for the taking. So good luck for tomorrow and have fun. Back to you guys. All right. So with that in mind, let's bring a Callum Heath. Into uh, into the fray here on pass the number uh, pass number one two pass number two I beg your pardon he's run through thirteen this is you, now you were just distracted by that Whitney Houston remix mate aren't you I'm loving it too yeah exactly oh wait, Whoa, what, what was that I mean, getting into all kinds of trouble right off the get go strange really strange just looked like he had no but yeah this is not his best ever twelve meter pass finishing no, it a little no. better than he started. Interesting to see that replay. Looked to me like he just kind of pushed on the front and grabbed the handle at the same time. Like, he's looking behind him, he's wondering what's going on. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a, but, that, that's a strange but you one. You know, in, one, in some strange way, that might actually be the best thing that, that's happened to him going forwards because now he's figured out, okay, I've, I've got to dig deep here a little bit and just and start to slalom the way that I know how to. And uh, let's check in Dockside. Hey guys, back here under the tent, we've got Tim Tongvist. 
You had a bit of ski problems this week, huh? Yeah, sure. I had a big ski problem this week, uh, but now I forgot that. Now it's all out. I got a good first round. Good. Took that as a little practice set, hoping to improve my score on the second round. Nice. Yeah, you got five in the first round. It's looking like it's going to be a piece of three to make it to the final. So it's a big score, but we've seen you do that before. I haven't gotten a piece of three in tournament before. I have in practice a couple of times. I'm planning on taking that uh, 39 tailwind, hoping for a good start at 41. But we'll see. I mean, I got to feel how it is out there, feeling out 32 or 35, then we'll make a decision from there. All right, good luck, man. Thanks. See you out there. Back to you guys. All right, Freddie, and uh, you spoke to Tim Tornquist before. Uh, did he ever uh, reveal uh, the the airline that, uh, that lost his ski? I think it was Scandinavian Airlines. He was very gracious. I mean, I'd have been, I don't know, tagging him and everything. And I mean, my God, he, he arrived Tuesday and they arrived Friday evening. It's not right. Anyway, Caleb, 11. Much better boy won. That slight exactly. headwind. Oh, he's dropped the handle over and he's dropped the shoulder with it and he's kind of struggling Whoa. here. Come on, Callum. This is... Come on. Come on. Seriously. Oh. Well, Ugh. he's shaking his head. So he, am I. Here's, here's, here's the issue. Here's what he did on every boy that kind of stopped him from, from running that nicely was his shoulders dropping over more than his hips. He needs to be using the levers lower to the ground, lower or lower to the water, should I say. By dropping the handle over into the water and dropping his shoulder, he's using the biggest lever, which and he's already six foot two or three. He's huge. So he's just putting too much torque on that ski at the wrong time. And uh, and it's just, I mean, he's getting away with it, but it's not the sort of thing that's going to get away with it. 10, 7, 5. Um, yeah, let's have a look here. Again, so, you know, dropping that right shoulder and he's just disconnected through the wakes. Um, I think the headwind probably helped him a tiny bit there, kept the line tight. Um, but yeah, he's going to have to figure out a little bit better... Uh, you know, in, in, in the tailwind here to, to get through this and get the two, two at 10 five at, at least that he needs. All right, so what pass is he on right now? He's run through 13, run through 12. That was 11. That was 11. So he's run half in the first round here, so he's looking for an improvement at least. Well, he's certainly skiing better than he did at uh, Botas, where his best score was four and a half on 11, and his best score of the season is two and a half at 10 seven five, uh, two at 10 seven five. So he's already looking to try and uh, better that his best score of the season. Come on, there Callum. you go. There we go. That's a decent number one. This is better. This is better on number two. Round number Come on, three. He's still there. He is Come still on, there. Come on, mate. Come on. Keep going. Keep busting. Oh, 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 stuff. oh, oh, oh. what a crash. Well. Oh, he's throwing the fish. That's great. The, nice. Oh, oh, is he in pain? Oh. Is he okay? Well, he, he only held on for about three seconds too long. Just about. Um, yeah, maybe a little bit winded there. But he's all right. When you... I did, maybe he wasn't trying the fish. Maybe he was saying I'm okay. But he's shaking the head now. Anyway, well, he's swimming in. That's that's always a good sign. Yeah. Well, this is the best score of the season, which is uh, which is a good thing. Uh, the uh, the only downside is that he, he got close enough to running it, and unfortunately came up short. Yeah, he did, but he was sort of sort of in it. I mean, he, he did a lot better of a pass. Uh, in the, you know, in the tailwind on the 1075 on the shorter rope than he did at you know at, at 11, he was a lot more balanced in his shoulders and just kept kept moving, kept moving. It was much better. Then brought the handle up, and then that just sent him cartwheeling in towards the wakes. And yeah, you're, yeah, you're right. He actually held on for about two or three seconds too long on that one. I wonder what they'll give him because. You need to be in a skiing position. A skiing position is defined by the weight of the ski holding your body. Oh, sorry, the, bo the, the ski holding your body weight. So you need to be, you know, actually riding the ski as opposed to sort of skimming along the water. Um, but let's have a look. Yeah, just dropped the shoulder a little bit there, and he was oh, his shoulders were in front of his hips. But he managed to get it back. He's a big, strong boy. He walks around. He's like a he's like a titan. Um, and let's see, yeah, just try to turn it, and that, I'm going to say, is probably a four and a half. Um, good crash, though. Good crash. Yeah. Yeah, the rival's yours from uh, from way, way back in the day. I don't tend to do those ones. Uh, four and a half is confirmed there at 10.75 for Callum Heath. That bolts him up a little bit in the standings. Uh, that actually puts him in about... In about 10th place right now as we see our next competitor on the water this is nicholas antonson 
I went, whoa, here we go. 12 meter start. Bold. Well, let's, um, let, I, I'll start by telling you this, Tony. Uh, uh, Nikki was complaining about you the other day. You complained about his shorts. He was complaining about you saying that even with your vast experience in commentary, you don't know how to say his name. And he was also complaining, or maybe laughing a little bit more than complaining, that all of his friends, you know, that, that watch the webcast, they now call him Nicky Antomson, uh, which is not the way that you say his name. It's Atomson, which you know you can read. Yeah. So you know that, but you just Antomson. Uh, no, there's no there's no first N in there. Uh, so <laughs> Atomson. Okay. Atomson. There you go. So uh, so Atomson. So he's um, you've you've contributed to a new nickname for him, which I guess is pretty cool in itself. Yes. Um, but yeah, he said that it's kind of annoying that like he's he's now got a different name, um, and the the Atomsons being a big water skiing family. There's there's about uh, there's three kids that ski to an extremely high level, and there's a the the the, the, the brother, Consti, is 14 this week, and he's he's about 12 feet tall. He's an absolute monster. Um, but yeah, Atomson, not Antomson, according to Nikki. Of course. Here we go. This is Nikki Atomson. 12 meters. Yeah, and he's a, he's a powerful guy, Nicky. I mean, he's he's really good. He was my pickleball partner earlier this year when he was hanging out at Swiss. We would meet and play pickleball. We played tennis against each other. Um, of course, myself and Arno won. Uh, Vince lost uh, with Nicky, which makes a lot of sense, I think. And let's check in Dockside. Hey, guys, back on the dock. We've got Callum Heath. He's just done his best score of the year so far. Looks good. You look like you're in it for a second. Just getting a bit deep out of five. Yeah, it was, uh, wasn't the best set I've ever had in my life. But, I mean, conditions are great. Boat feels amazing. Nathan driving feels fantastic. So, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with the result. Maybe not how I ski, but the result was, was good. So. Yeah, it always gets good to get deep down that 10-7. It's so close. You know, you think you can do it next time? Yeah, I think so. Tomorrow. Good lad. All right. Thanks, Callum. Back to you guys. Callum name dropping there, uh, Nathan McGarry, who's the who's the boat driver. We've got some phenomenal boat drivers this uh, this tournament between Manuel, who drove those huge scores earlier in the men's, and Nathan. Now um, we're very lucky to have him, and actually those guys are repeating next week. Manuel and Nathan will be at um, San the, uh, the San Giovanni Prime along with Mario Pagosi, so we've got a phenomenal driving panel there too. All, All right, right Nikki, eleven tailwind. Really good offside turn, that's his trademark. And he gets a little bit on the tail there on, on 2 4, but on the back there at, th at 3. But he's, he's in this. Um, it isn't the cleanest 11 that he's ever run in his life, but it's functional. And honestly, sometimes you've got to, especially in a tailwind, you've just got to make sure you get through it. And then you can focus on the headwind pass. He set himself up, he's gone out at 12 in order to take this 10 7 5 headwind. And he would have been disappointed. He had a phenomenal, phenomenal one in the first round. Um, coming back towards the, 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 the dock end, he, he won. He's never, uh, he, before this year, he'd never run 10.75. Um, and then he ran it, I think, at the Swiss Spring earlier this year. He then ran it in uh, various Darkness. other places. He did, it, did he run it in King of Darkness as well? Yes, he did. Good for him. He did it in Monaco a week and a half ago. He also did it in Mexico in, uh, at the Under-21 Worlds, which got him a second place. And he ran five and a half in the final after running it in the first round. Um, and uh, he's, been, he's been crushing. He's on, on the upswing. I've actually known him for a number of years. They're a really nice family, the Atomsons. Um, and Nicky, uh, extremely nice young chap. Um, and yeah, I, saw, I think I saw, he came to Porto Heli in, in, in Greece, uh, maybe it would have been 2019, I think. So he'd have been about 15 and he's, he's on a you know, big old T3 maple and running these big 11s. And I was extremely impressed. Um, and I knew he was going to be a good skier then. And he's really proved himself to be so. And I think he's, he's got a big future because he's got a couple of little you know, quirks in his technique that I think he'll figure out. Um, but he's strong, he's powerful, and he's, he's got a very, very good offside, which is a huge deal. 10.75, he's going to obviously want to run it. You know, he, he can run it. He has been running it. Nice little headwind. Maybe a little narrow on that gate, potentially, but this looks like a good approach into one. He's a little on the tail. He's low with his legs into two. He's quite late, I think, but I think he can turn three. And no, nope, that's not... Oh, my God. He kissed the water, and he's over to five. And will he be able to turn it? No, he's run five. I think that he did... 
amazingly well there to continue skiing after pushing so hard on the front of the ski. So he'll be frustrated. He'll be frustrated. This is a guy that does not like to um, to do badly on a water ski. None of us do, but he he, he he's a he's a man who wears his uh, emotions on his sleeve. He lost in table tennis the other day when we were hanging out here to one of the local uh, girls, and he was not happy about it. He was making all sorts of excuses. Um, but uh, yeah, he's so. Let's just have a look. Like one and two were fine, but he was quite late. And then, and then three. Watch how far over the front he gets. He, I mean, you can't see it from that angle, but he like had his hips all the way back and his chest all the way forward. And then, yeah, just not, not it, not what he needed. Yeah, and just things fell apart from that point onwards. But he managed to get round five, and uh, and he's got it. Him and Jaime Palomino are very, very good friends. Very, very good friends. And they, you know, I, I was hanging out with them a little bit this week, and they're just at each other constantly. So I know that Nicky will, even though he hasn't put himself in a, a position at this point to make the final, he'll, he's put himself in a position to have the upper hand on Jaime, who ran four and a half. So, um, yeah, that'll that'll make him happy at least, maybe a small consolation. Very deep there with the legs into two, and just it's hard to bring that back. Not not the moment for, for Nicky, and, you know, he'll be frustrated. Oh, man, that's crazy. Crazy he managed to even get around four from that position. It's incredible. All right, so uh, Nicky uh, Atomson. Again, uh, getting this uh, good to go for five. It is an improvement, two and a half buoy improvement based upon round number one, but probably won't uh, won't be enough to send him through to the next round of the competition. We won't really know until we uh, get to the uh, to the third in uh, competitive round of uh, pro men's skiing. I am Tony Lightfoot. He is Freddie Winter. Update updating his Instagram, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Keeping in touch with the world, mate. Even in touch with the world outside, you gotta love it. All right, so next skier on the water from Italy is Carlo Elias. And uh, should we check in dockside? Let's check yeah. in dockside. Yeah, I think so. Goes back with Nicky again after he said he got five at 10 7. So close. It looked like a great start, and then three just came forward a bit, huh? Yeah, unfortunately, a three ball like collapsed in front. And I was like, okay, I just have to hold on and try to get around four and five. But yeah, I was like, okay, five, five S turn is a safer option. So I took it and I hope in the next round, maybe I managed to run it then. Yeah, like I saw you trying to crank the four. It didn't quite pay off, but it's S turn that five. It's a good backup score ready for tomorrow and hopefully do it tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited for tomorrow. Let's see. Good job, bud. Back to you guys. You're welcome, buddy. All right, so looking out towards uh, Carlo Elias. This should be a 13 meter start. We haven't seen too many people going on anything shorter than this. But we'll see what he does with the zero offsetting at uh, uh, Bravo 2. Looking good. Sensational skiing so far from Carlo Elias. There we go. Opening pass under his belt, six buoys. And uh, I believe we're uh, take, taking a trip back to the dock. Hey, we're back on the dock. We've got Stevie Island. Got three at 10-7 in the first round. Looking to improve on that. What are you thinking? Oh, I'm thinking I need to go out and swing for the rafters, man. I'm ready. And uh, it's going to be a tail 139 because I'm going out at 13. So it should be exciting. Yeah, you know, it feels good out there. Nathan feels good. Everyone's been saying it. So tailwind's not too bad, we've been hearing. So you, what are you thinking about that? Well, I mean, you made it look so easy, bro. So I just got to go and copy you, right? Yeah, not just a skier, but also a guitar player as well. He played for us last night. It was super good. Have fun, man. Appreciate good luck. Back to you guys. All right, then. Opt up yeah, alert. Coming up, Carlo Elias has decided to skip 12 meters and go straight to 11.25.
interesting move. I guess that meant he wanted to feel the win before making the decision on his 11. If you go out on 12, you're stuck with that decision. If you go out on 13, you can figure it out. And honestly, this shouldn't be too much of a big deal for him. He, uh, you know, he's very capable. This guy is a... Uh, he's done this a time or two. Yeah, he's a veteran, that's for sure. I've been skiing against him for many, many years. Um, on an HO, which sort of, I had a chat with him earlier, it made me laugh. Let's just, what he was doing? He dropped the shoulder a little bit. He's on the, the heels of three, but four is going to be a good side. He's deep with the legs again, and we'll get around six, but that's, again, not, not the exactly. best he's ever had. But, you know, again, just just get through it. Just get through it. You'd, and and, and, a, and a, a, a seasoned skier, someone that knows what they're doing, will go, yeah, okay, that was a tailwind pass. I don't really need to worry about it. Um, yeah, yeah, it wasn't the best pass I've ever had in my life, but he's, he's, in, he's in it to win it, and he's got a headwind 10.75 ahead of him. Like I was saying, so he's on a, on a, on an, uh, a syndicate here, on an HO, something that a lot of people seem to be moving to. He's wearing an HO t-shirt today. Um, and a guy that's always been on good. He's always been on a good, um, or at least a good made ski. I think he was on a Monte Carlo for a couple of years that was made in, in, in the good factory. Um, but yeah, it's strange to see him on a, on a, on a, on, on a syndicate. Um, but he's making it work. And I mean, there you go, he's, he's here and very, uh, very nice to see him too. All right, a good skiing there from, uh, from Carlo Elias. And uh, and I tell you what, there's you know with the, with the Syndicate Works of skis, they've got the two models. Obviously, the Works One and Works Two. Uh, one tends to react to maybe a little bit better, more conducive to like the, uh, the incredibly short lines, while the other one tends to react better to uh, to some of the uh, the opening passes. I don't but, know. Uh, I'm, I'm we'll, going to debate we'll you on that in a second, Tony. But let's see, Carlo, 1075 must run pass if he wants to have a chance. Yeah, let's uh, have a look at 1075. Works Ooh. too. It's an okay one. If no, no, he's deep. He's deep. It's not good. He wants. Yeah, that's Ooh, not it. So he's yeah. kind of him and his compatriot Matteo, not massively dissimilar. Honestly, little little Healy at one pulled very hard to two. Uh, didn't get the speed he needed, and, and, and that's a one and a half. So very, very, very similar. Um, let's just watch this quickly. It's an okay. Yeah, he just dropped his weight over. You see that spare arm coming up and dropping over top. I think that kind of just put that ski a little bit more on the edge than he might have wanted to. Um, and just brought the outside arm across, and then it just stopped the ski cold. Yeah. All right, Tony, tell me. So your your theory is that the one of the Syndicate work skis is tends better for long line, and one is better for short line. Tends to tends to work a little bit more conducively for uh, for the for the skiers that uh, that really want more turn out of the ski on something like like 39 and a half off or 41 off while sacrificing a little bit on the earlier passes while the converse may be true with the other one yeah I, you know what i don't know if i can agree with you there because at the start of the year we saw last year um uh, the 01 was sort of the star of the show will had a fantastic year ran a bunch of 10 7 uh, 10 2 5s he won four tournaments uh, on that ski john skied really well on it and then in some way, you know, Benny was riding that 0-2, um, you know, and, and doing well on it, but it was almost like the sort of unloved uh, child that lived in the cupboard under the stairs. The Harry Potter of, of the HO family, if you will. But this year, we saw start of the year, Swiss Pro, first, uh, first time we saw someone other than Benny ride it. Uh, Rob Hazelwood goes out and runs three and a half at 10.25. Um, and then... So he's loving that ski. He got on it a handful of weeks previously, and then I'm going to say that um, that the, the the big almost surprise to me with that ski this year was that Jamie Bull got on it apparently two or three, four weeks before the Botas tournament of a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, whenever it was, um, and just ran 39 on it first time, having not got on with the Syndicate Works one. And my God, does she look good on it? I mean, you know, I, I've watched Jamie a lot. I, I watch a lot of the women skiers. Um, you know, before I go and get ready for my skiing uh, when I'm at tournaments. And, you know, Jamie, she's been on that Alpha since forever, and I know it would have been a stress for her, but that to be on a ski that was four or five years old uh, in terms of the model and not being able to get off anything else, uh, get off it onto anything else. Well, sure enough, apparently first set, she runs 10.75 on that works too. So, and I'll tell you what else I thought was at the Botas tournament, I watched her, I think it was in the final where she just, she didn't really turn a boy that good. Um, the whole way through the, 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 her 10.75. Did, like, she didn't have a 10 out of 10 turn, which you often need as a female at 10.75. But she kind of just got, you know, between six and seven out of 10 turns the whole way down, but ran it easy. So I think that that ski is a really good ski 
Um, obviously, it works. You know, it works better yeah. um, for her than than, than, the, than the 01. So I'm going to no say that your theory is suspect. Okay. Let's say it just need, it, it needs proving. proving. Okay, Alpha 2 this time around. He uh, started off with a C2 a little bit earlier. Now, the only other skier that we've known that have gone in on C2 is Thomas de Gatsby, who we'll see in a little bit. But uh, this is uh, a significant change here. This is a man who likes changes. Um, he, well, we'll get to that in a minute after the dock just now. Hey, guys, on the dock with Carlo. Not quite what you wanted, mate. No, not at all. I mean, this morning I had a really good feeling and uh, actually I tried to take the risk to do 38 out tail. And at 39, the gate, it wasn't what I was expecting. So I was already outside and say, mm, it's not as great. So after one, instead of realize what I was about to do it, I just tried to go hard on two and I got stuck in there. Yeah, it's quite a strong wind at the moment. You know, some people are doing 39 tail, some people are doing 39 headwind. Uh, what do you think the play is at the moment? Uh, well, we have to look at the number after, but what I can say, it's really about the way you feel comfortable to just jump a pass or just take the risk and ski classic, the same rhythm that you have in your mind as a classic set that you can have at home as well. So it's really hard to tell. I had, I think I had a good strategy because my 38 was a little sketchy, but not too much, and at 39 I felt great. All right, mate, well, good luck for tomorrow. Hopefully you can get it together tomorrow and uh, have fun. Back to you guys. Carlo Elias with one and a half at 10.75 meters, actually the only skier that didn't improve upon their uh, round one score out of the uh, out of skiers that we've seen so far. Here we go, shaming team in Ireland. I'm, I'm not shaming you, I'm just, I'm just, just telling just you the describing. facts. The truth hurts, I guess, sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. Um, Stevie started out the tour of Europe on a Lapointe. And then for whatever reason, he's ended up on a good. Uh, he switched it out just before Lacano. Um, I, I don't know if he's, if he probably was, you know, sometimes no matter what's happening, if, if it is the skewer or it's not, you, you just need to make a change. And I think that, um, you know, maybe that's what he's doing with his letter as well. He changed his letter. Look at that view there. Wasn't that a Cheryl Crow song? What's that? Look a change that. will do you good. A change will do you good. There you go. There you um, go. I'll follow you with the Cheryl Crow references there, Tony. <laughs> All right then, so here's the leaderboard of taking into account the scores from the round previous to this one and the scores that we've seen so far. And uh, major move there, obviously, Tom Paul with two at 10.25 meters, uh, getting up uh, into about the top six or seven at this time. Yeah, and we can see that wind. It is, it, it's not, it's certainly not nothing. Um, when you can see those those ripples come through, it's like, it looks like it's almost a, a slight cross tailwind, which would mean that maybe one, three, five coming back would be a little bit easier. Uh, not by much, but a little bit. Um, maybe, maybe uh, a little bit of a push on the gate as well. 11 meters, must run. I think he ran three, 10, seven, five in the first round. Let's see what he does here. It's the headwind. He's, quite, he's pulled pretty hard through that gate. Um, this is not bad. And that's actually a bit deep there out of three, four is fine, and then, yeah. All right, aggressively making his way through that run. No worries there for, uh, for Stephen Island. What I, what I noticed there on the gate was that he, he turns in and he, he leveraged very hard, but he leveraged slightly sort of backwards. He had more weight, I would say, on his back foot than his front foot. So that's like sort of, I, I say, you know, pedaling a bicycle with the back brake slightly on. A lot of effort, maybe not as much result as you'd like. So he's, you know, if he's going to put that much effort in, he wants to move his weight slightly forward. So he's riding in the middle of the ski. That's where you're going to get the most speed. Um, but anyway, not to be too critical, but that, that was just the thing that stood out for me on that gate. Um, but yeah, he's through. He's had that nice, nice little tailwind, uh, nice little headwind 11. Very good pass, really, overall, no, no dramas. But again, he knows what he needs to do. He needs to run that 10.75. He's taking it tailwind. Um, it hasn't hurt a lot of the skiers. I, I wouldn't say that there's anyone... Actually, maybe... How many 10.75s have we seen run so far this round? So we've seen, we saw Aaron Davies' first skier run at tailwind. Yeah. We saw... Um, who was Tom the second? Paul. Tom Poole ran at tailwind. Yep. And there's no one else run it, right? Uh, no one else. So so actually we're, we're two to zero in terms of tailwind versus headwind, 10.75. So actually the strategy 
is maybe not working so well. So maybe that tells the skiers coming that if they want to run a 1075, take it tailwind and then they'll have that beautiful, nice little headwind. Anyway, we'll see what Steve and I do. We'll see who, if he can follow the trend. And again, just load on the tail through that one. He's only run this pass once this season over at Swiss, uh, the, uh, the pro slalom event. He got in half a buoy at 10.25 meters and unfortunately not going to get the opportunity to do likewise here on the strength of that three buoy count at 10.75 meters. Yeah, I think he needs to get his weight a little further forward through that gate and he'll find that he, you know, instead of having, because of course the, it's not just that you're not getting, generating the speed, it's that you have more load to deal with off second wake and you want to maximize your efficiency to increase the, uh, you know, your, your, your speed to effort ratio. The more pull you have towards the wakes, the more you have to deal with off the second wake that's pulling you down the lake. So that's, uh, that could be something that I, you know, if I was his coach, I would say, hey, just, just work on that a touch. Get a bit more middle through the gate. Um, and that will just help just a, t a tiny, tiny bit. It'll just do that a little bit more at one. All right, once again, uh, we're looking at the instant replay uh, for, uh, for Stephen Island. Uh, just not getting the traction that he really needed to off buoy number two and it was just a little bit too little too late. So Stephen Island has a pair of threes. So he's he's a, he's par. He's not going up, he's not going down. Yeah. Who we got? Tim. Yeah, Tim with the you know let's let's call him the unlucky chap of the of the week. I mean to, he's changed his key at least a couple of times. Still aside, running aside from Aaron Davis in round one. Uh, well, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. That's 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 definitely fair. Um, equipment malfunctions, equi losing your equipment. And uh, I said to him yesterday, I said, "Well, Tim, you know, have you ever heard of an air tag, mate?" And he goes, "My God, can you stop telling me about air tags?" He's heard it from everyone this week. <laughs> uh, but they are bloody useful. If you're a water skier, go get yourself an air tag. They're 25 bucks, and you'll be able to find out where they are. Anyway, going to the dock. Okay, so we're on the dock, we got Stevie Island, just come off, got three at 39. It's okay, it's not quite what you wanted, but it looks like it's a, quite a strong wind out there. Yeah, it was a bit windy, I knew taking the tailwind was a bit of a risk, but I mean, two at 41, may not even get in, we'll see. I hope it does, because you got two, that's awesome. But I mean, if you need a three, I'm not going to get in the tailwind, so that was my idea. Right, you know, it, that, it's strong wind, you got to take risks. Didn't quite pay off. You've been changing your skis recently, I hear, as well. So always a hard thing to get your head around. But we'll try again tomorrow, and hopefully everything's good. Third round, best round, right? Let's go. Exactly. Good job, man. Thanks. Back to you guys. Well, it sounds like he's going to leave it all out there on uh, round number three, uh, Stephen Island. Yeah, it's, I'm going to say that you're going to see a lot of the guys that are that are comfortably qualified not ski that third round tomorrow you know conserve their energy four rounds in two days as much as we do it in head-to-heads it's it's not necessarily what you want especially we've had to ski you know so much the last few weeks in terms of um in terms of tournament rounds anyway tim tornquist mr air tag here we go here he comes in at 13 meters and i mean a bloody good job he did today back on his own equipment runs five at 1075 having not had a practice shout out to Costantinos who's been our sort of, I don't know, our, our, our guardian angel, our saviour, our, our, uh, certainly the man that's been feeding us this week. He's been a um, chap who's been uh, looking after us. He, and he gets the call last night that the, that the skis are at the airport. He drove three hours to Athens. He searched two hours at the airport for the skis and then he drove back. I mean, the guy, the guy did an eight hour round trip for, for, for Tim's skis. And if you, you know, when you've got someone that's going to go to that length for you and for the tournament you know he just wants everyone to have a good tournament um, you know you're, you're inspired to do very well and it's just it's emblematic just that one story of the of the attitude that we've seen here of the way that we've been treated yeah. everyone wants us to do well there's no negativity there's no sort of you know holding back everyone's coming up to you and you know giving you a high five giving you a hug it's uh, it is it truly is a wonderful tournament you know and, and led in no small part by by the the very eccentric George Hazis, yeah. who who will see tomorrow cheering up the crowd like he was earlier, uh, a man that is uh, someone I'm very very fond of for putting you on know, this tournament for the for the enthusiasm um, and, and and for the ambition really. And 
uh, and Konstantinos, uh, what, uh, that was his name, right? Konstantinos, yeah. Konstantinos, I mean, had to go through all of those to, all of those toll roads to get to Athens Airport and get through all of the all of the uh, tobacco smoke on the uh, outside of the airport terminal as well. Have to suffer through all of that as well. Yeah, he's a, he's a good chap. He's a very good chap. He's worked for, with with George for five years. He said, and I mean, you know, you wouldn't. I don't know, like. He's a guy who's been giving us all lifts this week and nothing's been an issue, so we're very grateful. He bought everyone lunch today. Nice. It's been incredible, yeah. Yeah. Just top man. Top man, top he, man. He, he, if we had a man of the tournament as opposed to a skier of the day, he would he would get it. Well, him and George would go battle for it. I think the skiers would almost be, you know, when, when you've got someone that feeds you, you know, between tournament rounds, um, you know, I think a lot of the skiers would be quite into it. Anyway, let's see. Let's have a look at Tim. We're, yeah, we're, exactly. We're getting into the weeds here a little bit. Just um, a little. Not, not his most beautiful 12 of all time. One and two were very good. I think he grabbed again the handle. I mean, anyone watching that isn't familiar with changing skis, changing skis is very hard. They are always slightly different. It's, I mean, I'm going to say, you know, in an extremely unbiased way, that you know, D3s, they're very, very consistent, but they're always slightly different. He, he borrowed a, an Ion S, which is the sort of precursor model to this one with a slightly different flex pattern uh, this week and got on with it quite well. Unfortunately, well, fortunately, he got his skis in the end and he decided to switch back which again was a ballsy move but um, here he is he's in the mix he I think he said in his interview earlier he's, he's, he's run two at 10.25 um, a handful of times I'm not sure how many times he's done it in tournament but I think he's capable of running 10.75 he's a another big strong chap someone that's really capable of, of, of getting putting some load behind the boat but he's got a nice technique too little forward at two little back at three uh, it's kind of just decent it's very decent it's it, it, it's easy this this is easy breezy i think that was better than this 12 meter pass yeah he's got the 1075 in the tailwind and remember maybe instead of going 12 off the dock and, and having only two passes before the big pass maybe he he just wanted to have more passes on the ski every single pass every single turn every single molecule of water that you can cover means that you're learning something about the ski your body's adjusting so he ran his five earlier, um, which was a, you know, not a, not a bad score by any means, um, but he knows he's got to go bigger than that. So here here we go. Uh, he's got his 10.75 again, slight tailwind. But again, we we talked about a second ago. The 10.75s that have been run in this round so far, of which there have been two, have been run both tailwind. I think the winds even come down, maybe slightly. It's funny. I mean, I'm lo I'm looking behind me through you know the glimpse of the water. Actually, I can. It is actually quite windy. It is more windy than it looks from this. Uh, from this webcast, from this video feed, uh, you can see just the sunny glints coming over the top of the water. Yeah, you can you can see it there. There's there, there's a, a good old push. Um, but you know, tailwinds are not always bad. It often, I find it's kind of easier to get a good gate on a tailwind. You pull out a little bit early, you get a little bit of, uh, of, of of nice glide. Let's see this. It is a must-run pass. Two people have run it so far, both tailwind. Let's see if Tim can do it. That's not a bad one. He's gonna easy. That's a great two. It's a phenomenal two. Come on, Tim. It's a good, good-ish three. We can match. Oh no, he's oh, blown the he tail. Oh, he blew the tail. Blew the tail. That's miserable because two was so good. Now, why did he blow the tail? What, what happened there? He pushed too much on the nose, and we, I talked earlier about how you got to have the, the the nose of the ski and the tail of the ski sort of equally balanced uh, by standing in the middle of it. Well, he moved from the tail of the ski to the tip of the ski, unweighting the tail, so the tail just popped out of the water, had nothing holding it down, and in the water. That's a shame for Tim. Um, he will be he'll be frustrated with that because actually, you know, one one was was definitely solid. Two was spectacular. I'm going to say three reared up a little bit. When you rear up, you know, that much. I mean, that's an excellent turn, really excellent turn. When you rear up as much as he did here, you kind of have to you know rush into the middle of the ski, and uh, his hips are back, and then and then watch the nose that you know that, that water just breaking really far forward and and, and, and not uh, you know. But you, when you see the the, the side of the of the ski. Um, with sorry, the water breaking on the side of the ski go from the tail to the front very abruptly. That's when you see a bl uh, blowout like that. Right, you are, and I mean, it all started with the gate shot. You know, I mean, a good extension round number one, and it was about 85% of where he needed to be so far as that turn was concerned. And then, then it was a case of him just trying to settle down, back down quickly, and unfortunately, he has snatched at the rope a little bit on number three. And uh, in a vain attempt to to get back on uh, on track, blew the uh, the tail of the fin out, and uh, it's a case of goodbye, Mr. Bond. Very good. Very 
Do you suffer from insomnia? I do, more and more. Yeah, I've become, I've become more neurotic as I get older and not, uh, not sleeping as well, sadly. Um, I try and get to bed as early as possible this week, but with the, with the Greek dinners finishing so late, it hasn't been so easy. Uh, we had a mass exodus from the very, very nice dinner that we all attended last night. All the pros suddenly, after being accused of being babies by Mr. Hatziz, we all left about 11 or 10.45 to kind of get to bed. Very important, you know, for the, for the ladies who, who were out early. I mean, I, I, I would be going to bed at 8 o'clock if I had to be up that early to ski. But um, fortunately, I'm a little bit later on, but yeah. I wanted to get to bed a little bit early, earlier on that night. That's why I didn't make it uh, last night. But anyway. You missed out, mate. All right, then. Let's check in with our dock side. Hey, guys. Back on the dock with Corey Vaughan. You had a good first round. Running, running the 39, it's, you know, it's, it's going to be piece of three to get in the final, it looks like at the moment. How are you feeling ahead of that? Yeah, well, the wind was up earlier when I skied, it went down, now it's back. So I am thinking about some strategies, I'm not yet sure. I'm going to start at 13 meters to give the most options, go down and back, and then make a decision about what I do. Yeah, so you're going to you're going to start at 13, maybe think about the opt up after the second pass. Okay. All right, we'll keep our eye on that. Uh, but. You know, what do you prefer? Do you prefer a little tailwind, a little headwind? What's your preference? A little bit either way I think is great. Right now it's, it's moving. You're looking at these flags, they're standing out of sideways. So um, when it gets to be like that, then all of a sudden we have to bring strategy into play. So I'm going to feel it and then I'll decide. All right, good luck out there. Have fun. Back to you guys. All right then, so uh, continuing on, good to have you people engaged in the, in the live chat. And uh, here's a question uh, for, for you guys uh, going forward, having seen uh, uh, Corey Vaughan's new hairdo and uh, the old uh, mustache and goatee. Who do you believe he looks like? He looks like Steampunk V from V for Vendetta. Steampunk V? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's like the Guy Fawkes mask. There you go. <laughs> yeah, the anonymous mask comes from V for Vendetta. That's yeah. what he looks like with, with, with the, the very strange hairdo to match. All right, then, with that in mind, let's check in on Dockside. Hey, guys, back on the look. Tim Tong Vist, you went for the gamble, you went to the 39 tail, trying to get a, you know, a headwind 41. Just allow you to pop your fin at four, then. It looked like a good start. What are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, that was the strategy to gamble a little bit, taking 39 tail. But that gate down there, like the glide, is a little bit tricky. I mean, I thought I was okay in the course, but that that gate, I was so like slack slack rope in the turn, and that, that kept me down course throughout the whole pass. And I tried to get, go for a big four ball, didn't didn't end up happening. So yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those turn or burn moments. You're like you're thinking, just got to go for it. Well, you've still got one more round to do it. Good luck for tomorrow. We'll see you then. Back to you guys. All right, skier on the water right now is Sasha Deska, who's uh, uh, gone through uh, his opening pass, I believe, or about to. Here's our format, three rounds, uh, top eight women. And uh, yes, he's going to come back in on uh, pass number two, Sasha Deska of uh, France. Now, he's a skier with a huge amount of potential uh, to uh, place himself on the podium yet. So far, he, uh, he needs to redeem himself first based upon his uh, five at 10.75 meter uh, foray uh, in, the, uh, in the first round, uh, uh, Freddie. Yeah, kind of had a bit of a dodgy two there. I didn't watch it, I watched it live. And um, yeah, he, he turned two. He, he missed Lacano last week, having initially been scheduled to go in order to sort of mess with his, his setup. I think he was set, sent a new ski um, and he, he came back and he looked really good the first three passes and then his fourth pass he got a good one uh, two was was strange he didn't, didn't get the two he needed and then three was hard and uh, hit six so he'll be looking to do obviously a little bit better and he's very capable guys guys you know been on a bunch of podiums he's actually won a couple of pro events I think he won the Lacano pro in like 2018 I think um, and the 2019 uh, Andy Mapple Prime. So he's, you know, he's capable, and those are big fields. So um, 
yeah, having a bit of a, you know, maybe a tough, t tougher time than he'd like uh, right now. But he's he's certainly, like you said, got the huge potential. All right, there we see uh, Corey Vaughn about to take the water. The uh, the wind is uh, still uh, still a little bit up and down at the at the moment. Uh, it's uh, certainly uh, very much a, a a present force here on uh, the. Uh, this course here at Caiaphas. Yeah, it's funny, you can't see it from this angle really. You can't see that wind, but for sure you can see it um, from from uh, from the side of the lake. This is a very good living. Oh yeah. yeah there's nothing wrong with that Picture whatsoever. perfect there. Yeah, really good. And, and and just like we saw earlier, like just look really, really good for his first few passes. And I think, you know, when you're getting used to a new ski, there's some, there's some quirks. I believe it's a new ski. Um, there's some quirks. Uh, there's some different stuff. And, and I think that, um, you know, you, you, you get a little bit off and you don't know how to get back on uh, during a pass, especially a pass as short as 10.75, but this looks good. Good load across the back of the boat and able to direct all of that energy out as, uh, as far as he can get. And then hooking up and just reattaching himself to the line with the, uh, with the outside part of his body. And uh, sounds simple. But the execution very seldom is. Yeah, very nice headwind, uh, 11, 38 off there. Let's see what the, the tailwind is. Um, yeah, Corey enjoying himself there. It, so a lot of the girls that were sort of hanging around, I think they're junior skiers, they all had the cornrows going earlier this week. And then, uh, yeah, I, I, I walked into the, to the place where we're all hanging out and I saw Corey in there getting his, uh, his, his hair done. And I just knew, of course. So if there's one person to do it, it's Corey. <laughs> 10 5 tailwind. All right, here we go. Sasha Deska. And, oh, a little bit of a delay off number two, but if there's anyone that can make it back, it is Sasha Deska, but unfortunately at this time, it's a three buoy count at 10.75 meters. And our second skier to have uh, performed less than what he did in round one. Yeah, yeah, third off Tim actually, but um, yeah, decent one. But again, that boy too was strange because he, he just looked so dialed and his onside looked so good at, at the longer lines. And then it was very, very similar, I think, to what what he had in the first round around the boy, and then just kind of you know got high sided, ended up with his weight on the wrong part of the ski, and he you know he skis with his hips back already. So when you when your hips go back even more, I think it's hard to get connected um, through through the wakes. Uh, and yeah, I mean, he'll be disappointed. It is, you know, I don't know. The, the guy, the guy is capable. There's no doubt about it. He's a very, very, very good skier. This guy's beaten me a number of times. Um, we beat me in a European Championship final in 2018. We had a runoff for the win, and, and I ran. He ran four, and I ran three and a half, and, and he took it, took the, took the title away from me. And yeah, it's sort of, it's surprising to see him not run, run the scores that, that he's run consistently over the years. But I mean, he's. He's gonna. He'll figure it out. You know that he's he's a young um, young guy in the start of the field. I think he's 31, and we're all you know. Look at Will today. He's 40. Maybe he's 40. 41. Yeah. Is he 40? I think his birthday's in August. Nathan. Yeah. He'll, so, he'll, so he'll, he'll turn 41 turning this year. Turning 41. He's a high 40, and he will. And he ran 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 41. I, there's. I don't think there's ever been anyone that's run 41 at 41. So it'll be interesting to see if Will can do it in, the, you know, in a month's time or whatever. Uh, when we come back for California, for Travers, for Malibu Open, for the Mastercraft Pro and for the World Championships. Right you are. So, skier on the water right now out of Bumpus in Virginia in the United States. This is Cory Vaughn. I, um, when he told me he was from Bumpus, Virginia, I thought he was joking. Like, well, well, like when people say, BF nowhere, uh, you know. I did. I was like, I thought he was saying like, bump ass. <laughs> I didn't think it was a real place, um, but it is. I've been there a handful of times actually. I've been, uh, I passed through a few times, and it's a, uh, it's a glorious place where he resides and, and works, and raises his, uh, his his child with Amelia, who I imagine is probably watching. Sad not to see her here with with with, uh, with the little one. And it's a favourite site of our mutual friend uh, Bob Marley. That's that's true. Yeah, Bob Bob is there a fair bit, and yeah, it's a uh, it's a it's a really lovely place. And he runs a great ski school. He's adding to, uh, to his facilities there and putting 
um, you know, places to, to stay, um, to, to, to bring your whole family for a week or whatever it is, or, or your friendship group. And it, I mean, I, I can recommend it. I've spent some, some wonderful days there. Had a, a, I would call it a stag do, maybe some people call it a bachelor party there of our friend. He put on Paul O'Hara's uh, bachelor party and over there and can't tell you all the stuff that happened, of course. Of course. But it was, uh, it was a good old time. Here we go, Corrie Vaughan. This is the opening run, 13 meters. Now I'm really interested to see, you know talk about the strategy. I said when Carlo skied, you know he might do 13 and then see about it. I've done, I've definitely done that. I've, I've definitely gone out before and gone. I'm going to see what the how windy it is on the first pass and to make a decision on the second pass. Corey said he's going to do the first pass and the second pass and then take a decision. So maybe he's going to opt up to 39. So it'd be very interesting if he's going to do that. We're going to go to the dock and see who we got. All right, so we've got Rob Hazelwood here. What, your fourth seed at the moment? Yeah, tied with Tigas. Yeah, you got three. That's a solid score. It's looking like some people are getting some big scores at the moment. What are your tactics going into this round? Um, three is always a little... Well, it never used to be. It always used to be quite relaxing. But yeah. now it's a little bit of a nervous one. Um, just go, to be honest. I'm probably more relaxed than I should be about the score, but I feel kind of at ease. I've had some bad first rounds these past few events, so it's nice to be able to kind of go, okay, you have a solid score. It's gonna be back up at least, hopefully. So just go out there, push what I can, test this Tailwind 39, that's gonna be a challenge in itself. So we'll see. So you're definitely taking 41 headwind, get as many as possible. Uh, yeah, just test out the head Tailwind, as you said. Yeah, my kind of attitude's always been, if you can't deal with this wind, you probably aren't ready for it, you know? Like, I'm not ready to run 41 if I can't win this as a Tailwind 39. So um, yeah, the challenge is on. All right, good luck, mate. Have fun. See you out there. Back to you guys. All right, Corey Vaughan. 12 meters. And you know, and you know, Freddie, the one, one thing that kind of strikes me a little bit with Corey Vaughan, especially on the opening pass, is his ability to ski one speed, basically, throughout the entirety of the pass. I mean, there's no discernible rise and shift in acceleration and deceleration uh, between the turn and the wake and all of that. No, I think you're right. I think that's very that's very true. Um, he's very smooth. He favours his offside um, fairly unusually, um, but he's he's got a lot of technique. He's a guy that started pretty late. There's an amazing story of him just sort of turning up, age 22, 23, having never run into 39 um, down in Okahili Park, and was like, I'm going to make this work, and he did. Look at him now. You know, he's been on pro podiums a handful of times. He's uh, He's doing better and better. He's had it actually his best start to the year for a number of years. He got on that KD ski. He said that he got on it and just loved it immediately. Felt at home. And he's doing really well on it. He feels more powerful. And he, he ran three and a half at... Oh, here we go. He's opting up. We, as, as we said, I mean, it's going to be interesting. And, and I mean, going from 35 to 39 is no joke. Uh, of course, it means that if he misses this pass... It'll be a score of 38. It'll be a score of 38. He doesn't care about that because... Doesn't, a score of 38 is not going to help him. He had the half earlier. He's outside. Of, he is the last gear that's outside of the, the final spots right now. But he needs a two. He really needs a two. Or he needs more than two. A two and a quarter would, would be a lot tastier than a, than a two. But before he gets to that situation, he needs to run 10.75. It's an easy gate. Maybe too easy, I would say. But that's a really good Look one. Look at this. And Look at this. Yeah. He's, 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 he's narrow at three, I think. Um, but he's still... Oh, he's will still he, will he get at the five he needs? It's going to be tricky. He's still there. He's still there, you know. No. Whoa! Wow, that's a good crash. Spin me right round. Dead or alive? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I've got that reference. Cheryl Crow you can have, mate, but uh, dead or alive, I like my 80s music. All right, so there we go, Corey Vaughn. Uh, I don't know how much of a piece of six he got. I think, I, I just said he got around it. I think, well, that was my first thought anyway. Um, but it's not going to be enough. So he's got a, so far he's got a five. Uh, uh, sorry, a five and a half, I believe, or five, and, and, a, and a half at 10.5. So he's, he's just on the outside looking in. He's in ninth spot. Is he in ninth spot? No, maybe he's in tenth spot because Aaron's got the... We got ha we've had two major improvements. We got Tom Paul and, uh, and Aaron Davies with their scores at 10.25 metres. He was he just see three, he's suddenly narrow. I think he came up a little bit early, and that headwind maybe just kind of just catching him, and I think that kind of put him off. Four was not it. He doesn't love that, that onside turn to him too much, and five was always going to be a bit tricky. Yeah, he did bloody well to actually stay on the ski. Did he get around six? Can't see from that angle. I want to say he probably did. 
Anyway, it doesn't Probably make a huge five difference. five and a quarter. But actually, sorry, because he didn't run it, because he opted up, his score is at 38. So his score yeah. is, it's either a five or a five and a half at 38 officially in the record books. Easy gate, probably too easy of a gate, I think, in that headwind. You need to go a little bit harder there. Uh, but one was very, very good. A little bit forward into two. Two, grab the handle early. And then watch him here. It just suddenly is narrow. Watch, he, he, he flays his arm in the air. He flings it in the air because he suddenly he's, he's trying to get that little bit of extra, that inch or two outside of boy three. And from there, it's going to be tricky. It was going to be tricky. And, and, and let's see. Let, do we, you know, again, doesn't matter. He's got the worst score of the round, technically, even, even if not. Uh, oh, no, I think he went inside of it. Anyway, what do I know? Very slow motion fall there. We're going to okay, head to the dock. Okay, so let's head back to the dock. <laughs> that was very worthwhile. That was very worthwhile. We, we, we got a, I think Red Bull are a sponsor here, so maybe that was why. Quite possibly. So this is Brando. So Brando is definitely in the final. I wonder if we can pull up a leaderboard just for a second. Uh, Brando is definitely in the final for the moment. He's got, he's got two, he's got a two, yeah, uh, which put which puts him on level pegging with Tom Paul, of course. With Tom Paul, but Tom Paul has an, a far inferior, uh, a very inferior backup score to what Brando is capable of. So if, if Brando, Brando can, can run his eleven, he will be ahead of Tom Paul. Absolutely. Of course, there is that third round tomorrow where where you know you go off the dock and you start realizing that. Well, I think I think that official score is probably pass. incorrect because it, it would definitely be five at thirty-eight, five at eleven because because um, he opted up. So, Corey, yeah, disappointing for Corey. I mean, you're so close, but yet so far, it really is a case of if you're an inch away, you're a mile away when you opt up, and that's the risk he took. Had a decent start. Why is his ski off? I don't know. Official score for Corey Vaughan is five at 11.25 meters on the strength of their opt up. And uh, the line is coming in, the ski is coming in. Uh, I don't know. Uh, oh. Uh, I swapped the, okay, the so, okay, so let's clarify a little bit. Uh, we've got uh, the choice of two lines, right? There's the choice of two ropes, yep. Yep. Um. There's, uh, there's the syndicate rope and the S line. Yeah, Syndicate Rope in the S-Line. I don't know you know, which one most people are choosing, but he would rather have the S-Line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, funny that he... I don't know. <laughs> just Myself, when I'm sitting in the water ready to go, I, I'm checking which rope I got just to make sure. But Hang on a second. There's, so we're hearing on in our ears that Brando asked for the HO. I don't know what's going on here. Wow. Um, well, it's funny they're not going back to the dock. I, I don't understand. Um, well, anyway, he looks confused. We're a bit confused. Uh, I guess at some point we're going to have to have some water skiing. Um, yeah, some slaloming will break out in a moment. Yeah. Or could this be a little bit of gamesmanship here? Well, I don't I mean... The only way would be if, if, if it's very if the wind's really got up and he's trying to sort of you know wait until the wind is uh, is, is coming down. Anyway, we're going to go to the dock and have a look. JT here. It's a little little strong, little gusty. What are you thinking ahead of that? Yeah, just trying to do my normal thing, kind of go out there attack, not worry about the wind until I'm out there and just go out there and ski. What are you thinking? 13 first pass, 10 seven tailwind. Yeah, for sure. I kind of really want to see if I can get a good start at 10-2 in this headwind. It's going to be hard to get there, but you know what? I've done it. We can do it again. Yeah, we've seen you do it many times. You've got good experience. Good luck out there. Have fun, man. It, that wind is humming. That wind is humming. So, you know, that you can just see that wind just coming across the screen. Um, there's a lot of push there. A lot, a lot of push. So, I mean, not to accuse anything, anyone of anything, but... I, so if I was if I was out there, I certainly wouldn't be upset about having you know a, a few minutes just to hang out and wait for that wind to pass by. As we're getting closer towards the end, are you actually going to be slaloming? Yeah, yeah, I'll go. I'm gonna I'll go warm up in a second. I, I can't I hadn't really thought about it. <laughs> I should probably. What do we got? We got we got Brando, John, Thomas, There's JT, Thomas, Robert, Will, then you. Yeah, okay. I got time. You got time. I don't know why they're still out there. This is very confusing. That's what we need our roving reporter on the dock to to figure it out. But I mean. 
We want our roving reporter to actually pick up the other line and uh, just to check, just to yeah. make sure. So, okay, they hung out, I mean, not to be critical here, but they hung out down there for five minutes. Then now they're coming back to the dock, which I feel like would have made sense if they'd done it immediately. Um, who knows? Who knows? We'll get, we'll get Brando in the interview, lo interview afterwards. I think Brando's a guy who's not afraid to mince his words. So hopefully he'll give us an honest... He's, the, uh, he's Italian. He's Italian, yeah. yeah. So All right, let's check in dockside. Hey guys, back on the dock again. We've got T-Gas here. You got three at 10, two in the first round. You're looking to build on that, I'm guessing. Uh, what are your tactics going into this round? Well, it got pretty windy for, for the second round. So, I mean, the only way to go and get more is keep taking 41 headwind. So it's up and down a little bit and we'll see how it goes. I don't know if how the clear is, but you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. So we know we've seen some big scores already today. Uh, from Will, from Nate, from Freddie, you want to be chasing those guys, I'm guessing. Yeah, of course, I want to be up there with them. I had a good start at 41 today and got pulled up a little bit into three, but if I get a good gate again like that, a good start, I can go all the way. All right, have fun, good luck, see you out there. Back to you guys. We need to get a message to Aaron. Hey man, go figure out what's going on. Give us an on-the-scene report. It's. Uh, it's all a bit confusing. Yeah, I think they've swapped. They've swapped the rope, I guess. So that that was it. I just wonder why they're down there waiting at the end. Um, yeah, odd. Oh, so okay. What we're hearing is that the rumor on the street is that Brando asked for the HO, um, and the judges gave him the HO, and then he decided to switch, and they weren't going to give it to him. Um, whether that is correct or not, we, we, we can't tell, of course. It would be pretty risky to do that. I, I'm going to say that probably didn't happen. I mean, if he's really trying to like let the wind go by or whatever. And also, he's in a pretty good position. So, I'm, I don't know. All sorts of conspiracy theories going on here. But, yeah, I mean, maybe just a miscommunication. All right, um, so you guys on the live chat, what's your take? Yeah, let's get the conspiracy theories coming in. We need water ski conspiracy theories. That's what we need. Yes. Something, something good, something juicy, something we can all get behind. Um, let's, uh, let's, anyway, look, everyone who's skiing from now on is in a position of strength. Brando with the least position of strength, but he is ultimately, as it stands, assuming he runs a steady eight, he's in the final, notwithstanding what happens tomorrow. So exactly. he's going to want to improve, uh, he, you know, in, as he's capable, he's actually been running very consistently, you know, three and a half, fours, a lot of threes the last few weeks. We've been skiing against each other, you know. 15, 16, 17, 18, whatever it is, rounds of, of tournament, um, including today in, in the last two weeks and one day. Uh, it feels like I left home about a year ago. It's been 14, it's been 15 days. Um, very strange to be on the road like this and have so many tournaments packed in because you're, we're used to having a tournament every two weeks, maybe. And then you have you have a tournament every like every three days, and it feels like that two weeks has passed in that time. I, I, I can honestly tell you that this uh, this week I was just ready for the tournament to come. I mean, like just waiting, 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 and it's five days between tournaments. Anyway, Here Brando, 13 meters, S line rope. Yes. Let's see if he can make it work. Here we go. 13 meters. And here's, you know, maybe the I don't know if, if that's a an accurate statement, but maybe the revelation for me of this Euro Tour has been has been Brando's offside turn. He's obviously really balanced. He was a guy that would run twos extremely frequently and then get the odd two and a half or four. And now he's a guy that's turning two, even badly. That was what someone said to him the other day in my presence. I, I, I heard them say fairly, and you know, and Brando took it well, like, you know, I've never seen someone turn two so badly and still turn the nuts off a three and get a four. And that's kind of, you know, Dane, uh, Dane Meckler, uh, you know, is turning that boy too a lot. Also, as a, as a lefty with, with that huge onside, you can kind of see him getting getting over to four. And it, it is true, as a, as a lefty, as much as people complain about the gate, to get four at 41 off, you need to turn one offside turn. You know, you, 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 you turn you turn, turn your, your onside on boy one, you, your half turn boy two, turn the hell out of three, you're round four. S turn, that's four boys, one offside turn. So um, Brando has been the king of that. Uh, well, maybe co-king, uh, him and him and Dane um, have been, you know, both 
both doing really well getting those fours. Dane turning four uh, in Monaco and getting four and a half, trying to turn it to get to six. Um, but yeah, his, he's obviously really worked on his technique. His ski's working well, his equipment looks great. And he's done, done a really good job and, and, and really improved as a water skier as a result of that. All right, looking good. It's funny, you don't see it quite so much on the, on the longer lines, but he has got a mean onside turn a mean onside turn. I mean, I saw him at, uh, I think it was Botas, got that kind of average two, gets over to three, pulls hard to three, and then, you know, just squeaks the ski outside of it, drops the shoulder, gets that ski snapping through, and just moves uh, very, very fast across to four after a huge turn. And that's, you know, that's a, that's a move for success. All right. So we see uh, Jonathan Travers on dockside getting ready for, for his go. Uh, a little ways behind him is uh, Thomas de Gasperi. Trying to get settled in and just figure out what his win strategy is going to be and uh, win a ski of your choice by going to waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play. That's waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play for your chance to win yourself a ski. And you have up until until tomorrow morning when uh, our uh, third and last round commences approximately 8.30 tomorrow morning, 8.30 Greek time. So uh, make sure you get your entries in to win yourself a slalom ski. Accurately predict the podiums for the women and the men as well as answer a tie-breaking tie score. And you could win yourself a ski. Good one, very good one, and a good two. He looks incredibly balanced, Brando. He's got quite Italian shorts, hasn't he? Oh yeah, they're absolutely. Sort of, they sort of ride up quite high. They're quite European style, and he's actually—I'm going to say—he's the only sort of really top-level pro skier that doesn't spend much time in America. Yeah, he, you know, he, he, yeah, you'll be hard pressed to find any any scores for Brando Caruso that have emanated from the United States in the last two to three seasons. He 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 came over and did a bunch of tournaments. He did he did a bunch of pros pro, pro events like at the end of 2019 and yeah, 20, like Mastercraft. Sorry, sorry, 20, he did the Mastercraft Pro. He's, and he always gets you know he's he's always doing a good job making um, making finals and stuff. But um, he doesn't he came over for the tournaments. He doesn't go and train there. Just the other guy would be Sasha, but Sasha's over in you know he skis um, in Claremont quite a lot. Uh, you know, starts of the year, end of the year. Um, but apart from that, pretty much everyone in the men's field is 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 America-based. Rob Hazelwood, um, more and more America-based. He got a visa this year, um, having, having sort of spent a lot of time in the UK growing up. So yeah, he's, he's quite unique in that way, and good for him. I mean, I guess if, if there's one place you can do it, it's probably Italy, with the uh, with, with the climate in Italy, being able to ski most of the year. Okay, if you're not doing Moomba, you don't really need to start training until later, you know, a few months later. Jamie Bull uh, doesn't start training until April, and look at her now, yeah. after, after the snow ski season. 39 off. Must run to improve on his score of the first round. Here we go. This is Brando Caruso. Oh, look one. at that turn off number one and number two. This is cake. This is cake. He looks so good. Oh, that's not a good four, though. No, Man, but cursing. he has enough of a lead yeah. in, though, to be able to still stay up upright hey, on five and six. But exactly what I said, right? Exactly what I said earlier. Like, he, you know, gets that, that, that dodgy offside and then just gets over to five. When we see this on the replay, what this is a textbook last minute lefty boy five um uh, gets over to five his ski is just barely on the outside of it throws the ski back underneath him drops the shoulder and gets to six and that's kind of what i'm saying at that 341 that he's that he's doing more and more um it's so funny because it was so easy up to that point i guess he you know little tailwind it pushed him down course he grabbed a little bit early at four didn't get the ski through brilliant boy two um and because he actually got uh, got through this pass and actually managed to get uh, past 11.25 meters the previous pass, this actually puts him ahead of the other skier that uh, that scored two at 10.25 meters. And that Tom Paul. It, Tom Paul, yeah. So he's now he's he's taken seven. Is he taken seventh outright? It's eight. He's taken eight. eighth outright. Eighth outright. Okay. Oh, so so Tom is now out of out of the top eight with two at 10.25. Well, actually, yeah, uh, Brenner Brenner Caruso currently in seventh. Uh, yeah. Tom Paul, I believe, is in eighth. Yeah. 
So we'll take a look at the leaderboard in just a moment or so. I'm, I'm going to say Brando's going to go big here. He, had, he looked so good on that 10 5 notwithstanding that boy 4. Good gate, not too slow, which is easy to do there. It's a, oh, it's not the best one. No, he'll and it's two and to the wakes. There you go. That is two scores of two at 10.25 meters, courtesy of Brando Caruso of Italia. Just pushed too much on the ski, I think, at boy one. Um, I like the approach on the gate. I think maybe, maybe you know, with that headwind, he maybe didn't have quite enough speed across. But uh, let's have a look. Uh, he got moving, and then I think he just tried to kick it too much. Like, a little bit too much front of the ski in the water, a little bit too much tail smear, and then two, he just, you know, he knew he wasn't going to turn it. He came in real narrow and straight. Um, but there you go. He uh, adds a pair of twos. A pair of twos, let's not say it's safe, but it, I mean, the, the, the thing is that someone, someone behind him tomorrow in round three will have to run two and a quarter to beat him. Because if they run two, they will not have the score. They will not have the backup. A pair of twos is a, is, a, is a good backup to have. But for sure, he would have wanted to get around that boy three and got the two and a quarter to make him a bit safer. And that's why John Travers has done a really good job getting that two and a half. Um, puts him in a good spot. Right, we're going to go to Doc quickly. And indeed. All right, so we're back dockside, guys, with Brando. You've just done a really good score. You've got two scores now of two on 10, 10 2. So I must be feeling all right at the moment. No, it's great, man. I just hoped I would, would have done like better gates, but you know, probably tomorrow is my day. It's the, I don't know, it was a decent score, but not what I wanted. Yeah, I think it, it's going to be close, whether it's two or piece of three. Uh, it's really close. It's tough out there at the moment. Winds up and down, you're, you know, it's kind of lucky if you get a good pass, so it's tough out there, but you did really good. How did it feel in general? No, of course, it was really windy. I was trying to see, like, what to do, but I don't know. I didn't do the things right. I mean, 39 was good, but then 41 was, uh, wasn't enough. Yeah, it's on that windy, on that gate, just push you in, and then at 41, that's just going to kill you, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Really nice. All right, man. Good luck tomorrow. Hopefully see you in the final tomorrow. Back to you guys. Thank you very much there, Aaron, and uh, a kudos there to Brandon Caruso for, uh, for his uh, fine words there. Brando. Brando. Brando, not Brandon. You, yeah, you, Brando. You, you, you're, you're adding ends to the to, to Anthem Sum and Brandon. Um, that's oh, right. what? oh, whatever. <laughs> so, so, no, I'm just helping out, man. Anyway. Brando. I'm, I'm, I'm going to love you and leave you, Tony. Um, Find someone to replace you. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and try and find somebody. All right. Thank you, everyone, for putting up with me, and I'll see you on the other side. No worries, and you can listen to uh, to uh, to Freddie Winter as part of his uh, series on tour with Freddie Winter as part of the TWBC podcast. Listen to it on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever Look else. Look at that graphic. You listen you. to podcasts. Cheers, Tony. All right, here we go. This is Jonathan Travers, a 13 meter start. Oh, nicely done. Opening pass uh, seems to have gotten a uh, uh, full control over that deal. He'll pull out and get ready to shorten onto the 12 meter line. Jonathan Trapp out of Groveland in Florida. When he's not uh, a competing, he's setting up tournaments as a homologator or technical controller, as they call, the, call those folks in the United States, and will be instrumental in organizing the 2023 IWWF World Water Ski Championships, which will take place in the middle part of October. And uh, with... Uh, with live coverage uh, for, the, for that event uh, present as well. So. There we go, some beautiful and uh, scenic views of uh, this facility here at Kayafas, home of the battle for 2023. Take a quick look at Thomas de Gaspari who readies himself uh, for, for battle here. in 
good shape. 12 meters. Managed to score a two and a half at 10.25 meters. Which not too long ago would have been enough to put a skier through to the finals for absolute certain. But these days, scores of three and a piece of four are, uh, are kind of what, uh, what it's taken uh, uh, in recent times to advance. And uh, Jonathan Travers knows that. He's currently lying in sixth spot. Seems to be okay for now for a spot through to the final, but uh, uh, he'll have to navigate some uh, uh, some murky waters between there and the finals. So in order to keep his nose out in front, he's got to uh, realistically come away with, uh, with a score very, very similar to what he did in round one, if not a little better. All right then, folks, here we go. Jonathan Travers. Entrance, number one. Currently lying in sixth place right now. Five skiers remain after him. First time skier here in uh, Caiaphas. Seems to make very, very light work of that run. That was uh, pass number three. That was 11.25 meters and now uh, licking his lips and getting ready for a 10.75 meters, which is gonna come to us next. Just looking and seeing how that ski rides and looking and uh, skiing how it tracks. Water breaking uh, breaking uh, forward of uh, of the bindings. Smack bang in the middle of his uh, stance, and the ski doing a grand grand job of uh, tracking away from the boat, and uh, him doing a fine enough job job to uh, to control that ski, all the way around all six buoys. There's our current leaderboard with scores from round one and round two taken into consideration. There you see uh, uh, Tom Paul currently in eighth spot with two at 10.25 meters awaiting his fate with, uh, with the remaining skiers on the list. Handle up high off number four, he's round number five. This is 10.75. Yep, and aside from that little bobble, uh, that was a picture-perfect run there for Jonathan Travers out of Groveland in Central Florida, where he helps uh, run a water ski score along with his father, uh, Jack Travers, Jack and Alani Travers. Bringing the handle down very, very firmly, and then bringing it across to the uh, to the outside hip. Certainly you using some great, great technique. Try to uh, bleed off a lot more uh, slack there into number four. That's why the handle came up almost to his chin, but built up enough of a lead on that run. So an event, so an error of that type would not be a, a deal breaker there for him. Okie dokie, now we're gonna go into 10.25 meters. Current top score right now in this round, three at 10.25 meters. Here he comes, round buoy number one. Here, all round, good slide off number two and just unable to take all of that and uh, control it across the wakes into number three. 
So it is going to be his, uh, his inferior backup score of two at 10.25 meters. Two at 10.25 meters is going to represent his second best score out of the two that he's produced so far today. The other score being two and a half. Just looking once again at uh, Jonathan Travers. With replays from uh, from both uh, the the shore side camera and the boat. So, working our way down towards the last five skiers on this list, we've just seen Jonathan Travers, we'll see Robert Hazelwood, uh, Will Asher, Freddie, Freddie uh, Winter, and uh, Nate Smith very, very soon, but before all of those, it is Thomas de Gasperi. All right, so as we uh, so go to the tail end of, uh, of this event, joined by a couple of skiers who have been uh, conjuring up some magic out there on the water. We see uh, Alicia Bagnoli from, from Italy. Uh, say hi to the good folks, Alice. Helps if the microphone's on. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and a skier who's just uh, conjured up some magic of her own with a brand new personal best of one at 41 off, uh, say hi to the good folks there, Ali Nicholson. Hello, hello. All right. Yeah, that was going through my mind as well. Hello. <laughs> but anyway, so, uh, so so some great skiing there from you uh, in into 41 off. I mean, what was going through your mind towards the end there? Oh my goodness, I've been getting I've been getting a lot of really good starts, and I, I keep saying I just feel like I, I hadn't quite pieced one together. Um, and I felt like today maybe wasn't my best start, but uh, I came out of three, I got to four, and I was like, keep going. And when I got to five, I was like, oh my gosh, Hallie, if you blow this, I'm going to be so mad at myself. You're fully committed to turn, to yeah, turn three yeah. ball. All right then, so let's have a look at Thomas de Gasperi, former two-time world slalom champion, nine-time European slalom champion, and multiple-time uh, Italian and current uh, Italian national slalom record holder. He's, uh, he's been there, he's been uh, been everywhere around the world, uh, competing, Muma Masters, uh, the Masters itself, and uh, many, many other events are uh, taken into consideration. And uh, we'll return in just a moment. All right, we got JT here, just come off a pretty good score. It's not easy out there, you ran your 39 tail, it's always a good feeling when you can do that, right? Yeah, totally. I just, I really felt really good in practice here. I ran four both rounds and the two practice rides. So I was like, I really just want to get into four ball. And the only way to do that in that kind of win is to take, the, roll the dice and run 39 tail. And hey, the first three buoys are amazing. I came in a four ball saying, don't mess it up. And I almost messed it up like always, but got through it all. And then no excuses at 30, 41. I just overdo it. Yeah. It's always a curse of four ball on 39. I know that myself, but you know, two at 41 in those in that wind, it, it's always good. Uh, you got you got three first round, right? Two and a half. You got two and a half, so you know you're right there. It's going to be close. Great backup score, so you got that running for you. Yeah, totally. And it's just, hey man, the vibes out here are unbelievable. I was just talking to Will, and I said, I think I can get used to having a DJ on the dock. You know, it's totally, totally like unlike, unlike anything. Maybe collegiate nationals. It's maybe not that loud but it's just unlike anything right yeah it's just a lot of fun it's not like at some events where you're at the end of the lake sitting on a dock by yourself getting nervous like you got 
20, 30 people just today on our first two rounds on the dock and you got a DJ. It's just the energy here is unbelievable and I just can't thank George and his team and all the sponsors here enough. All right, great job, mate. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, thank you. See you guys later. You know what's going to happen, of course. He's going to he's going to come. He's going to go back to to Jacks in Groveland, and he's going to say, "Hey, Jack Lalani, you know what would be a good idea for the world?" Well, I actually asked him. I said, "So, Travers Grand Prix is going to have a DJ now?" And he was like, mm, "Maybe." <laughs> yeah, I feel like first round. First round, it was like, okay, a lot of music going on. By the time round round round, oh my god. Round number two, it was, I think the vibes were in me, so you barely feel any music, but. I definitely feel like I noticed it more round one. I feel like uh, as we went into round two, I had a lot of other things on my mind in round two, but um, yeah, no, I, I feel like I've started to kind of, it's become a little bit more normal. Um, if tomorrow was anything like last year, and I have a feeling knowing George is going to be even bigger. Yeah, exactly. He said he's here. The ones that are like, wow, it's loud today, just wait. All right, then. So as we get ready for that, uh, we've got Thomas de Gasperi on the water, who is already uh, into uh, to 11.25 meters. So I spoke to Thomas after his first round. He ran three at 10.2, uh, and he came in and he was like, I think that's the best start I've ever had. And it was, you know, that's the start I'm looking for. That's the start I want every time. Hope I can get something like that again next round. So I know he's looking to build. He's feeling good here at this lake. I mean, um, boat, driver, everything he said this morning felt really great. So hopefully we can see him build on that and put up a big score. All right. And I would be inclined to agree with him in that respect. And uh, let's check where we'll check the replay first. <laughs> we'll, we'll check the replay first uh, for Thomas de Gasperi. And, uh, and, and you know, uh, I mean, going back a little bit to round one, he certainly had probably the, the best start that I've ever seen him produce at 10.25 meters. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, definitely. Tikas, I think, has been skiing really good. He's been tweaking a little bit his ski to feel more comfortable um, based on how he's skiing personally. And uh, I think it's working out. And as Thomas de Gasperi works his way out of the course. Yeah, so Tigas now is going to come back at 10.75 meter. Um, it's a little bit of tailwind, it's not too bad, but it's definitely pushing a little bit through the gate. And then throughout the pass, I think it gets pretty nice. Yeah, I, I mean, the wind's definitely a little up and down. I think I've heard from other people that tomorrow is supposed to be nicer uh, for the final. So that's good. Uh, that's good. Yeah, hopefully we won't have to play too much with the head tailwind. Even though the headwind was pretty nice. The headwind was I nice. I mean, the tailwind, it, it definitely was up and down. So if you got it on a bad tailwind, it was really pushing you. Uh, a little nice. bit of a slow one. Good two ball. Good two. He's still there. No, he just has this knack, doesn't he, of just being able to stay upright on 10.75 meters long enough to run it and then put himself in a situation where he can base, essentially guarantee himself a, lo a, a, lo a lot of cuts uh, through to the next round by going more than halfway down the course at 10.25 minutes. He is so consistent in that vein. Yeah, I think this past six, I would say he used a lot his upper body. I think, you know, it's been a long day. It's been really warm. Uh, all day at the lake with the vibes and everything. He might be getting a little bit tired, but we're still nice and early, just a little bit of shoulders going on. Still looking great, Tigas, at that ball. Yeah, I think he's definitely going to want to build on his original score uh, from round one because we've seen three be very close to not making the cut or even not making the cut uh, this year. The men are skiing so well at such a high level. Um, well, as of now, it's around two. I, I believe the cut right now is two with yeah. a round to go. Yeah, so there's so still plenty of skiers uh, outside of that two. Um, with Tom Poole being our eighth spot right now, but there's a couple names down there that you know didn't ski that well today that hopefully can put something together tomorrow yeah. and give there's these guys a run for money. a lot of money. young ones that can still run 1075 meter and get a couple of buoys at 10 to 5. So. Yeah. And one or two over there that have actually gotten into 10.25 meters yeah. quite regularly in the in the previous uh, competition, such as uh, Matteo Lizzeri, who's yeah. looking for some redemption. Matteo and Coria, I know he got a half, so you can definitely put a bigger score. Let's see 10 to 5. Here we go, Thomas de Gasperi. Round, oh. oh, and he stuffs the tip into the water and gets a half a buoy at 10.25 meters. So uh, 
Ooh. Yeah, it happened a few times to Tigas this year, getting halves. I think you could see that in his approach into one. I knew <laughs> before he got there that he was not, he was definitely going to be in trouble. Yeah. Um, it looked like he had a lot of speed coming into one. It's hard to keep that speed around at the end of the buoy. So unfortunate, unable to um, push that score out anymore today. I know a couple of these guys are probably hoping to not have to ski the third round tomorrow. Um, well, we'll he's still sitting in a good spot. For now. Like, he has yeah. all the people before him, and then he's going to know what the cut is going to be, so then he yeah, can choose sure. whether to ski or not. I mean, and the fact remains that if uh, that if uh, four or four or five individuals are uh, at, the, at the beginning of the uh, the list conjure up a score better than three, then it's going to force Thomas de Gasperi to get out onto the water and uh, cunt and put something in more than three to uh, to actually advance through to the next round of the competition based upon uh, our format. Yeah, and now Robert Hazelwood is going next, and he has a first round score of 3 at 10 to 5 as well. So based on this round, um, they're going to decide who's going to go first tomorrow for round number three. Yeah, so Robert's one of those young guns, you know, one of my teammates. Uh, it's been great to see him come out this year and be a lot more consistent. He's getting to three a lot. Um, He's enjoying getting to three a lot. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting frustrated as well because he can't turn in sometimes, but, well, it's a hard pass. All right, so. So, a 13 meter start. Obviously, going in on 13 opens up one or two options here. I mean, he can always decide to uh, to opt up through uh, through 35 off or 12 meters onto 11 and bring and bring a 10.75 meters into the wind and uh, 41 with 10.25. And uh, with that in mind, let's check in dockside. Yeah, we're back dog side. We got Freddie Winter here. Had an absolute insane first round, getting one at uh, for 43. Amazing score. We've just found out Will's not skiing this round. Uh, why did you decide to take it? I haven't yet. If that wind keeps coming up, but why not? I like water skiing, and I I'm on a new ski still. I mean, I, I'm I'm not even 10 sets in on it. I've done four, so I've done eight sets on it. So nine. This will be number nine. It's only going to help me for tomorrow. I don't. I feel fit enough. I feel strong enough. I think that the idea not to ski if you feel tired. I feel like I didn't ski enough this week. I want to ski more than three times between last weekend and this weekend. So let's go do it. I mean, what it will be will be. And yeah, I think I'm in. Let's do it. All right. Good luck, mate. Back to you guys. Thank you there, and uh, thanks once again to, uh, to Freddie Winter not only for his. Uh, uh, for his time on the dock, but also his time here on the announcing point as well previously. So uh, kudos to him. Setting up with A2 on 13 meters. This is Robert Hazelwood, who previously scored three buoys at 10.25 meters in the round previous to this one. Look at that strong position across course. It's really stacked up with his hips and shoulders, not moving an inch. It's probably that flow point method helping out, huh? <laughs> Coming in handy, it looks like. <laughs> All right then. So uh, one of our uh, good sponsors uh, for the uh, for the webcast uh, during the course of the season, the Flowpoint Method. Check them out at flowpointmethod.com. Flowpointmethod.com providing the tools to ski your best. So I'm Tony Lightfoot, and I've side of me two absolutely gorgeous uh, skiers. We've got uh, Alicia Bagnoli, and we've got uh, Ali Nicholson. And uh, doing a, doing a fine job, uh, kind of, you know, definitely elevating yourselves and improving in your roles as uh, as co-commentators and analysts and all that kind of thing. So I definitely now commend you. Now your parents you. are pushing for it. <laughs> I felt a little bad. I abandoned uh, my dockside interviews to Aaron earlier, um, <laughs> but he's taking it like a champ and uh, still going. There is some shade here. <laughs> But it's all good. It's all good, you know. I mean, it's uh, uh, ju just part of the, the growing process, you know. I mean, it uh, you know, starts small and you just keep keep adding and adding and adding. And, uh, no, it's a learning process. Here we go. We've got uh, Robert Hazelwood. This is 12 meters. Whoa! Very oh, strange gate Strange there. looking gate. Yeah. Manages it there out of two. That's a lot of times where you'll see that gate catch. Um, I don't really know exactly what happened there. He's looking good otherwise throughout the pass. Seems 
like he's skiing a bit narrow, if I'm being honest, for a 12 meter pass. Um, not giving himself a whole lot of space. Um, hopefully he can figure that out. All right then, let's uh, check in on Dockside with Aaron. All right guys, we're back Dockside. We've got T-Guys here, he just got a half of 41. What was it like out there? Ah, it's definitely challenging. The wind had picked up and, you know, 38 with the headwind, I couldn't see anything. And then 39, a little bit tail. It was work, but uh, just didn't get the gate at 1 at 41, so it's okay, I'm pretty happy. We'll see you tomorrow. That was a that was a pretty nice 39, everything considered. You got a tailwind, you know, you got a lot of, you got a lot of years behind you, you got that experience, so, but you use that to best your abilities. Yeah, you kind of have to read what the wind is doing, right? So adjust your timing, your tempo, and and get after in the turn. So if you, if you release early, and then the wind is not an issue. What were your thoughts coming into 41? Obviously, you got to come re really further down your gate. You get that headwind. Is that what you wanted, or not quite? No, I pulled out a little too late. So I wanted I wanted to pull out wide, but I went a little bit too late, and should have gone a little earlier and a little better swing, and I got sucked in at number one. All right, thanks mate. Good luck for tomorrow, see you later. Back to you guys. All right then, so Robert Hazelwood off that rather strange gate on 12 meters is here on 11.25 meters. Now uh, a little bit of uh, return to normality there with uh, that entrance into buoy number one. But he leads himself up a little bit narrow on, uh, on number three. Yeah, you know, I think conditions five. are a little bit challenging between the wind and it's 6 p.m. here, so I think it's coming in a little bit of glare. Um, on the first pass coming down so yeah I think on the webcast it doesn't look that bad but if I look over my shoulder the the lake is looking pretty bright over there I mean we've heard Tegas just say that he couldn't see I mean look at how bright it is right there on Rob's face as he went through the gate I think the sun is starting to come into play and and um, yeah. a lot of making it a lot more challenging spot. yeah yeah still right you looking are good. still looking good at 11 meter line so now it's gonna come back at 1075 meter I'm sure he's quite used to skiing in the uh, in in the harsh uh, daylight, whether it be uh, dawn or dusk. Just just trying to hold his technique and hold his angle, and uh, pretty knows pretty much knows where the buoys are at any given time. You know they're always in the same place, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh wow! Look at that. Look at that! Right next to the Adriatic. <laughs> and there we are, right there on that little. Uh, Little uh, little strip strip of water right next to the main Caiaphas Lake. I could have been on that side of the beach, though. Huh? <laughs> it's amazing these sites being so close to the beach. It's like being on vacation. I love it. All right, here comes Rob. Ten seven five. Here he comes. Ten point seven five meters. Thirty nine and a half off. Gets a good start on number one. Keeps the flow going off number two. There he is. Round round number three at ten point seven five. He's good. Ooh. Oh, takes a huge huge stab on four. Wow. Controls his speed for five, and he gets it all the way. <laughs> yeah. Definitely woke him up. Throwing the fizz. I think he scared himself a little bit there at four. Um, getting some good strikes there at the back of the buoy. Uh, just coming in a little heavy there out of four ball, but Ooh. held on to it, able to get through it, and we'll get to see another shot at 10 2 5. Well. It's always surprising when you're skiing great, and then suddenly you just have a buoy like this, and it just wakes you up. I think heavy is putting it mildly out there, Ali. <laughs> but we're going to take a look at that. Yeah, I wonder what the rope tension would have been on that had we have had the system in place. But there you go. That is uh, Robert Hayeswood taking a big old chunk off number two. Good extension round number three. A uh, little heavy with the shoulders into number four. Then just oh. dropped his locks there round, uh, round number four. And five back again. Good. And, you know, when you get a little... when. When a few of these skiers get a little bit later, they're more adept to throwing the ski in with like an aerial edge change because you're building up pressure with the ski and you're gonna and you're gonna have to release that pressure eventually and sooner to to accommodate that ski angling out to stay on top of the course. All right, so here we go. We got Robert Hazelwood three at 10.25 meters in round one. Let's see if he can bring in something more substantial this time around. He's into the headwind, but into the sun as well. Oh, good one ball. Oh, oh pretty oh, good Oh, round two. number two, he's there. Come on, keep going, He's there, Rob. keep going. He's going for he's a there. Turn he's it. there, come on. Oh. oh, and he's inside buoy number five, but that is a new P-Best. 
That's it's season's, season's best. best. I think that's the first time I've ever seen Rob actually try to turn four and pull two five. Wow. Um, so he is going to be super stoked with that. I mean, I, I know he's run four before, uh, but I'm sure that ended in an S turn. Honestly, um, though, when he went through the gate, I was like, that's a gate. Like, that's the perfect gate to start with the pass. And then he just got around perfectly around here. I mean, he, what a great one ball. He's had a lot of really good starts at 41 Whoa, this year. Look at that. Um, oh, vicious two. Round number three, still he held on to it. Three. <laughs> Boom. And he. I think there he was like, I don't want another three. We're yeah. going for it. Um, What's his PB? Four? I believe his PB is four, yes. Okay. Yep. And season's best is four. Yep. Um, so he has just improved. His season's best before was at Swiss uh, this year, three and a quarter. Yeah. A very important quarter, if you guys remember. Yeah. Of course. Um, so, yeah, improving on that. Um, so that's his first time to four ball or around for a full four this year. Um, so he's going to be stoked, I'm sure. Well, and here it is. Uh, he has a better backup than Tigas in this case because he's got a four and a three, and Tigas has a three and a half. So um, that's going to matter going into the finals. Yeah, definitely inside five on that one, but he does get the four four. <laughs> and there we go. So he's got one more round of skiing to come and uh, definitely on a, on a roll here, uh, Robert Hazelwood. A good day for the syndicate team, huh? Mm -hmm. Pretty good day, I'd say. <laughs> All right, let's check in Dockside with Aaron. All right, so we got Rob here, Dockside. Just, you've equaled your PB. You were just inside of five. What an amazing score. You said earlier you just wanted to, you were relaxed because you had a good first round score. You look relaxed out there, mate. I was not relaxed. That's terrifying. That is the windless. Doesn't really look it because of all the trees. That's probably some of the windiest conditions I've ever skied in. I like just pulled all the way to the 41, closed my eyes, held on, closed my eyes, held on. I missed, grabbed the handle out of four, like fumbled it in two fingers. But I mean, it just feels insane. Like the ski feels so settled, so safe, so secure. I mean, that's a big toe in 39 for me in tournament. My first 35 I pulled out and I just never stopped. I think I would have kept it 2 4 the whole way. I was just stood there like, oh. So I figured out the 39 gate. Solid 39, I think? Yeah, it looked all right. It looked good. Like, you look, it looked like you had a great start on 41. You know, for one second, I thought, well, you're going to keep going. As a fellow Brit, you don't look like you're scared of wind. I know we're not scared of wind. We're skiing in the windy conditions ourselves. We're used to it. But what were your thoughts coming into that 41? Pull long. And then I flew off the handle at one and was like, that was not the goal. Squeeze that side of one, and the ski rotated on me. I'm like, OK, whoa, we're good. Pulled along, got sprayed my face along the wakes. Boy was over there, so I reached for it, the ski came under again. And then pretty much copy and paste all the way down until I was inside five. But I mean, big credit to this place, the water, the boats, the drivers. This ski, I mean, that was not me. That was, I was just a force on top of it. So I was mega happy with that. Good job, mate. Well, I think we're safe to say you're probably in the final with a score of four. We'll see, but I'm have fun tomorrow. <laughs> Best ice cream I've had, and I'm going to smash it. Bit of PB ice cream. Good job, mate. Thank you, man. Back to you guys. I think there's a gelato in his future. Rob excited, as I knew Rob would be. Um, he is the little energizer bunny of the syndicate team. Um, Love seeing him bounce around. He's the one that keeps us going, keeps us. Yeah, you need someone like this. Keeps us pumping. Indeed, indeed, and he also keeps the vlog going for uh, for the HO Sports uh, Syndicate team. You can find that on YouTube as well. Here we go. We've got uh, uh, Freddie Winter here on. Uh, 30 meters and uh, we're now into the trio of skiers that uh, that scored one at 9.75 meters uh, this morning and uh, with that in mind let's check in on dockside hey guys we're back dockside we've got nate here obviously will's decided not to take his set out today uh, and this afternoon it's a little breezy what's your thoughts i wasn't going to and then uh I decided I'd come out here and give it a shot. It's it is windy. There's glare. It's sunny. So I'm not sure how how well we can see. But I'm gonna go out and just do a couple of passes. I'm gonna start at 11. So I don't know. Just see what happens. Starting at 11. That's big. Um, yeah, I'm, we know we know you can ski and win. We've seen it before. We've seen you run things in un, you know conditions that are not ideal. You skied it in the dark. See, we saw that last year. Um, we're going out at 11. Hope you have fun with it. What are your thoughts like on tomorrow? 
Uh, I'm just like like I said. I'm just going out to get wet. I'm not too worried about the score for today. I mean, we're we're into the finals, so that's really all that matters. But just want to get wet, cool down. We've been in the sun all day, and we'll just see how things uh, stack up for us going in the, the finals tomorrow. We still have one more round tomorrow too. Yeah. All right. Good luck, Nate. Have fun. See you tomorrow. Thanks. Back to you guys. All right, here we go. Here's uh, Freddie Winter. Yeah, so that's breaking news. Uh, uh, Will Asher not electing to ski in this round, and uh, Nate Smith going out there. Uh, he'll be starting in at 11.25 meters. And saving some energy. Saving some energy, or probably opt up through 39, knowing n knowing us, I guess. I uh, can't. Im I can't imagine starting at 11 after uh, what has it been? Probably three hours. Um, but probably more. <laughs> Well, if you've got it, do it. Yeah. All right, then. So we've got Alicia Bagnoli here on the left uh, left side of your screen, right side of me, and Ali Nicholson, uh, left side of me, right side of your screen. And uh, glad to have you, uh, you two ladies uh, here. So I was about to point. I was going to point out that Freddie was skiing before Will, which I figured meant that Will wasn't skiing because Will was our first one earlier to run 10 to 5, um, which would have put him out first out of this group. Um, so I'd kind of been watching Will walking around. I didn't think he was planning to ski today. Um, that does mean that he is choosing to kind of forfeit that backup score from round two because um, well, he'll have no score there. Yeah, yeah, so he will just have the one score going into round number three uh, tomorrow. Should he, should he decide to even do round number three? Because well, right now, I mean, he does. He, he just has the one score, and it's uh, right. and it and it's better and it's better than all but two two other skiers. Here we go. This is Freddie Winter, eleven two five. With a two as the zero off setting. Decent number one. Seems to have a pretty good handle on this, on a, on a ski that he's only been on on for uh, for the last few days. Noticed a uh, a crack in his uh, ski during the Monte Carlo uh, competition, and uh, there's only uh, recently uh, switched out of that ski and uh, for the uh, for the Lacanel competition, and uh, and subsequently this one. I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah, he damaged damaged his ski uh, for uh, during. Yeah, yeah, he actually skied. He actually skied into ten point two five meters, but uh, but he no noticed that there was a crack in the ski and uh, couldn't really risk uh, putting too much more pressure on it. So he needed to jump off it as quickly as possible. And uh, the end result is what you're seeing right here on that on that new uh, uh, neo ski. Yeah, you know it's always hard when you change skis, but at the same time. Um, if you go back on the same ski, it should feel pretty similar uh, to what it felt before. So Yeah, so Freddie took one of those uh, typical Freddie winter crashes at uh, Monaco. and he overdid it at Monaco. Yeah, just a little bit. I think he knocked the wind out of himself a little yeah. bit. And um, he said after that he noticed the crack in his ski and thought it better to um, not wait for that to get worse. Yeah. Um, so he switched skis and seems to be working out pretty well for him. Um, he's been and it's a ski that you can win if you enter the audience prize competition. Uh, go to wardskibroadcasting.com forward slash play. This is 10.75 meters on that. Ooh, uh, big, big it's like on a that three Neo ball, 2. Ball. There you go. That is control. That is controlled aggression and a superbly run there, Ali. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, Freddie's been putting down um, the 10.7s for quite some time now. I mean, it's very rare, I feel like, that we see him miss one. Um, he's pretty rock solid at that pass. Um, so another one down, and he's going to get another shot at 10-2, and we'll see if uh, in this headwind and glare if he can back up the score from earlier. Yeah, I'm sure that's not how you really want to run that 75-meter pass. Um, Definitely not his cleanest, but that's just his experience. I mean, calm, cool, collected, yes, keeping it exactly. uh, keeping it one buoy at a time, continuing and staying in the pass. Powered through. Still really wide coming into two ball. Keeping the line. Yeah, had a little bit of a delay there out of three, a bit of slack, uh, but really no no issue for him. 
All right, looking good, looking in very, very good shape there. I mean, even even a little bit of a pause and a bobble uh, in the the final two thirds of the of the run didn't prevent him from running it, of course. Okay, so now Rob Hazelwood has the best score of round number two with four ten to five meters. So let's see if Freddie can beat that and run the pass again. All right, here he comes. No change on the zero off. No need to. It's on A2. Here he comes, 10.25 meters, 41 off. Round number one, gets it to go. Round number two, oh. he's there. Round number three, he's still there. Looking in go, he's round number four. Look at this, and five. Oh, and he was so close to running 10.25 meters for the second con time in consecutive rounds. That was very close, so that does take uh, the top score for this round away from Rob Hazelwood. Um, that was... Definitely not the prettiest. Um, yeah, I think he had quite a, actually a bit of a slow gait. Yeah. Um, he probably couldn't even see. Yeah. It does look a bit bright. It looks like he was a bit narrow there at one. Yeah. Uh, really not a very good two here. I mean, you see him get kind of on the back of the ski. You have to pull it back. Yeah, I think it was really hard to commit at four when you can fully see. You know, safety is always first. I know Freddie wants to run it, but he wanted to make sure that he was getting around the buoy before being able to crank it. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it's, it's scary when you're coming into that buoy and it's a big white line and yeah. you don't really know exactly where the buoy is. And when you hit them, that is when, as good as we are, that's when we get hurt. Yeah. Oh, I got hurt even worse hitting those buoys. I mean, back in back in the day when I when I was skiing, you actually had to inflate them pretty hard, and for them to be floating up uh, fairly high. No, thank you. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> That's a no for me. We well, hear Freddy. the crowd cheer as Freddie comes back to the dock. Yeah. Still a good backup score, five and one and nine. So five ten to five and one and nine. I'll certainly take that any day of the week. Yeah. So um, we know Nate's planning to leave the dock at um, eleven two five. We'll see if it's really bright he might go out there and go down and back and say take me home um or he might chase that backup score and try to keep himself or as tony ahead. was saying 11 10 to 5. <laughs> yeah why not big, why not to five. that's oh. a big stretch but you never know with nate all right let's check dockside with aaron and freddie all right guys we're back dockside with freddie winter he just put up you know a very respectable score uh, in this headwind, you know, you got 5 at 41, you ran it earlier, what are you thinking? Happy, my 10 to 5 was not very good, uh, but it's windy, it's really windy, the gates are just really hard, because there you got your a million miles headwind or tailwind there, and here I was really narrow again at 10 to 5, I got a decent one, you cannot see boy 2, I'm telling you, you cannot see it until you're, until you're at it, so I didn't get a good boy 2 there, but I'm really happy I turned 3, That's, I got confidence in it, so the ski's working well, I'm alright, happy, happy. Yeah, you must have been almost thinking like, I'm going back to my one-handed gate uh, pull-out style at, the, at that end, it's that windy. I mean, so late. And still I didn't have enough speed. I thought I had a good glide, and suddenly I'm slow, 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 so I'm going to pull like hell through the gate two and get her outside of one. But I'm, I mean, honestly, hey, five and six is good. It's good, I mean, and, and I, you know, it's windy as hell out here, so I can't be upset. That's an amazing backup score, especially for the seed in. You'll be going towards the end. Uh, you know, you've, been, you've done a lot of tournaments in your time. Anything like this you've seen before out here? Last year. Apart from last year. Yeah, I mean, look, I was saying on the commentary earlier, there's three tournaments now. I think one on each of the continents we tend to ski on. There's Moomba, which is amazing. That's the big party, you know, millions of people. There's the King of Darkness, which I think was incredible this year. The finals, tons of people, good atmosphere, good webcast. Like, and then we got this one. This one now in Europe, you know, so we got one in each continent. It's really, really great. I'm excited about it. And, this, you know, we just need to build the sport like this, more and more like this. All right. Good job, mate. Great skiing. We'll see you tomorrow. Back to you, Tony. All right, here we go. This is Nate Smith uh, for the uh, for the opener. So far, looking better than my opener at 14 million lines, but uh, <laughs> making it look just as easy. <laughs> look at that. Crazy. That's the first self de self deprecating Italian I've ever heard from. <laughs> I know Nate last year uh, made, I mean, he was regularly starting at 12 yeah. every set. Um. And if I'm not wrong, he, he did start at 11 in Lake 38 maybe last year? Possibly. I mean, like I said, I feel like when you're starting at 12 a lot, um, it's maybe not that far of a stretch. I just... Hmm. Yeah, two years ago. So, uh... 
So yeah, he did that at Lake 38, but two years ago. So Freddie and Nate, being part of the D3 team, bringing up the points. That's a very strong two-man team, let me tell mm -hmm. you. Yeah, they're currently Current, in the lead. Currently in the lead with uh, their third team member, Brooke Baldwin, out with injury right now. All right then, so, uh, and Syndicate hot on their tails uh, in the uh, the brand uh, brand uh, uh, leaderboard. And, uh, 389 points for D3, 376 for Syndicate, cool, cool. and 279 for Raider. So you guys are pretty close. We're coming for it. All right, here we go. This here is Nate Smith, 10.75 meters. I was expecting 10.2, but you can't have everything. All right, there, here he comes. Ooh. Whoa, almost got him broken forward Wait. into buoy number three that time. Look at him. Oh, oh that was so weird. <laughs> well, that was uh, well, that was unusual. Yeah. Probably the first time in a while since uh, since we've seen uh, uh, Nate Smith go down at 39. Yeah, I it's think that is why we do the passes to find our rhythm i think that's a lot asking to go off the off the dock one warm-up pass and then Second come back at 10-7 mm -hmm. but it's one of those sets when you feel weird it's just you can't really go for it and you know it's just you just have to forget that set and go back next day fresh out yeah i don't think he's gonna dwell on that very much um i no. think he was debating a lot on whether or not to even ski mm -hmm. um decided to go out there do something different. Um, I don't think we will see that same approach tomorrow. This was a not a very good start from the beginning. He had a lot of uh, ground to make up right mm -hmm. from the get-go. Mm -hmm. And uh, so far as the reseeding goes, that does mean, however, that uh, that Freddie Winter will be last off the dock uh, uh, for round three. For round three, in uh, the uh, in this three-round uh, slalom elimination round uh, format, uh, followed by. Uh, pr with uh, with Nate Smith uh, going before him and Will Asher uh, before before them. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. So uh, Nate's going to take that second spot purely just on the fact that he did ski and has a score. Uh, Will electing not to ski will put him in the third place uh, and, for the finals and or Will, for the third round. And Will very seldom li likes to get out onto the water last up anyway. Yeah, I mean, I think some people like to go earlier and they like to go set the score and say, "Hey, chase it." What about um, you, Ali? Uh, <laughs> it sometimes depends, I guess. Um, I have I have done really well knowing the score to beat. Um, and then sometimes it's nice just to go out without the pressure, without the score in mind, because I feel like sometimes when you have that score of four at 10-7 or whatever, and you go and you ski to that point, and then you have people on the dock like Jamie and Whitney that you know are going to get through it. Yeah. All right, then let's check in dockside one last time. All right, guys, we're here with our last skier, Nate Smith. You know, you said you just wanted to get wet, have fun out there. You know, it didn't quite pay off on the 10-7, it's fine. But, like, you've done a lot of events in your time. This is your first time in Greece, uh, the Caiaphas Battle, I think. And what do you think of the event in, in general? Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, just being here on the dock with all the people that were here all day. And, you know, the conditions were great earlier today. Unfortunately, here at the end, it just got a little bit windy and hard to see. I just wasn't in it. I, I, I didn't want to ski. I, I didn't plan to ski and put my stuff on last minute and went out there. So um, fun to be in Greece and looking forward to tomorrow for sure. Yeah, I know like it's just been great to have George and his crew have put on a good event. You know, they've took, took us up really well. So thanks to those guys and any other last words? Yeah, I appreciate all those guys. Everybody that's put in all the hard work for this site and to, to get it ready for us to be here and George and you know, he, he raises all this money for us and allows us to come over here and puts all this hard work in. So we really appreciate it. And we've got all the top skiers from around the world here this weekend. All right, thanks, Nate. Back to you guys. All right, thanks, uh, thanks there, Aaron. Thanks a lot there, uh, Nate Smith. And that brings to conclusion uh, the uh, today's action. Uh, my uh, my thanks here to Alicia Bagnoli and Ali Nicholson. Let's take one look at the uh, the leaderboard once again. Uh, uh, Freddie Winter. Uh, with one at uh, nine seven five, Nate Smith also with that same score as is Will Asher. Uh, Rob Hayeswood, uh, season's best there with four at uh, ten point two five meters there, Ali. Yeah, um, and then after that, I feel like that's where we're gonna see possibly the shakeup in round three. We have Thomas De Gasperi with three, John Travers with two and a half, and Brando at two, and then last currently making the cut is uh, Tom Poole with two at ten two five. 
All right, then, and uh, we'll see how things uh, shape up. Obviously, you can uh, check out the results on the normal uh, IWWF uh, scoring site. Uh, so, uh, so until uh, tomorrow morning, which is an 8.30 a.m. start, 8.30 Greek time, which I believe is 1.30 in the morning uh, East Coast time in the, the in the United States. Yeah, and, women's and, slalom round three. Yeah, and women's slalom round. round three and then men's slalom round three and then we'll go on to the finals afterwards. So until that time, this is Tony Lyford on behalf of uh, the crew of TWBC saying ciao for now. My name is Thomas de Gasperi. I'm from Italy. I'm a two-time World Slalom Champion. I've been coming here at La Guapa for four years now. The condition of this villa, it's top level. I would say five stars plus. Everybody's very friendly. The hosts are amazing. The staff is always helpful. There's always food on the table. I couldn't ask for anything more. Conditions, clean, and we're only an hour away from Mexico City, so it's it's very close and convenient for to travel. Every time I come here, I feel like I'm, I'm at home. I've been a fan of Marcus Brown since I was like 13 years old. He's, you know, been my, my childhood hero. And so for him to offer something like this, you know, which is, which is, it's great, not just for me, but it's great for water skis to have something like this where people can really get a bespoke water ski experience. It's gonna improve their skiing, their, their body, you know, and Jenny's just, she's amazing too. So just to have the access to, to both of those guys, I think it's huge. And it has been massive just to talk things through and to get a new understanding of, of stuff I haven't tried yet.